morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're watching around the world. Welcome back, my friends. It is time for the last chance qualifier of the PUBG America Series 3. My name's Toffees. I'm joined by Matram and Gibson to kick off the festivities as the 16 remaining teams play 12 games to determine who gets their chance to go to the grand final. It's going to be fun, it's going to be weird, and it might get a little wild. Gibson, how are you doing today? Doing good. I'm glad to be back. Clearly didn't do enough to get sacked the last time, so that's always a good thing, right? It's always good. <laughs> goals when for this one, back. right? We've got yeah. goals now. <laughs> yeah, got, oh, got, God. we got, got goals got now. <laughs> oh, that's that edit on you is pretty impressive. Matt, how you feeling? How you feeling? Dude, I always love last chance qualifiers. This is like where PUBG gets real for me. Like mm. it's like the epitome of PUBG, right? Is it's like you gotta be you're in that you got your back against the wall and now you gotta fight your way out to survive. Some of them have a couple a little bit of a better chance though. That's true, and that I think is what I'm expecting to see here on day one. The Usain Bolts versus the 12th graders as we sort of see people <laughs> surge to the front of the pack and everyone else fall behind. I stand by that. I think, and I don't know who tweeted it, but I agree, there should be one person in every Olympic race who's just a normal person running along the side so that we can have a true understanding of just how incredible these athletes are. We get to see that today, perhaps, uh, as some of these teams, I think, surge to the top. That said, there's some teams that maybe they're going to glow up. They're going to come up. They showed up on the second day. Maybe this is their chance to go the distance. Let's get into that. We're going to go over the format. We're going to go over the schedule for you guys in just a few. But I say we start breaking it down right now. One of those teams that I did want to talk about, Gibson, because they had a huge glow up from seven points day one to significantly better on day two, it was Ace's crew. Talk to me about these guys. Do you think they can do the same thing here this week? I think that they're one of the teams that you got to keep your eye on because okay. they're either lightning or a bottle or else they're a million miles away. The problem with them is inconsistency. It was there. It was there in scrims. It was there at the weekend. They're mm. they're very much able to have a 60, 70 point day, but at the other side of things, they can have a 7, 8, 9, 10 point day. So they really need to close that gap. Danny Monster is a player. I like to call him Danny Monster, not Danny Monster. Oh, yeah. It's just what I like to go with. But if you get him rolling he can easily pick up tons of kills and kind of lead that team from the front. That checks out. Hey, do you have any thoughts on Ace's crew, Matt? Do you agree? Wishy-washy? Uh, I, I really like Ace's crew, but it, the only thing I can say about them is for all the One Piece fans out there, they remind me a lot of Ace. They have a lot of fans. They have the capabilities to have a really big set of games. Right. But you always feel, small spoilers, like they're going to die in a horrible way. And small spoilers? Jeez. It's it's one of those things that you have to be like monitoring what's going to be going on with them. Like, have they managed to improve over that to where they can really step into their firefights? Yeah, they have gotten some superpower to them, but it's still the longevity. Getting into the late game, yep. getting those victories is still kind of elusive for them. And I, I we can see them. They're so close to it now yep. in comparison to where they were last year. I, I agree. And I think that I think them naming themselves Aces Crew is apt. Right? This is a card that is either a 1 or 11 and only wins mm -hmm. based on what's around it. So I think that that stands out for this team right now. This idea that they could be at their top of their game, they could be at the bottom, but a lot's going to come down to, are they being hot dropped? Are they being challenged? Are they getting the rotations? But before we get more into some other teams, let's talk about the format. Group stages, done and dusted. We're not going back there anymore. It's last chance qualifier time, y'all. That means the 16 teams who were the worst last weekend have a chance to play it out where the top eight will advance to the grand final to join the big eight who've already made it to the big show. Now, this is important because this is the only qualifier for the PGS Sizz that are coming up around the corner three and four. So you need to be top eight, Gibson. You gotta be top eight. It's a very simple equation. Just be in the top half of the lobby and you'll be fine. If you don't make it, it's a very long couple of months ahead. You, li you literally from that point on become kind of lobby fills and scrims. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a really rough spot to be in. I think the Americas are more competitive than ever so just getting into the grand finals i think is going to be harder than it's ever been and as always you will see at least one casualty in the last chance qualifiers absolutely i will also give you guys a quick update it sounds like we had a crash uh, from a sonics player so the game's taking a little longer to start we are about 13 minutes away from kicking off the day of play so if you don't want to listen to us talk i don't know why but if you feel like now's the time to go grab yourself a drink or make yourself a meal, I would do that because I do think it's going to be a pretty fast-paced day of PUBG action. Now, how does the action play out? It's about getting points, and points are what are going to matter the most here. One point per kill, 10 for first. It goes down from there, but the point averages, I think, are going to be huge, Matt, when you talk about last chance qualifier targeting the top eight. got to get the averages. 
Yeah, and this is going to be competing against the same teams through the entirety of this. So making sure that you're monitoring drops, locations, secondary rotations, those types of things. Homework is going to be big, but these points and specifically kills, I think, are going to be one of the determining factors. We're going to have some very heavy teams in this one. Well, a couple of teams that I would say that we didn't expect to be here or end up here through not their own form and happenstance. So this means that we're going to be really compacted, I would say specifically, as we're looking right around that eighth place position. And I think that really those kills, if you can manage to scrape them away from those people up at the top, maybe get yourself a victory here or there, you're going to be feeling so, so much better. Absolutely. And I don't think, you don't want to leave it for moving day, Gibson. You don't want to leave it for the last day to try to pick up those six games because that's when we saw last week the wheels come off. People start doing strange things. You need to start strong here today. My question is, do you think a lot of teams sort of go for this, uh, find an average, get our five or six? Or do you think there's going to be most teams looking at the, I want to finish first, get every point I possibly, like, how, how do you approach this as a team? I think the more story teams will be looking at that six, seven point and average, Kenner, and that's where we need to be. But we can also go ahead and win those lobbies if I need to. We've, you know, we've seen enough last qual chance qualifier games in the past to know that after day one, there will be one or two teams that are pretty much mm -hmm. secure in the finals weekend mm -hmm. already. They will be the ones that come out of the gates running. The position you don't want to be in is chasing the sticks, right? See, after two, yeah. three, four games, you're not meeting that four or five point average a game. That's when you'll start to see some questionable decisions made as teams start to chase it down instead of leading mm -hmm. it from the front. And you don't want to be chasing because what you're looking at right now is the prize pool. $12,000 for first is a very nice prize. I'm not going to knock that. The thing that I think matters the most to me is the PGC points. There are not a lot of chances to get regional PGC points, Matram, outside yeah. of the three qualifiers this year. So if you don't make the big pool, if you don't make the big show, and you're sort of a fringe team trying to rack up points, you have to do it now. I mean, the real race is going to be the PGC points. I mean, money, getting that in your pocket so that we can survive into PGC, mm -hmm. all of those things are going to be important. But let's, gonna be, let's be honest. Most of our players make the lion's share of their survivability and income through PGC. So you hit the like the nail on the head, man. You got to make sure that you're fighting your way to get to that stage now. This is not a you don't want to make it into the last chance qualifier and then be hoping that then maybe you can get a couple extra points here or there to maybe go to PGC. That is a terrible approach. So making sure that you net everything as early as possible is going to be the key to continued success for your squad. Now, here's that distribution of points. We talked about the three available from qualifiers. There's more along the road, but this is where you have to look at, especially if you're a team that's on the grind, Gibson. And when we talk about every team's dream is getting to PGC, it's not just that. Like with the current meta, I guess you'd call it, you want to get to a point where you can be in the bid for a GPT spot. And and the key to that is collecting PGC points and not only getting there, but performing well. Yeah, getting one of those GBT spots is just such a relief for these teams. Like Sonics, as it stands, are so happy with the way things are going. But for the rest of the Americas, that's just not the case. You've got to perform. You've got to there's perform. A, You've got to find the on that Sonic's performance yeah. though right now. Let's be honest True. on that one. Although, okay, although well, let's although get I will it. say, oh, go ahead. No, I, I want to get into Sonic, so do yeah. that. Let's let's. What will you say about Sonic's, my Sir Gibson? I actually am not worried about Sonic's at all, right? And I I know this because I spoke to Gunner before we got started, before the whole event. They're not playing the same way that they used to inside of the Americas, right? In the past. They came out, they were like, yep, yeah, this is regionals, we're just going to dominate the lobby, play together, win all of our ones. No, they're trying to play from start to finish the way they would if this was a PGC lobby. So they're playing, you know, a bit more land grab than they're used to. Teams are maybe picking them up. I am not worried one bit at all for the Sonics. I think they'll be fine. They should qualify out of this one. I think that when we get to international events, we'll see what the real Sonics is like. So real quick, before I go to you, Matt, because I do want to have your thoughts on the Sonics because this mm -hmm. kind of sums it up for me. On the finals, the left side, those are the teams that are going all the way through. Uh, pretty good mix of B, C, and A. Over here, last chance, this is who's playing right now. And Sonics is, I mean, I know they're in 11th because nobody has any points yet, Matt, but to see Sonics in the last chance qualifier <laughs> is, I don't care if they're playing for internationals or not. Like, I still feel like it's shocking to see them down here. Maybe I'm out of line. Yeah, yeah, let's be real. This is a squad we regularly talked about for years as being the best in America, or at least in the top two to three, right? So them being the last chance qualifier, I think is, I wouldn't say shocking, but just necessarily surprising. We did see them have a much better day two than they did on day one. It felt like they were in a lot more control of themselves. 
it could be maybe you just got a little bit too fat and happy over Christmas mm. break, and so having to shake off some of that weight and get back into like a fighting stance. Too we'll real. have to see as it moves forward into today, because I, I do believe that we are going to see them advance out. I don't think that I'm terribly worried, but at the same time, uh, if I was a Sonic, I, we know the Sonics players. They, they ain't happy that they're there, man. They're, they're, they want to make sure that people know that they're a good team. I mean, at some points, that actually tells me that how good a coach and how hard they're trying to be at the international level. If what you're saying is true, and I'm sure it is, Gibson, that they are focused on a strategy that's not typically what they would do at this stage, but are also made up of four players who hate freaking losing, the fact that they have the discipline to maintain that strategy, right? Instead of just by game three being like, F it, Gunner, we're going to go crazy and wipe <laughs> this lobby. That tells me that they really want this. This is a good year for them if that's the mentality they're going in with. So I absolutely dig that and can't wait to see it sort of come to fruition, uh, hopefully by the next PGS. I, I would love to see that. Now, something else that I love to see in this lobby, and we got to mention it, I'm excited about mm -hmm. it. Mercy has returned to the lobby. They are in LCQ. They had a bangerang of a day one. Uh, they were pushed they had they were told that they were not playing in that because of an issue that was resolved they're back into it this time and they are going to be uh pu putting out the best performance they can though in a strange stroke of luck that can only befall mercy gaming <laughs> their fourth player is having a technical issue and will not be joining us until game two yeah. so mercy gaming deck stacked against them back against the wall time to make a play do you think they can do it gibson I think that they, they should qualify this Hell weekend. Yeah, they and qualify. You, you spoke about the fact that, you know, with a twist of fate, they're missing a player. The player mm. they're missing is their IGL. So they've lost their leader for this mm. very first map, which is really big problem for them. I think the team that'll be happiest to see Mercy playing with a three this map will probably be Sonics. Like, if you think mm. back to the first day, Mercy were the problem. Like, every single time Sonics tried to get something going, they right. ran into Mercy. And... I think it's a tough start for them. It's going to be a real test of their mental resolve to go into this first map with three players. But look, we know what Sneak Attack's like. He's going to be relishing the opportunity to show what he can do on the first map on Orangel. You know, and that first map. Seifu, though, good. right? Seifu. He's, he's still so good. Yep. He's still there. And honestly, if there's a team, if there if there was a lobby to not have your IGL for one game and still possibly like play really well, like this is it. I think mercy with three could potentially still qualify not to take anything away from the igl uh but i think that they are just very strong players and they're going to show that this week now we're starting on a wrangle we're going to take over candy miramar miramar also worth noting for those fans who are tuning in here to the north the americas region we oscillate the servers so we're going to start with north american servers and then the second game will be south american third will be north american and so on and so forth that way it is as fair an even playing field as we can come up with so that these teams from different regions uh everyone's got a shot to sort of play in their home in their home ping if you will uh that's created some challenges for the players but everyone seems to be rising to it we haven't heard a lot of pushback um and so i think some of our team players even like flood who was pulling 360 ping said you know what it is what it is and uh it wasn't as bad as, as as everyone says it is. So we can we can do this thing. Uh, it's been kind of fun to see that change of policy that's created a little more uh, traditional fair play, Matt. Yeah, and there's been a lot of conversation I've seen in chat regarding this or that or this play. Keep in mind, these are different hurdles that with just the size of America's and having Australian players that also play with us, this is just a nature of the beast. Everybody knows what they're signing up for at this stage. So there is no like, oh, this is a surprise that this is going on. Everybody is aware and making the modifications in their play styles regarding it. That is also one of the things that we have seen a couple of the North American teams say regarding how they are changing some of their play styles. AKA might be one of the reasons why we're seeing Sonics play the way that they are making a couple of those changes is making sure that they're having to play around ping, making sure that they're playing their advantages. These are all known commodities that everybody is going to be making sure that they're trying to make sure that they can navigate the cleanest that they can. All right, let's talk about some of the teams that uh, you've had an eye on over the last section of the event that you think might do well or may struggle today. Uh, Matt, you brought up Bande de Gallo in the opening sequence when we were sort of hanging out in the green room. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about what you're expecting from this team. All right, I, this is a squad that I felt came far more alive on their second day of play. It, I mean, you can they doubled the points, let's be honest mm -hmm. off of it. It's also a squad that has Hazeton with a ton of experience coming off of it. So there's a lot of capabilities in the squad. We haven't seen Cement into being, I would say, a comfortable performer just yet, but there's a lot of upsides. I, I saw a couple of big plays coming out from specific, specifically Sexiots. I thought that Sexiots had a lot of very strong plays that he managed to put together for his squad. And whenever you couple that in with the experience that Hastings got, I think that this is a squad that has a lot of upside that we haven't seen fully developed yet. And with a little bit more time now having what's going on with the first stage of the groups going 
underneath them, see what they've learned. And technically, let's be honest, this is a weaker lobby. We've got the top yep. eight out. Now what can you do to exploit it? That's really what I'm looking for for squads, and I think that this is one of them that can do it. Nice, and I, I want to give you a shout-out on your eloquent handling of uh, Mr. Sexy. <laughs> now I'll go to Gibson. Gibson, another South American team that I think you said you wanted to talk a little bit about. Pachau, uh, tell me about this team and what we should expect from them today. Yeah, I think that the expectations should be pretty high for this roster. Okay. Like we all, like BL is a player that I love watching. Right, he's electric. He's so good in those one v one fights. He plays with a level of aggression that I think will definitely help them out quite a bit. N Nateo is another one that I think has been. I don't want to say underrated, but now that we are playing a lot more on the South American servers, we're seeing what he can really do whenever mm. things have been flipped the other way around. They'll be very disappointed. You know, they finished outside the top eight, but I think going into today, they've got to be some of the favorites to qualify through to those grand finals. That checks out. All right, you brought up underrated players. I'm going to ask a question that may not go over well because we know these guys. We love these guys. I've had dinner with these guys. Mm -hmm. Is Elevate made up of players who are becoming overrated at this point? They are four players who we recognize the names, who have been to lands, who have played with some of the best teams in the world. And yet here we are in the LCQ. Give me your thoughts on Elevate, Gibson. Oh, that's a really tough question to ask, right? I don't know if I don't really know if I want to say underrated or overrated is really the problem they have. Mm. You ever get in the situation, right, where okay. you have two people who work really well together, right? You know, they work really well, but things stop working the way they should. And sometimes a split is the best for all parties involved. I feel like this is it for Punage and Shinboy, right? They have been uh... together for so long. This is the last ride. If things don't go well for them, maybe a split would go well for them. You know, a change of scenery might work out the best, but I feel like, again, they've got the backing of an orc. You have Punage, you have Shin, you've got Balefrost, who we were speaking about before, is a really good player on the server. Mm -hmm. He's bounced around from team to team to team. I want to see if Bale Frost can get together and maybe Punish and Shinboy can get a little bit of that magic once more. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, you think divorce is the answer? <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I was thinking. I was like, so we're in Elevate is essentially like a, a romance or something. I, I don't know. They're a squad that I don't, I can't necessarily say that they're overrated right now because I don't see anybody that's really coming out and like cheerleading them. And, and in the same way that like you would see like Sonics fans or anything else Fair. like that. They are, a, they are a team of players that cannot find a home, just like Gibson said, but have definitely tried out for a lot of teams. Right. And then kind of th there's some variation of this roster that always kinds of kind of comes back together. Right now, yeah. at this stage, I'm kind of on the oppo opposing side of it. Just stop. Stop trying to go find someone else. Stop trying to fix the problem. Try stop trying to go get into a better squad at this point. If it's not working for you guys elsewhere and it's not you're not performing your best here, just at least try to fix what's going on here now. Figure out what your problems are, be they individual or team squad. Use that to give you a chance to propel yourself up. And then maybe you can find a place on some of those other squads. But I, I almost feel like whatever is going on, that's the inherent problem on why they can't find other squads, is still going on here. And I don't think that constantly shifting it around is going to solve it until they decide to solve it. That's, I mean, that's, that, I guess that's the nature of PUBG when it's a com communication team game over anything else. Uh, you do. You have to kind of figure out what is what is stopping you from being a set piece and just being a career mercenary, which I think these guys have sort of been over the last couple of years here. Either way, though, game number one is getting underway. We're dropping into a wrangle. We got 12 games to play. At the end of this, Gibson, eight teams get to go to the big show and eight teams get to go home and watch for the next couple of months as their dreams are crushed under the foreboding heels of the top teams that's a big order and a lot of stress for these teams in the game i like the way you said get to go home as if you know it's you know it's a somewhat <laughs> of a consolation prize are you keeping these players in your basement for the no no <laughs> so i i my my wife at her job is not it's like they're going through some some tough stuff and every day when she's like finishes work she's like I, it's nice that i get to go home like that's what i tell yeah. myself sometimes and that's yeah. what i said like. maybe home is home is a quiet Ooh. nice place where they can lick their wounds and heal this circle <laughs> yeah, just got Fun. Rats for funky. Oh, I don't I mean, know. <laughs> it still has to lean more military base, right? I think so. I think it's got to go melee, but we've seen, we've seen stranger things. Look, I've seen casts where you've been on the mic, Matt. I've seen events you've been around. 
toffees where these circles have gone up to Milta. They've gone up to, you know, exactly mm -hmm. where you can see Spotsy playing right now on Gatos Chico. So, so uh, let's just say it's very difficult to make the call right now, toffees. Mm -hmm. It is, and I think, I think, I think I know what every team's call has been who's not on military currently. All of them went, look for an e-pickup. Look for an e-pickup. Yep. Like, across the board, everyone's looking for one. This is a very tough circle. And I also, I, I want to get your thoughts on this, Matt, and maybe we can argue about it. If you're a team that doesn't think everyone believes they can win, I know that that's what we say, right? Like, oh, yay, I'm, gonna, I, I'm only satisfied with first, whatever. Teams know that they're not as good. If you know you're not as good, do you come out blasting and look to, like, bridge camp off the jump and get cheeky and pick up points or do you try to play as slow as humanly possible and hope the top teams have the flu does it, you know what i mean like how do you yeah. do that if you're a team who's not the best i think that you've kind of hit on the conundrum in and of itself right mm. it, if you are wise enough to know that you don't have the skills to win a straight up firefight or something else like that you just don't tend to pull your trigger much which kind of causes you to continue to lose all of your firefights the mm. confidence and believing that you can go for some of those firefights is key. I think that we should see some plays coming out. Like, I think it's Pachal that's already kind of dancing around that western bridge. Uh, not a hobby. Looks like they're already moving over to the eastern bridge right now. That's what you should be doing. You can see Elevate Belfrost already coming to scout over here. See if you can get those couple of kills because, I mean, we very often see 8th, 9th, 10th separated by maybe a squad wipe, right? And yep. so just trying to pick those up early in a cheeky bridge camp, I think is how you get there. But the problem is, too often, that lack of confidence, you don't even want to go to that spot because you'll decide that you'll just play for a late game or something else like that. I, I also feel like this is the culmination of something. for like The teams who we're watching, a lot of them have gone, almost all of them at this point, actually, have gone through open qualifiers and been playing for months, <laughs> right? Like, mm -hmm. literally everything about their last couple of months and their future months are hinging on the next two days of play. And I have to assume that that, I mean, like, I don't, I can't deal with that kind of pressure. I would, honestly, Gibson, like, that kind of pressure, I would probably be vomiting right now instead of playing the game. Like, that seems intense to me. There's two trails of thought, right? When you talk about pressure, some people say pressure makes diamonds. Some people say mm. pressure's for tires, right? It's, it's really whatever <laughs> way you want to look at it. I feel like a lot of these players have been in this position before. They'll know what it's like. For some of the teams that are maybe here for the first time, that's where problems can arise. Not a hobby, that will be the first teams to shoot off or send off some shots and anger, doing a little bit of damage onto Elevate. But I actually really like the fact that Elevate have decided to make the rotate early. They're already on Military Island. They've leapfrogged a lot of these teams, and it's these decisions that could be the difference. Ooh, but it is coming out of the cost. Look at the tatters coming out from this one. It is going to be footage now going down. Now, let's be real. They're probably sitting better off than if they had waited a couple of more seconds. Yeah. But, I mean, this is what you've got to do. It doesn't look like they got emergency pickup. They did an early set of scouting. They did lose a member. But, I mean, they at least managed to breach through and get to military base. So, it's technically a win. I want to give a shout out to Mercy, y'all, because like Uncle Jesse would be proud to yell this out. If you've got three players, take this high ground as quickly as possible, because this is a great spot to play out the circle shrink, get some points and really be able to defend. I don't think four versus three is that big of a like loss if you are in a position such as this. Finding a good defensible spot with less players was absolutely huge of them to come up here right away. So I, I freaking dig that. Um and then I also, I think what you said, what you said about Elevate is, is great. I like that they're being active and getting to a spot where they can play as duos. Mm -hmm. I think I've got to gotta agree with you on the Mercy decision. The only thing is, it's a little bit more difficult now to play there than it would have used to have been. With emergency mm -hmm. pickups, meaning you don't have to focus on just the road. you got to keep your eyes on the sky. Sonics Ooh. are going to use the footpath to get their way across the bridge. You know, that's one of the nicest additions in the last year uh -huh. and a half. Well, yeah, I and, think that Mercy... And I don't think spot. they knew that when they designed it. <laughs> I think they added a footpath because it was fun. And then the players were yeah. like, oh, thank goodness. A car fits here. And I want to point if out to everybody, fits, we have two different actions that are going on right now. We've got the early rotates where we just saw Elevate and Sonics. But we presently have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish teams that aren't really making too big of a move. That leads us to believe that emergency pickups might be what they're trying to hold on to. But as we were talking about earlier... Making the shift with Elevate and Sonics, let's say Sonics still has an emergency pickup, this shift goes up to the north, boy, they're going to be feeling so much better now having that like secondary tool to get them back where they need to be. Yeah, and I think you're right about the teams that haven't made the move yet either. They're just going to wait out phase one, see where it pops, because mm -hmm. if you go ahead and use that e-pickup, 
Oh like, no. Synergy well, we're reflected it's synergy. Whoa, well, we're saying it. You know what though? This is the exception that proves the rule, right? <laughs> They're gonna do it. And if this shifts north, which, you know, for the player's sake, I really hope it doesn't, Synergy are making a, a bad decision. But I think Synergy will be fine. You and I actually spoke about them a bit in the pre show, right? It's not the same Synergy that we saw last year. A few players have gone on to pastures new. But Synergy are always a team that you expect to see in finals lobbies. And I'm sure mm -hmm. STK are probably hoping they don't because Synergy were STK's biggest problem last year. They have been reoccurring nemesis to each other as of right now. I have to hope that Synergy probably has a secondary emergency pickup or some type of plan around this one because I'm having this like callback moment to uh, whenever we were in Riyadh and we saw uh, Friendly Fire at the time make the jump up near uh, near the port and then suddenly the circle just goes oh. the complete opposite direction. I get so nervous whenever I see a circle like this and a, a, a circle one emergency pickup. Are you calling back the pixel swimming across the open bay trying to get yeah. as many points? Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was... That was a poor pixel, by the way. Like, it, it could only have been him, but it's the whole, if it went their way, you'd be, we'd be talking about how genius that move was. So, it's risks. Players will take it. Sometimes they work out. Sometimes they don't. Panella, good. They've just made it up onto the shore by Novo as well here, and I think they've made the right decision. You get into Novo, you'll probably get a vehicle in there. You've got plenty of cover. PNG are a team that I think we've seen nothing near the best of them, right? They were very disappointing over the first weekend, but there's a reason they're in this lobby. They qualified to get here. Now, I also do want to point out, uh, Toffees, we haven't seen very many boats in rotation right now, as just one being used, and that means that that, that commodity is really all over the place along that coastline in the strait that these squads can still grab. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Boatates are not quite as big as they used to be with the e-pickup, but... We'll keep an eye on it. Penela Good have got some company here. Matt Synergy landing pretty close by, but Synergy get all boots on the ground nice and early. And this could be the potentially the very first fight that we see this game. And this is such a strong compound to hold from. I really like the split on the outskirts of Novo. It gives you an idea on what's going to be going on. People trying to cross the bridge while also trying to hold down from Novo itself. The roads themselves create this nice open category where you can really kind of dictate a lot of what's going on. But yeah, we got Bondagayo that are going to be over here now taking some shots back at Meow, which was our boat squad that came over. PNG that's now looking in, spotting out what's going to be going on with Synergy. Uh, not a hobby is still going to be just, just south of that western or eastern bridge, I'm sorry, where Mercy is still going to be up on top. As Elevate, we did see Bypass, and now pretty close to Sonic. So we're starting to get a bit of a scrap going on as... These squads have just gotten a bit too close to each other. Almost everybody leaving military base proper and playing this decent side. Yeah, and if you have the map screen open, which I advise most of your viewers, if you have a second screen, should do. Old Guard are also making the emergency pickup coming in from the northwest side of the map. So a few teams will utilize it nice and early. We're getting ready for that next zone shift. This is where it's going to go. I think OG have actually timed the C pickup perfectly because mm -hmm. they'll get into the circle as it shifts. And yeah, that's nice for OG because they've got complete, you know, confidence as to where the circle is going to go. So do 55 esports. Yeah, this is like the perfect timing for it. You get picked up right as the circle pops itself. We might take a little bit of blue zone damage, but not a lot. The, you have some opportunities you better be scouting from the sky. Notice that a lot of these plane paths are very northern for the emergency pickups. That does mean the fact that you're going to want to bail early if you want to get to that safe area over into the west. Not a lot of squads we've seen doing that just yet, as I think that 55 is just now starting to break away. You can, uh, this is going to... It's very odd to see, like, the military base hillside so open. No squads really over there. I mean, technically aces, but that's really about it. And all of those hills are just capable of just providing so much extra movement instead of that eastern side. I'm with you on this. The west is completely free. I think Elevate might be one of the teams that start extending out that direction. But as you can see with the Rats emergency pickup, they're going to make their way very close towards that eastern side of the map. Old Guard have landed just north of center as well. This is a um, this is an interesting one. Now, 55 are going to rock up onto Ace's crew, and I don't think they've got any clue that there's a team in here. Oh, man. this They're just coming in full loud. We got the DP up. Slabby's going to instantly go down. Zelt's going to take him down and get the flush as well. Ace's crew now just looking up. Jam just feeding headshots on the other side of this one. And 55, you had a plan, but it has gone wrong. Rats now also making a jump down. Going to be very close to this position with everything that's going on with 55 trying to retreat away. Luckily, three different squads are now taking shots at Rats and going to force them to land away from 55. Otherwise, it could have been utterly demolished. Yeah, well, Grantlantis does have a line of sight on them with the barrel and the red dot 
being utilized, but they will move more and more. So to round the west, try to catch the 55 players by surprise. They know they're weak. They will have heard that gunfight just a little bit earlier. And Old Guard are pinning down 55 as well. They're in the middle of a sandwich that they don't really want to be in. Yeah, two up, now firmly surrounded by other teams that just came in off emergency pickup. We still have a very centered to eastern circle, all considered. So 55, I don't even know where they can hunker down. Yes, there are a couple of these dips that they can play in. But there are so many squads that are going to just choose to try and take them at any moment. And see now two different squads eyeing towards each other with Old Guard and Rats. With that firefight and those shots at 55, both aware, both know what's going to be going on. But they kind of created a stalemate against each other as Meow... We're playing down to the south, now going to decide to land against Sonics. They had emergency pickup. They were already on the coast. Remember, they took that boat in, and now they're getting picked apart on their landing. Yeah, that's that's for all the viewers at home, by the way, who say spectate Sonics, right? You got yourself a tick kill to get the day up and running. Grant will get one on the Necro as he will fall, but from beyond the grave, the dead man's hand will take down Gats. So, Gats, so both teams... Suffering some casualties. 55 are still in the mix of this action as well. Lopez, you can see on your mini map, is not too far away. But Rats I getting mean, one, losing one? Yeah, but the benefit for this is 55. Remember, they were terrified of what was going to be going on. With that firefight, you can see now Rats looking more into the north. OG playing much more into the west. That means that this is all slowed down. And there we go. Sonics, you can see, just have decimated anything that was going on with this landing this is a very strong position in the circle as we're about to see the new one pop most of our squads now inside the safe zone and it's just gonna be a matter of how long does it take for science to pick this one up oh and it goes that north that's that's hmm. rough right you've got tons of water so i think ace is creating a great spot with things stand shrimsy will confirm out what's left of the gatos chicos that's four points for sonics as they begin their lower bracket climb but I'm looking at this circle right now, and I'm thinking, you know, if you're Pichao, if you're Bondé de Gallo, where do you go? Because this is a horrific circle. Yeah, specifically this split where we saw the 2-2 from OG, they're going to get the high ground. Well, one of the points that's pretty close to high ground, you know, making their way up on the hillside, the still be inside. And with the way that we see this compression that has happened around Novo into the south of Technical Radio Tower... This is going to be really interesting to see the teams navigate because Radio Tower itself is kind of a no man's land that nobody wants to go into at this stage because you don't want Mercy to harass you into pieces. Mercy is going to have a ton of control over this area, so you have to assume these squads are going to try something to the west. Yeah, the only issue for Mercy, though, was Seifu is holding the lower plateau all by himself. And, and if, if he gets crashed, he could be in a world of pain. Elevator making their rotate. I can see that uh, for those of you at home, Pichao were going extremely west around Millie Base, as they'll probably try to come in somewhere around Old Guard. But Elevate, we spoke about them. They've lost a player already. Poonage on the very early game rotate. But, you know, Vegas and Vegas and Bale Frost will work with Shinboy. They need a ton of points, and they have their eyes on Sonics. But let's have a look at also known as Matt Nanu picking up a knock on the Danyo. This is out in the blue, guys. This is, we're trying to cross the bridge. Everything's come apart. AKA has been held out here. Uh, Four Nations also out here. Future, I believe, is just going to be a bit more to the, uh, is going to be on the Eastern Bridge. This is more on the that Western Bridge uh, fight. So keep in mind, even if you manage to finish up this fight fast, you still have to make your trip, get into the zone that's already shrinking over into the Eastern Bridge. AKA decided that this is just not even really worth it. They're going to go ahead and go with the team, uh, the squad members that are already across the bridge on Military Base Island. So it's just trying to see if they can get rid of this one last guy that's causing them problems. Yeah, this is rough for Nanu, right? He's been abandoned by his team. It's just play your life. Try to get any kills or knocks you can because I can't see Four Nation being able to get anybody back up. And the worst thing about these fights is you'll never get back up to 100 HP, make, making every single shot a little bit more dangerous than before. Nanu... We'll hop across the side. He should get spotted out in a second. No, the bush just providing enough cover. Bush! Yeah, he spotted him. He's seen him. He's seen him. But how much do you commit into this if you're four and in? Like, I, they're, they're defensed in. They're like, okay, we can get some kills. Granted, there's only two of them as well. So picking up this kill could be something that they're after for points per game. But it's just like you're talking about. Everybody is just getting ticked down at this stage. Chasing down after noon. It is going to be a nice landing on that nade. Finish that one out. They're going to be able to pick up the flush. Where, oh, where do they go next? Because the rest of AKA is already going to be waiting inside the circle. If anything, though, it's the ship that might just suit them if they've got any chance of making it into the circle whatsoever. AKA, you've got Louis Zera playing towards the north. Rats have to make their way into the circle. 
Look at the teams all by Nova now, though. Bondi to Gaio, Panella good, Synergy. They have really drawn the short straw with the zone shift, and they've got to work their way through Not a Hobby, who, if I were them, Matt, I'm not moving. I'm just going to fall back to the other side of the grove, play that compound, and pick up stragglers on their way in. Yeah, uh, you can see uh, BDG already trying to make a shift over Panella good. Going to go ahead and get some damage out of that one up a kill but you can see up on top they've got a ton of vision that they can work with but the longer they get caught up into this fight there's two more squads here keep in mind we have synergy as well as future already trying to make a path again so if they're wanting to finish this they've got to go after the kills and you can see now bdd just out of one guy is going to be working their way up the hillside and it's going to be sexy it's yet again putting in a solid performance for his squad yeah the blue zone will be coming pretty soon his direction which is going to make it a little bit worse but you can see the jammer packs Will certainly help out the situation but here's elevate wrapping around sonics as things stand and sonics have everybody up down inside the valley but shinboy has the worst weapon that you could possibly run into when it's getting sprayed from above the m249 wrapping as elevate look to kickstart their day vegas is shifting away from this as well so that is going to be a big firefight brewing at any moment aka is going to get eliminated so now we're starting to get more of a defensive line over into that northwest no good. Looks like they're eyeing the idea of kind of wrapping back around through this one. Maybe trying to go from the south and come up, but that means that they're going to be on a similar pathing where both Mercy and Sonics could see them, depending on how this firefights break out. Sneak with an eight as Mercy look to deal with Bondi de Gallo. Sexy could be in a bit of trouble, and he is. Sneak attack. Picks up that kill. Mercy getting their first kill on the day. Beal Frost moving closer and closer to Sonics, though. Do Sonics know? Creep up. You can see that the nades are being prepped up. Uh, I don't think that they're being thrown in the right direction just yet. More of an eye. It looks like it's going to be on Shinboy's position. Kickstart not going to have the cleanest sight lines. Playing along this hillside. Good read on Shinboy to try to make sure just to get his head to pop up, get some vision on what's going to be going on. Sonics don't like the fact that they've already been read on that approach, so they are going to try to retreat. But they've just pretty much got their backs up against the wall in a very small dip right on the edge of this zone. If this goes any further north, they know that they're in some trouble, but walking along this roadside would be a catastrophe. Except for the fact that Mercy has already come down from Radio Town. Yeah, they've made their way down. We see teams making their way across the bridge now as well as Future. I've got Synergy not too far away. Terrazoka gets the knock onto Cluzera as the Blue Zone will force Fake to go prone because he'll have to contend with not only Ace's crew, but not a hobby on the other side of the road as well. Arson picking up that kill as Cluzera will go down. Kalnix should bleed out momentarily as well. Zone shift pops and just like the zone shifting, Four Nation are eliminated as well. What do you think of that shift, Matt? It's very, very interesting, but my eyes are drawn to what's going on with Sonics. They're running a 3-1 where they left Tig back to kind of distract Elevate because they realized they had an open path. Great read on this one. It does mean the fact that Tig's already kind of off by his lonesome, but with the reposition, you can see now the rest of Sonics can wrap in. They get great vision on this hillside, and they can just really wreck Elevate trying to make their approach. Chow's already shifted over just to the west of Sonic's position, so this is already firmly gate-kept, and Elevate is going to have to fight their way into this one, or just jump in a car and pray, but I don't know. With Tig's shots, that's going to push them right into Pachow. Yeah, Pachow should be able to get one, if not two knocks. There you go, Yakuza and Santa dealing with Elevate. They fall. Daryl on the south side of the circle gets a big nade on to Seifu, but not a hobby. Spot out Penella good up on the hills. Both of these teams have been evicted now by the circle. 11 teams left alive. And the, the SKS, look, that thing fires slow, but it hits pretty hard if I can land some of these shots. There you go. Ooh, there we go. I love the SKS. Whenever you can get it kitted, it is so fun to work with. The problem I have with it, though, is not a hobby. They were in a great position for the last couple of circles, but like you said, the circles kind of abandoned them. So they do have some vehicles to work with. They're going to run back down that road. Ace isn't going to have the cleanest vision of them because of the way the hillside works out. Mercy still trying to make their way down and deal with everything that's going to be going on with PNG that's now made their way down this hillside. And remember, this is a very weakened Mercy off the start. Now having Seifu down and quickly bleeding out means that they are down to two. But, I mean, even if they do manage to get the res, they're still going to have to walk right into where not a hobby just relocated to. Yeah, and Back Monster is keeping an eye on anybody coming down from that hill, but he's got to be careful because he's probably got an idea that there's at least one Synergy player off towards the east as well. You know, we didn't see the name pop up in the kill feed, so Fexen is still a problem for these sides. And if you're looking at the map stream, we're really loaded on the east side. Even look at the mini-map on the bottom right corner. Just so much color. Oh, 
Not that way. Of all the ways you could go, Mercy, you're just running right into the firing squad. Ace on one side, but not a hobby on the other. Sonic's here. What's going on? They're moving in, so that's going to be the fourth team. Let's not forget about the fact that we've got Fake also creeping across, trying to use this as a distraction. And now, Mercy, oh, Mercy, what do you even do? Because there is no Mercy in sight. Hey. Yeah, and Sonics are starting to push this way as well. Lucid will peek his head up just a few times, but I think the jig is up for him. Fixing does step out from the blue, and he picks up a point for Synergy. And that will be the end of Mercy Gaming, a sneak denies, and I think that's probably the right decision to make on game number one, particularly when he's being locked in. But look at the way Sonics are playing, right? They're keeping an eye on the road. They're just scouting out this fight to make sure nobody rotates the south. But look at the fight that's just kicked off on the north side. I mean, not a hobby has to make some type of move, and they know the fact of where Ace position is going to be at. The circle is going to shift down into the southwest. That means Sonic's just feeling it right now, as they've pretty much got the only members inside the circle, with the exception of maybe Bachal, that did shift over into the north away from them. It's going to be really a big amount of pressure over into that northeast where we've got rats. 55 in the remnants and that duo still alive. Future has to come over there. East as well as not a hobby. All having to continue in this vector. That's going to be so scary. Vehicle's already coming up. Spray is going to be coming out. 55 just trying to stay alive. Do manage to pick up a couple of knocks. Yeah, every point can matter. That'll be Psycho confirming Oichun. Lopez will take down HG as well. As Arson, as you can see from not a hobby, they're turning their attention towards the north, but let's jump to Pichao. They're oh. holding on the other side of the circle, but we're going back to 55. Sonics are back wrapping, back wrapping behind, not a hobby. Looks like we saw an opportunity with that one. That's going to force everything far more condensed over into these firefights. Pichao still trying to navigate what's going to be going on with OG. They do have one of their members down, trying to go for it, making a second one down. Hard peak getting heavily punished there. Here, Gwyn heading the shot on the BL, and now Yakuz will have to work with Nateo to try to keep their player on his feet. Nades being prepped. The first one will be thrown, but I don't know if it's going to go far enough. The second aid's going to double down as well, but OG have already pushed up the hill. Rats on the other side of this fight. Ace's crew will lose two to the blue, as Sonics did make that fight happen on the south east side of the circle. But Rats trying to use utility now to deal with 55. This fight has to end quickly. Both of these duos now know it. Utility is going to come out blind on one section of it. And Grant Lannis' life getting harder and harder by the second. 55 says no. We're just going to make the mad dash to the zone and try to gatekeep you out while Sonic's still coming alive over here into the south. Going to spot out 55. Instantly picks him up with the help of Dispoon on the opposing side of this one. Now rats have some opportunities and can make a move in. The problem is the hill recesses down into a completely wide open vision point for playing from Old Guard. Still trying to get in with what's going to be going on with Bachow over here. Numbers advantage in OG's favor. And this is going to be for complete control over the West. Old Guard deal with the West, and now they control a massive amount of space. Sonic's up to 10 kills. 11 now make it as they control the South. All they gotta do is deal with not a hobby and rats, and they have got so much control of the circle. It's a 4v3 v1. Kick does get the kill. And I'm gonna say it, Sonics have played this game to perfection. They played themselves into a good position, Matt, because when you think, you know, just a couple of circles ago, we were talking about how problematic that ridgeline could be. Yeah, they just read it. They saw whenever Mercy made their move, they exploited it perfectly. Now, it's just about how much more influence they put in. Well, you hear us often talk about how hard it's going to be to get into that top eight. Notice what's already happening this leaderboard. Sonic's at 17 points, OG back behind them at 11, but look at the eighth place cusp. It's three, and then back behind that, two. Just one kill point being a massive factor for what our teams are going to be trying to deal with. Now, straight up, 4v3. OG in the west. Sonic's going to be into the east. Tig straight up in the middle of it all, and the circle pretty much favors both of them. Yeah, Tig's on the scouting mission there. He's literally playing the front line to just keep an eye on where the rest of the players are. Kick's got himself a P90, and he spots out one of the OG players off in the distance. So Sonic's winning the information game and taking control of the circle. And I love this now, because what Sonics can do, three players can play off each other's contact and towards the center of the circle, and Kick can make sure that they don't get wrapped on from the north. It's really well, uh, clever, and that's what you can do in a 4v3. A big part of this is going to be if Kick and Kaishin get involved. You can see that playing on this hillside, they're, they're the outliers. They're the flank position, seeing if, making sure that nothing's going on on the side for Kick, and Kaishin's trying to see if he spots out any movement across this hillside. So no movement, at least coming up from Kaishin at this point, means the fact that he can feed over to kill Demo. Kind of, okay, they're probably moving more into that centered position exactly where you're going to be at. 
The problem is, is it's already a 3v1 in that category, and it's just going to get more complicated. Kick and Sonics can afford to have this back member kind of reading what's going to be going on with Kaishin, and OG can't. That's the whole reason why Kaishin is already having to make the move away from this position, realizing while they needed that information, they cannot just avoid the fight that's going to be coming in the center, and they need to have at least some type of equalized man advantage. Yeah, and they're playing a lot more separated than Sonics as well. You can see that Kaishin, as you said, is now closing in on Kill Demo. But here, Green is on the other side. So for them, they have to win the first engagement. If Sonics won the first engagement, this game is over. But I think we're in the waiting game now, Matt, as the circle will close. The teams are kind of not extending too far. There's the first throngs of war. As he does elect to fight, and Sonics begin to move north. Oh, with those shots, Kaishin looks like he's trying to eye back into that northern corridor. That is exactly what Sonics are wanting. You can see that they're trying to bulk up. They're sending two of their members in Trimsy and Tiggleton back over to contend. Kill Demo playing the opposing side of it, trying to play a bit more into the north, provide some type of support. Everybody expecting a wrap around this hillside. Nobody wants to profile up on the top of it. That's where the exchange of bullets happened just one moment ago. Problem with it is, while Sonics do have the four members to three, they are now heavily stacked up on top of each other, and a good set of like throwables coming out could be a big problem for them to have to contend with. As we can see, they pause for a second, separate back out. Now H1 and Trimsy both moving back down to the south. They want to make sure that they're keeping a tight control on this one, but they can't avoid kind of the side pincered locations that could be coming out. They've seen Kaishin already dancing over there. Yeah, Kaishin's going to be evicted by the blue now as, now as he will have to force his way inside the circle big thing for a team like sonics in a scenario like this is to play the trade game right even if you do have the sustain the first knock as long as your shoulder player is there to trade it back you're still in a positive situation kick with a level three gear in p90 i for sure will be sending him as the first man into the line of sight right you've got the level three gear he can afford to be just that little bit more aggressive with these peaks particularly with the fact that the weapons in the hands of og are not really going to do a huge amount of damage in a quick two three bullet spray look at what's now going on with sonics they've realized okay we kind of have an idea on what's going on with kaishin let's be a little bit more hesitant and be a more aggressive down in the south Tig's now shifted over there with h playing a lot closer to the center southern section of the circle, while Shrimzy has now stretched himself outside of the zone and is looking, monitoring, making sure nothing's going on over there. This is all just an information gathering game, trying to figure out where the weakest part in the opponent's defense is going to be at, and with the way that OG is now having to line in, they're having to play much more into the north, and you can see that's now why Hugan starting to move into that direction as well. That means that this lower section in the south is being entirely surrendered to the Sonics, and the hillside that's going to come with it. Every single time we can see H1 and Tig playing in this area, that means that they can start to wrap up and then flood the north if just one knock or shot start to come out. On the other side of things too, though, I think that OG are playing this one really well as well, considering the yeah. fact that they're yeah. a man down. They're not overextending. They're trying to make Sonics to be the one to make the first move. Here, Green, I've seen him pop off in the late game before. Let's see if he can do it once more. But look, you know, you spoke about how big utility will be a factor in this one. Kick's got one need. Not a lot of utility for a player like Kick to be able to utilize. He agrees the exact same boat as if we get a better idea. Look at this. Kai Shen has four needs. Let's not rule out the impact they could have. Now we're just getting to that stage where how far do you want to commit into this one? Kick starts still playing in the north. Looks like Tig has an idea on where Yugen is going to be at. So... Gonna go ahead and throw out the molly. Gonna try to follow it up with the nades. See if maybe he can force him away from the tree line. Does manage to do that. Where is he trying to prep it? Looks like they're gonna drop it right on top of the tree. OG's not gonna tolerate that one. So they're already gonna go be playing much more into the north. But that's funneling them right into Kickstart's vision. Playing it slave here. Here comes the, the utility pieces being thrown out. You can see the... OG knows exactly how they want to take this one. But Sonic's now coming more alive. They're doing a full wrap down in the south while OG is regrouping. This is it. Phase 9 in the blue zone is closing. 2 minutes and 10 seconds to center point. Kickstart with the most deadly weapon in all of PUBG esports as the rest of the Sonics take control of the high ground. The first battle's a big one and Hia Green gets the opening one on to H1. We're level at 3 apiece. Hia Green gets aggressive. Hia Green Ooh. gets Shrimsy as well. It's all down to take the thunder from down under. Up against the might of South American PUBG. 3v2. What are they able to do? Tig goes prone, map, but that's brilliant by Old Guard in the opening stage of this engagement. Leaving Kickstart back behind to defend that angle. 
proved to be a massive problem for him. He just didn't get the vision that he needed. He was their kidded character, and they have to figure out how they're going to make a move with him right now. Kickstart trying to regroup back over there, but keep in mind, now numbers advantage in OG's favor. Trying to now get control over the top of it. OG is going to get spotted out. It's going to be Kickstart just walking in, Tick picking up one as well. So now a 1v2, and Kick got control of the center of the circle. 15 kills for them, looking to make it a 16 ping. The kick is going to spot out Kaishan, and Tiggleton is there on his hip to get the kill. 26 points for Sonics on play day one. And where was this mat over the course of the first weekend? The, you know, or, or, or you know, three group games. Where was this? But that's brilliant from Sonics. I mean, very cleanly played on all accounts. I loved the mind game and the read and us actually just being able to see the interactions going on while they were trying to do some information gathering there. That OG Sonics fight at the end is just, mm, that's why I love this game so much. Sonics that we expected to see. And personally for Kick, I think it's great to see him have a game like this. You know, he's gotten a lot of mixed reaction from a lot of the fans about the move but for kick i'm delighted to see him come off trumps with that one but toffees what about you what do you make of that first game uh, you know i'll be honest i wish it hadn't been a military circle in a last chance qualifier i want as vanilla as possible game one so everybody gets their feet under them that said if the wheels are going to come off I, you, you love to see it and i think that like that sonics the way that they played this end game here uh I wouldn't say it was like old Sonics. It's just Sonics. It's like the way they do things, the way that they're coordinated, the way that they, they communicate, um, the back and forth of how they kind of manage that stretch left and right was very, very clean. And even when I think a lot of teams would have tilted a little bit, losing two so quickly, they fell back, they regrouped, and they played very, very well. That was, that was absolutely what I expect from them. 16 kills and 26 points. Uh, I mean, they could, they could probably mail it in for the rest of the day and be totally fine, man. Yeah, they're feeling pretty good off of that one. Just look at the drop in points. I know it's game one, but I mean, we can see that even our seventh place only holding down four points inside that game is going to be massive. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting that we have two different opinions regarding the... I, I see, I want the circles to be me. I want you to <laughs> prove to me you deserve to make it into PAS Grand Finals. <laughs> Screw the vanilla circles. Make it hard. Prove no, it to I, me that you're I here. get it. I just want, you know, some of these guys, as I said earlier, have spent the last year, half a year, grinding up to this point, getting through opens. I was just like, we can give them one game to let the butterflies settle and kind of get their feet under them. Uh, that said, we want great teams that can win internationals. Like, if you ask me what's the point of regionals, it's to find the international teams that are going to go the yeah. distance. And you're right. You got you to gotta be ready to go from the jump. There's no waiting around. Right, Gibson? No, there's not, and Sonic's show that. I ex I'm going to be honest, this is what I thought was going to happen in the very first mm -hmm. map. I, th I felt like they were going to come out, put on a really good game. Didn't think it was going to be that good whenever we saw where they were, you know, within phase two, phase three, you were like, right, you know, they might get 10, 10 kills, go out and, you know, just about inside the top eight. But no, they showed great knowledge of the terrain. And you spoke about bad mm -hmm. circles. We're all agents of chaos deep down, right? Yeah. Casters, we love chaos. Whoa. Chaos is a ladder. And boy, did Sonic's climb it in map one. Heck, players love it too when it works in their favor, okay? We're all true, agents of chaos true. when it's in our best <laughs> best situation. Now, I do want to talk about that end game because I loved watching the Sonics play that. They were communicating. You could tell they were moving well. They pulled like what I would call like a saltwater taffy maneuver. Have you ever seen those machines at the fair? You know, like those big the spinners that like make the taffy? Yeah, they, they stretched out to... Like yeah, so they had their What's anchors taffy? out at two sides. They, taffy, taffy, not taffy. Taffy. What's, so what's they had happening? their anchors at two sides, and then what would happen is every time that it would move, the two players in the middle kept moving back and forth. And whenever they'd move, they would pull that outside in just a little bit more until they tightened up as a four, controlled the center, and then they flexed three out to the outside and left that anchor. And I just think maybe if Kick had snapped a little faster, it would never would have been a question if he had come in from that close. But then they lost two and had the, 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 the wherewithal to fall back, regroup, and execute again from the middle like that was next level brain work that i am used to seeing from them and i'm glad that we finally are getting to see here at this event map yeah and just to like clarify on some strategy with this one it, leaving tig and kick on the externals while having the two move into the center those they, they intentionally plan that to be a weaker push now mm -hmm. yes if kick had come with them it probably would have been better but i think that they were worried about where kaishin was at mm -hmm. so i like the idea of essentially not calling H-Win or Shrimzy a pawn, but sacrifice the pawn so that way you can keep your Rook and Knight right. in a good position to try to execute. I, I really did like that strategy coming up. 
I've watched enough monster movies to know when there's a Kai Shen in play, you hold someone in reserve <laughs> to come out when they least expect it. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, when we come back after this break, we're going to talk more about do they not have Taffy in Ireland? Who knows? Don't go anywhere. We'll find out after this. Welcome to Update 28.2. Join us for our 7th anniversary celebrations, an all-new SMG experience in the arcade, and finally, the recall system update. We've got lots of surprises in store for you to celebrate our 7th birthday. Erangel's school will be transformed into a festive 7th anniversary venue. Plus, keep an eye out for throwable cupcakes and surprise gift boxes scattered across the starting island of each map. We've been hard at work balancing the SMGs to offer a more unique experience and accommodate various gunplay strategies. The arcade is all set for you to try out these changes, so get that early feel and let us know what you think. And there's more exciting news. Based on your positive feedback, we're expanding the recall system to include Vikendi and Tago. Check out the patch notes to discover all the details of this update. Lastly, this patch also includes weapon mastery updates, world bug fixes, and performance tweaks. Be sure to dive into the patch notes for all the details. And we'll see you on the battlegrounds. Welcome back. We are only, well, like 45 seconds from game number two starting because that's how we do it here at the America Series. Fast-paced PUBG action with Matt from Texas and Gibson not from the Americas. But you know a crap ton about the Americas teams, and I got to respect the hell out of that. But you don't America's know about Taffy. So Apparently it's not. Right. Caster talent now too. <laughs> right? But how, how they don't have Taffy in Ireland. I know. What? What is this? That's, that's, that's why the break took so long. You were explaining to me what Taffy was. That's, 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 that's why your humor, that's why you're not as funny as we are. You didn't grow up with Laffy Taffy jokes, which like define dad humor. Oh man, I didn't even think of that. No like, Laffy Taffy jokes. What the? We, I mean, right. Anyone in Europe will know that penguin bars had the jokes on the back of them. You'd lift up the back of the bar and it would have jokes on it. So it's, and what guessing the bar, was penguin bar soft and chewy or was it like ice cream? It was chocolate. It was chocolate. But it had great know. jokes like Toffee's. What did the fish say when it swam onto a wall? Don't know. Damn. Ah. <sighs> oh. oh. I, I always See. thought that as more of a beaver joke. I like that. What do you call a fish <laughs> with no eyes? <laughs> <What do> you... <laughs> I feel so bad for the viewers, man. 
I don't. This is what they're here for. The, the PUBG actually takes a few minutes to start, but it's a getting underway. Uh, game number two. That was like a weird Christopher Walken. About to kick off here uh, as we jump into the action, playing right in the middle. Uh, last game was good. This one will be better. Penguin bar jokes are the best. I, I could do a penguin bar joke. Three penguins walk into a bar. The fourth one ducks. Ha ha! Gibson, you're up. Oh my god, this is... You know what, I love it. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> I love that love type it. of humor. Right. I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to be here like Poro and be like, oh, I hate it. Oh, no, Poro loves it as well. We, it's everyone loves a good dad joke. <laughs> he does. Here, I got one for you. How does a cyclist train for a race? I don't know. He recycles. How does he recycles? Twice, multiple. Wouldn't it be like, how does the bike guy... That checks out. How does, is. How does Lance Armstrong prepare for a race? He recycles his blood. Anyway. Oh, there's a lot of jokes on that one. We can't go into <laughs> that's that a, one. That's a deep pack. Wow, look at the circle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Calm down, Arangel. Up to no good. So, I, will we I'm transition like the circle? Story. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I'm sorry. You've broken, broken me. You've broken He's, me. He just wasn't prepared look, for Laffy Taffy look, jokes. Okay. Look, Three, two, one, professional. Zones up in Stalber, by the way, Toffees. And this is a circle that, you know, like Matram, I really enjoy. It's not as bad as military. There are, there are more roads that lead to Stalber. I'll say that, right? Like, the thing I don't like about military is it just means, like, a team that drops there has such a huge advantage uh, getting to a good spot early. Speaking of advantage, I think Mercy's back up at four. So that's pretty exciting news for them, is they've got four players back on the field. And military all to themselves, though. I guess it doesn't matter as much in this circle. This circle is crazy. And one of the reasons I love Stolber circles is because of the, the variety of what we can get, right? We can get Stolber itself, which is a very vertical, almost like it almost feels like you're playing like a Mario game. You're having to like jump up the hillside and fight mm -hmm. the entirety of the way. Or you can go south into Yasnaya, get yourself a crazy urban ending. There's the fields that are on the outsides of that one with the forest. And I love the endings and heaven and all that other stuff. Then there's to the west where you can get like crossroads and you can get the warehouses this is such a peculiar area that you can have so many interesting firefights and all of them technically can be contained inside of a, the next circle as well. And mm -hmm. it leads to some very strong opinions about how you should IGL. Do you want to go up to the top of Stolber and work your way down? Do you want to go chill in Yasnaya for a second? Do you want to try to go get into no lean? There are so many different strategies that you can use that almost every single one of them feels wrong as the circle continues. Yeah, I, th I think it's decision making for me like that's it's, military. It's at the end of the day, it's get to military and, and try to find a spot. Right. When it comes to this, it's like North River, South River, push around the right side, play the high ground, tuck into a couple of the good uh, you want to call it like honey, honey pot sections where like sort of the warehouses are. I do think teams have to sort of be ready to roll with whatever the shift throws at them more so than a military where it feels like you're just kind of chasing a couple of spots. So I, I dig Stalber more. I also like that. To be blunt, if you're a South team or an every, a Western team, like there are plenty of safe rotations to get into this in the late mm -hmm. game. You know, you're not as stressed out about those camp spots. There's not a ton of bridges that are going to be loaded up with bad guys. There's less dinner plates waiting for you when you arrive, I guess is the best way to say that. Oh, that was rough with the DP waiting yes, in the <laughs> on the island. I also love how the caster showed us someone cycling just after what we started this, this section of the cast with, but... You know what, I think this circle's far enough towards the the east that it's not as tough for IGLs to make the decision as well, right? If this was a little bit more to the west, you've got to decide, does this go north of the river, south of the river? But with it being where it is, you have tons of spots that you can rotate into the circle. I actually love the layout of the new Stalber as well. You know, they've obviously changed mm -hmm. it up. You've got the observatory towers. Not to mention that the hills are a lot more playable as well because, there's, as Toph said, there's more dips that you can hide into. Well, it's uh, also the east side. The east side is so fun yeah. because it still maintains that heavy vertical nature. Mm -hmm. I also want to give shout out to some teams here. We just saw Ace's crew driving up uh, north here. I, they had one game. They got eight points. I think they got more mm -hmm. points in their first game than they did all of the first day of the last round. So, again, I do think there's something to be said for giving teams a little bit of time in group stages and an LCQ to say, okay, I understand the pace of the game at this level because it is a very different pace in my opinion when you get to group stages versus even like the second or third round of open qualifiers i think you're right it's the whole concept too where mm -hmm. you just feel like there's no last chance anymore so every decision yeah. has that little bit more you know gravity to it so you got to be very careful and there's oh I, 
I want to point out, yes, um, we did see a self-knock going on because Sonics and Ace are in a driving firefight that's happening down to the south right now. So you might see that happen on the kill feed a bit as it looks like they're kind of playing over into the east. So uh, Sonic's not wanting to get out of their vehicles, but I think that Ace had to kind of, uh, they got a little bit too gun heavy there and didn't realize exactly where the shots were going. I think along that, what we were sort of talking about here with the idea of, of teams getting to this stage, there's something to be said for, and I can say this by some of these rosters by looking at them, of friends and people who play together being like, hey, let's just do opens, right? This is going to be awesome. We're going to have tons of fun. And they go out there and they grind it. And they're like, if we go the distance, that's cool. But if we don't, it is what it is. And then every step that you do well, it sort of becomes more of like, oh, God. Oh, oh shoot. Like, are we, are, are we going to qualify? Like, do we need to, like, do we change what we're doing? Do we keep goofing off? Do we keep taking these fights? And I do think sometimes it takes teams, like, and I would say Aces crew probably fell into this, a day or two, a, a round or two at the uh, at the higher speeds to go. Okay, this is the changes that we need to make. This is real now, if that makes sense. Because I think they were just able to to run amok when it came to the early stages of opens. Yeah, I, I think that you're leading into the fact that a very tried and true thing is the the more experience, the more comfort that you start to get. The the it's your first couple of opens are going to be all nerves and fun, right? You're fly by the seat of your pants. You might not understand the meadow, all the other things, and how it all interconnects. But the more that you play, the more you start finding your comfort and your skill sets inside that one. And safely, is going to spot out Chow in their rotation. This is going to be just to the east of Shelter itself, along that prison hillside. A couple of shots going to be coming out, but they should be able to continue rotating pretty cleanly. Uh, also, just because it's very apropos, I wanted to point out the fact that Elevate are presently on the top of Stone. I got a lot. Everybody in chat's giving Seifu a hard time for various this or that's, but at the end of the day, he can't hit any. He didn't even hit the car once as it drove by, so I'm just saying. Everybody misses. Hey, look, look. He's designed for killing people that are on the ground True. in a firefight. Not for cars, right? <laughs> Let's go. I'm excited to see them back at four deep. I, I, I think they still walked away with two despite a tough shift and coming off of that hill. You know, I think you brought that up in the last game. Gibson, how hard it is to transfer, transition off of those towers, especially if you don't get the shift. Um, so this one, I think, is a lot more in their wheelhouse, despite the fact they're coming so far from the military. Yeah, it's the it's the idea of coming down a hill is always a lot more difficult than uh, than it would need to be. I know that I had a chat with Blood about this. He spoke particularly about Miramar. He's like, any team that plays up on top of those hills is is pretty much trolling the rest of the lobby. But looking at top of the hill, I think Stalber is a very different beast indeed. And I think Elevate will be pretty happy that they have garnered position at that spot. Because not only is it the high ground and it's got plenty of cover, but Matt, the amount of information they're going to be able to gather on the rest of the lobby, right? From just scanning the hilltops, looking at what's going on. It's a great spot for scouting too. And that's one of the interesting things about Stalber is it's too big up at the top. You can't control all of it with just one squad super efficiently, right? Just due to like the tapping options now comes through. So you're really having to make commitments in and that scouting and making sure you're keeping a constant eye on these very wide approach angles is either going to be live or die up on the top of the Stalber hillside. But if you can manage to hold it, it makes the rest of the game so much easier. Coming down that hillside, you're going to know exactly where everybody is already entrenched. And you've probably already known who you've weakened, who you might have broken armor off of, because really there's the top of Stolber that's got gear, and then everybody that's going to kind of hunker down across it has nothing. So the attrition war for those guys on the hillside is massive. I always talk about helmets and vests as that tertiary utility, right? It's the sort of stuff that can win or lose a game for you when you get into the very late stages. And... The ability for teams in cover to replenish those is massive. Like, I always say, getting in long-range gunfights like this early on is an investment into the late game. You're not going to get any points off the back of it. You're not going to get any kills, but you're destroying that tertiary utility, and it can help you a lot later on. Uh, I am circle. Most people are coming in. You can hear mortars now starting to come out. That's going to be here or there as we move forward. Everybody kind of waiting to see where that next circle goes. Um, you can see Aces did end up just to the north of Sonics. They kind of separated up. Chow did manage to move in just to the south of them. And the circle is going to lean into Stalber and Kameshki. So we're going to get that very vertical eastern slope and play Yasnaya as well in all of Stalber itself. Get ready. Everything in the west about to get spicy because look at the pathing options. Right, right. You can go like south of the lake or you can go north of Stalber, but that's really your only big option. 
Would you say, though, that this circle's best case scenario for the what the possibilities that we could have had, right? This is probably the most player friendly one. There's not too much water. There's no decision on whether to go north or south with a river. It's got plenty of land. I, I think this is one that a lot of the players will be OK with. It definitely allows you for the easiest rotations because moving into the Badlands that are just to the west of Stalberg can be extremely painful. And if we had gone south, just due to anybody having to move in from that western area, trying to cross those bridges, that would have potentially been a lot of small gate kept positions. So I do think that you are correct in that this is kind of the more friendly approach. I'm going to be curious to see how Elevate responds to this, because remember, they are our top hillside team, right? They're playing much more into hearing what's going on with Sonics and Ace. So they've been kind of monitoring that, and that's allowed For and In to kind of move over onto that western slope. Not all the way up on the top of the hillside, but definitely in an encroachment zone. So that means that that means that the first step down the hillside is now going to be foreign in and it looks like not a hobby could be coming in back behind them. Yeah, they've, they've extended out a little bit and I think the push as well. Panala, Panela good are on their way and Shin Boy should be able to spot them out as they make their way up the hills. Jam's going to uh, take down Zillow's Ace's crew. It's kind of a exercise in misery so far for them in the early stages of this game. The tail spots out fake on the rotating. As again, if you're watching this at home, you can have the map stream open on a second monitor. I know that Matt and I will look at it quite a bit. The emergency pickup that's being used by Bondi de Gaia as well. Surely they have to go towards Kameshki with this move. Yeah, and it's pretty open right now. We did have AKA kind of move into that area, but no, they shift down to the south. Looks like they're going to go for those compounds that are going to be over there. While Synergy is making a rotation for almost the exact same point. Aces crew, you can see in their fortified positions that they're playing from. Not the most fortified to say the least. This is one of the reasons we did see the knock, is they just kind of had to crash in, aka moving out of Kameshki, they're going to be coming after this one. Jam looks like he's got himself a free target, but the shift <laughs> on the roof denies it, and oh, that is painful to watch. Louise just said no. He just said no. He shut down Jam, and Zealot now will turn with his tail between his legs. He's trying to get out of dodge, but Sonics have the oversight on this one. Hwim didn't necessarily have the highest or the best game in the kill feed, but he is the leader for SQ. He is the IGL, and he makes the calls when they matter most. Kick gets their second kill of the map as Sonics will start sponging up points. And all I'm going to say, Matt, is if Sonics keep sponging points, it's a good thing for the teams that are on the cusp. Yeah and no. It means the fact that if they have a bad game, they're going to have a way harder time making it back into this one. But as long as they can keep their points per game up, yes. What really worries me, though, is Sonic's firing line corridor that they've got set up. They're playing that eastern slope, the couple of compounds that are just going to be the east of Stolber itself, and they are going to have a ton of vision. Yeah, a lot of those trees block it out, but look at what they're seeing right now. They're firing so far across the map just due to the verticality that this is provided. They're kind of the overlords, and the circle pops into this as well. Really, now, the duo to the north has to make sure that they don't allow aces or AKA into this, but they're going to have so much control over that low ground. Yeah, Zealot has been knocked now too, but I'm with you. I'm looking, I'm looking particularly at Mercy, right? Because you got to feel that Gatos, Chicos, and Future might just move their way. Zealot is going to get picked up as Rafex will find that kill. Gatos, Chicos, they're on the move now. Keegan, Hooligan, Spotsy, and Justice. And the question is, where do they go to? If they can get ahead of Mercy, they'll be pretty happy, but it's a tough rotate they have as well. Because it's still mostly fields, right? We're still mm -hmm. looking at those Yasnaya fields in that kind of southwestern area of the circle, so they've just got to make the play in. They do at least manage to make the foot landing right up on top of this, and Spray's not going to come out force everybody away from the window. Chico, uh, Gatos Chico's going to go ahead and throw in a couple of the Molotovs to slow down the pacing and give them the capabilities to move in. Nade's going to land right up in front of them. They've got to be careful of those windows, but they do manage to drive through his... Oh! Those Molotovs do connect. Snake's going to fall. PWD has arrived as well, so it's a three versus four fight as Justice gets Sneak. Seifu is on the ground floor as well as the Gatos Chicos get a couple of players inside. Seifu does find the knock. Justice is actually going to go down to his own team's blue zone now as well as the Pendulum oh, swings back in favor of Mercy. Sneaky. He managed to kind of navigate this one back in, get control back of that lower section, get into a position. You can see the rest of Gato's Chicos are just having to try to use the smokes right now. Seifu has kind of started to write this one back together. They just have to make sure that they play the angle cleanly, and they are. 
That's what Seifu, that is the impact this player can have. Gato's Chico's, it's all down to spot safe. They know exactly where he is. Mm. One peeks from the ground floor, two peek from the stairs, and that is clean from Mercy. Four kills for them. And I know it's only game two, but it keeps them on the right side of that cutoff line where they would expect to be. That drop from Seifu to end that fight, reading exactly where he was going to be playing along that edge of the stairs, man, that was so, so clean. So, other rotations still, we can see that it is going to be not a hobby trying to encroach into AKA's territory. The remnants of Ace are playing in Kameshki. They're going to have to make a move as well. Almost everything's kind of calmed down except for OG, who's going to have to figure out how they're going to navigate this while Future is playing up to the north of them. AKA, you can see kind of looking up this hillside going, okay. What are we wanting to do about this one? As it is going to be not a hobby doing a longer northern wrap and roll. Is their vehicle rolling down? Okay, they did manage to ride it right before AKA is going to give it a shot. I just point out that in the kill feed, Santa has just killed or got a knock with, uh, with a mortar strike. Don't know if anyone else seen it, but I did. And Slabby will get knocked. Yeah, there we go. Here's another one landing on the spot, and that does a ton more splash damage. So close. Here's the last one. It's going to land. It goes a little bit too far, but 55 are in a world of pain, but they should get everybody back on their feet. It's scary looking. A new circle is going to pop, and it's going to move more down into the fields, keeping some of the, like, the foothills of Stolber in play. So Elevate going to be looking down on everybody, trying to navigate the couple of dips on this one. This is actually a very open circle. Uh, most of the trees kind of lean far more into that, uh, I guess, in between PNG as well as Pachow. And really kind of north of where Foreign Inn is going to be at, and to elevate is going to be a very wide open visible section of this map that these teams are not going to want to move into. Yeah, Mercy with four points on the circle, or south, south of the circle. PWD has kind of secured that little horseshoe grove that you can play in. Gats picking up a nice kill from range, a point on the future from afar as they look towards that shack, which of course is just about inside the edge of the circle but mercy are looking that way for nation will probably be peeking over their ridge line towards that gunfight as well i'm very curious as to what decisions the team at the, the north may make because like you said it's a very open circle in and around the center you're better to play around the edges and feed your way in well, we can see a couple of teams are trying that right now as it is going to be not a hobby running right through the thick of all of it and uh, it's going not the worst not the best but you know, mostly it mean most of the other teams actually ended up starting fighting each other and that gave them an opportunity to sneak through this one it's going right <laughs> you were saying it's not going great it's not going bad it's going kalnix will create the great wall of smoke as synergy Attempt to push their way towards 55 on the edge of the circle. Good need to toss in. Lopez has been knocked. A splash damage is found on the Slabby. He will go potentially into some cover. A Shin Boy puts pressure on the other side of the circle. Cluzera will get that knock on the Slabby. And 55 are dealt with by Synergy, who secure the bunker. Clean push from them. Just beautiful. They made it look simple off of that. Just steps in with the firefight. You can see that OG also having to kind of rotate off in the hills right now. Elevate still trying to exploit this high ground advantage that they have over P and G. And it's still pretty vertical over here. Sonic's now one of the few teams out as well as AKA and uh, Gaio. As Gaio's going to have to make a move into the west in just a second. Uh, after they finish up all of this rotation craziness that's going on with AKA. Yeah, inside the blue, you can see that Rafex is in a bit of trouble as he's DBNO. Another nade's going to get tossed. 29 damage found on the splash. But now Bondi to Gaio have to worry about the blue as well. Pi Deem bleeding out. It's all down to Andrew and Hazton. And the question is, where do they go? Because Sonics, I've got Shrimsy keeping an eye on this one as well. Yeah, this is, even if you win it, and this is still a circle four, you can see the blue zone, it's not at that tickle stage anymore. It's going to be a problem that you kind of have to focus in on. Now, locked into position with multiple Overwatch positions that are going to be watching it. I mean, even Synergy can get some vision on this one after this firefight goes down and they have to rotate in. So, I also want to point out, Ace still has one of its members alive. You can see him up there in that northeast, just kind of creeping his way in, letting Sonics do all the work for him as we're going to move more into this roadside. and Even less cover, man. It's rough. I think Mercy are going to be happy for getting into the points, at least. I think this is a position they should get points from. But when you try to peek over that ridge line, problems might just arise. Elevate coming down the mountain, moving towards Sonics and Panella Good. And this is the thing, right? When Sonics see this gunfight and see Nox, they'll probably make their move as well. 
rats are wrapping it back behind us. They realize mm-hmm. exactly where elevator focused in on. So rats are slow creeping in. They are with that foreign in back behind them, but they don't have the ele- the chance to really just jump in on it. Sonics are being very, very bold and looks like they're trying to move into a gate up position right now. See if they can stop all of these teams that are going to be trying to come down from the north. And Shinboy is doing roughly the same thing. Moving right up next to him, barely dodges out that nade. I don't know if he knows where Shinboy is yet. Oh, the ball is going to land right on top of him. Yeah, Tiggleton's down. You saw the kill feed as well. A res situation for Sonics, who've only got one player in active coverage right now as they will go for the res. Shinboy gets his kill confirmed. That might just allow Punage to push down to attempt to get this res, but Grantlantis will do a couple of taps with that dragon off as Rats pick up a point here too. Chun gets the angle. Chun wins. Elevate have now been eliminated, but that's not that for Rats. They've still got a couple of teams to deal with on the north side of the zone. But they also managed to take out everything that was going on with those foothill positions, where we saw that fight that was going on between Sonic Stiggleton moving down there. So they have their foothold. Now they still have to contend with PNG, like you're talking about. Sonics are trying to move into that position right now. You can see Future trying to come in that southwestern area. Rats just trying to start farming up over here, realizing the PNG is going to be the problem. Beat it in off of it. They're just going to go ahead and polish that one off in style. Go for the reload. Go for the res. Four man up and in control of the north. Yeah, and that is Danimon's actually still alive. Well, as I said, Danimon will get picked up by Martin. So we've got eight teams, 27 players still alive inside the server. We're about 50 seconds away from that next zone pop, which could be telling for a lot of these teams. But I got to say it, right? Look at how clean it is. But let's turn our attention to the southwest because now we've got a couple of teams going head to head. Most notably, this is a good chance for Mercy to pick up a ton of kills. Already sitting at five. I saw exactly where FT moved into, and it is just lobbing nades here on perfectly up on top of them. Finishing out, getting another knock. The car is going to be landing in a second. The other nade's going to finish it out. This is an authority move coming up for Mercy. Keep in mind, they do have Lucid that's playing very far back behind this one. Make sure that nobody creeps in back behind them. So I'm kind of curious to see how much further Mercy wants to push this, as they do have four and in that are going to be to their northwest. But that hillside's going to be very hard for them to deal with. I wouldn't be surprised if they're just kind of content where they got. I'm not going to lie. I can definitely see the European flair coming out and Mercy having a European IGL. You know, they're doing some moves that you wouldn't normally see. And I think that it's working for them in a lobby like this. The zone shift pops and this was the problem. This is what I was saying it could be an issue for Mercy, but they've already got a ton of points for Nation making a move up towards Rats, though, as Zyko will lead the charge, chasing his own name up towards the, ro- the rock, but he's got to be careful with Gats in the open, and Gats is going to get the knock from range. Beautifully played off of that one. You can see Rats is separated out, trying to see if they needed to control this territory or how they're going to move into it, so for Nation going to lose Zyko. Now, how are we going to see Rats respond? They still have to contend with what's going to be going on with OG. That's how come all their members can't commit in just quite yet. They also know Sonics are playing the hillside just a bit further to the east of that position. Now, for and in, are they going to play this more aggressive? They're going to shift back down to the south. They know that Mercy just made an aggressive move over there, so maybe they can play along that line. Coming after something that's a bit more weakened, but it's going to be safe food that's going to be guarding that angle. He's already got the beat into it. He's taking the shots and a force him back up that hill. He gets the knock onto Spectral. For Nation will suffer with loss. Grant steals it away. There was Rats extended down from the north as well. The battle for the west begins. Lucid will peak as Daniel will get confirmed out. Mercy really putting in a lot of work in this map already. Nine kills for them as they all battle on the west. And, well, Tian for Four Nation caught out in the open. PWD doing a ton of damage. One more shot should do it. There you go. PWD gets the kill, and it's 10 points for Mercy. And that just provided a clean path for Mercy to follow up into. They saw the retreating line coming out from four and in. They just step into it, and now that little bit of a precarious position they were in beforehand is completely solved. Four and in, just, you can tell, they didn't really want to push into Rats and how they were set up along that hillside. So instead, Rats has now got vision for days, and they're exploding it already up to nine kills, shooting up this leaderboard right now, presently in second place. And they've got their eyes on the prize, man. Everybody else has to contend with the angles that they've got. Yeah, Sonics are getting themselves some loot weapons as well. Shrimzy with the MG3, but Rachun from the Rats will come this way. That's a knock on to Yakuza as Pichao, one of the teams that we highlighted a little bit earlier in the show, are in a tough spot now as they have multiple teams who want their spot. Shrimzy has been taken down, and that's the MG3 and the level 3 gear removed. Sonics, two players up, five kills on the board for them, but still on 34 points after two maps, and they might still add a few more. 
It's getting scary for Sonics right now, though, as Synergy is moving into the south. Rats now having to contend with Mercy. That's realized the opportunity that this high ground position is going to provide. Everybody from Rats now having to flank back over into this position. Even Chun can't stay back behind it. Seifu leading the charge for Mercy right now has an idea on where multiple members are playing along these trees. But the problem with it is no clean angles until Sneak Attack finds one, gets the knock on to Gats, and now he's gonna find Grant Lannis as well. Mercy are on the charge. The Spoon is able to trade that knock back. So it is essentially a three versus two in the next map. But Seifu will go for the res on the sneak. The zone shifts violently away from this gunfight. And this plays into Pichao and in Synergy's hands. But I think Synergy might just be making their move. As you can see, Cluzera has been downed as they make their push as well. But it's all trees for cover up at the top of this. Sonics are trying to exploit that. They're coming in right back behind this one. And so, yeah, while rats are trying to recover, Sonics coming on one angle. Seifu just walking right up into the thick of all of it. Just going with the spray. Absolutely unloading. Now, Rats, Chun, last one up, and he is now south of Mercy's position. He tried to flank in. He got separation away from Sonics, but he is so heavily outnumbered. He might be able to kind of play into the Rats' name, hide out here. They shouldn't be expecting him to play this position, and technically, Mercy can defend him. He's got the M249 as well. That thing with an extended mag. One good spray all the way across, holding down Mouse One, could be the end of Mercy. They need to clear this rat from this position. But I think they're going to move. This could be the opportunity, maybe, for Chun to do some damage. Lucid scouting out the edge of the circle. But could there be some trouble brewing? They're moving towards Sonics. Here's the vehicles moving up at the top of the hill. They don't want to move too aggressive yet. They know how the firefight went. They've been paying attention to the kill feed. They know who's up there, but they're very nervous also about Pachow going to be back behind them in the compound. Pachow playing a lot more calm right now, just wanting to make sure that they're playing for survival points more than anything. With the sweep coming back in, it looks like Mercy might be realizing, okay, another push could be coming from this angle. That means that Chun is going to be pretty vulnerable. Laying down, playing it, get spotted out. It's going to be Seifu. Of course it's going to be Seifu. Now moving this way up to Fort kills for mercy 12 of those kills coming from seifu and pwd the europeans i gotta say look i'm from ireland sometimes i gotta say nice things about european players right everyone knows i'm adopted na but it's nice to see the two euros putting up good numbers for their team and this is what mercy were doing on day one of the you know the first round as well so I expect they'll do a lot more of that. Kickstart spots out PWD, who will dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge his way out of trouble. But have you noticed the way that Synergy have played this, right? They lost two players pushing Pichao. They have now went for south control instead. Nobody wanting to make their way up the hillside. The, it, the sight lines are just going to be so open. Trees, a couple of rocks, that's about all you got. And maybe a bit of a dip that's going to happen. Kind of close to where we see that crate, but nothing going to be comfortable. Chow going to be really the X factor. And whenever they have to leave their compound, what they opt into doing. You can see Sonics was kind of eyeing that to see if maybe they had started that step out right now. A couple of easy kills to, could be found there. Also, Synergy kind of eyeing that same sight line while Mercy, they're in a good position from now. But I'm a bit nervous once they have to move up and they have to move into that tree line for cover. Sonics and Synergy both could have kind of a pincing angle on them. Yeah, I think Sonics, though, you feel like they'll battle with Pichao at some point now as well. Both of these teams almost getting evicted from their position by the circle, and the utility dump will now begin. Kickstart has grabbed the MG3. Kickstart, of course, with one kill so far. Pretty good game for him in the last one, but you feel like Pichao are kind of sitting ducks here. Sonics know exactly where they are, and Sonics are trying to make the first move. I mean, Pichao just doesn't even want to move right now. This is just... Hunkered down, firm defense, staring at doorways, trying to eye what's happening with this one. Sonic's definitely being the intimidator inside of this, but Blue Zone's going to come in. That means a couple of movements are going to have to come out from Pachow. We are now in number eight. This is going to hit hard with Blue Zone. If you're Pachow, do you just surrender it over? Do you try to go for the firefight? Mercy's used this opportunity. They've stepped into the center of the circle. They're looking down into this as well. H we now going to just try to step up, see if he can get the knock. Cannot get it on Pachow, but now it's going to be Mercy. High ground that is just going to be feasting on all of this. 
This is Mercy coming in strong. 15 kills for them, dominating the lobby. Synergy, they'll go for the backstab, but Seifu finds Martins. Seifu has been knocked, but it's a 2v2v1. Kalnix considered going for the res, but dips in the cover, realizing that Lucid might just go for it as well. He might get a two for one if that need lands beautifully. It goes just a little bit too far, but that knock has turned the attention away from the Fichao, and that will allow them to leave the compound. Mercy just walking with authority into this one, but Galnix doing a great job of holding it together. Last member up for his squad. Maybe support could be coming with Pachal, and it is. Harassing shots are coming in. PWD has to step into this one. Blinded on the side. Synergy going for the spray into it. Hero on no health. He's gonna go down. Mercy stacking up the kills can turn their attention back on Pachal. He had to use the DMR hip fire because they both ran out of ammo. Lucid is about to bleed out, but Sneak might, or Seifu might just be a possibility for PWD if he can rotate far enough around. Pichao held their position to the end, but no, Seifu just gives up his life in, a, er, in trade for information on where the Pichao players are. PWD doing the smart thing here, right? Matt, smoke off one angle to allow you to focus on one fight at a time. Problem with it is that the hill can kind of move around that kind of eastern area with that hillside. is a lot harder to predict where the push is gonna be coming from. With this, the smokes, that's where he's trying to line in, trying to force the 1v1 against the more northern section of this one. Smoke's coming down on both sides of it. Blue zone is coming and tries to go for the blind spray through it. Doesn't quite smart. Hoping a little bit of elevation is going to buy him something. He can get some damage out, but cannot get the knock. The movement now getting more aggressive second by second. It's Mercy moving in and really Pachow still just trying to retreat away, getting closer and closer to the blue zone wall. Matt, he's got no ammo. He's got 14 bullets left inside of the mini, and he's got 33 left inside of the AR. This could be problematic. Oh, yes. Molly, though, he gets the knock onto one. He's in a one versus one with 33 bullets to work with. Nateo will go prone. There's no helmet for PWD, so one or two shots from the M4 could be enough. The snake in the grass Ooh. sees him, but does PWD spot him the other way around? Goes for the dog makes it look easy. Clean up. It's going to be Mercy with 19 kills picking that one up. Wow. 29 what? points in game number two. And they are back with a bang for the last chance qualifiers. Honestly, seeing these guys going at it is just so fun. They play with so much aggression. And PWD fragged out big time in those final circles. Toffees, big win for Mercy there, right? Woo, a lot of Mercy. That was insane. They came out with nine. Is that 19 kills? Is that Did I yeah. see that correctly mm -hmm. with mine own two eyes? That was bananas, okay? Mercy was disqualified recently, and they took that personally. <laughs> and they showed up here. <laughs> And they taught us a lesson. It started with Gato's Chicos, who went 4v4. They wiped the team, and from then, it was the cats out of the bag. There was no stopping these guys, and that was incredible. Remember, Mercy didn't have PWD in the first game, and they were having to play more defensive. Now that they've got him, are we looking at this the rest of the way? I hope so. I hope so. It's Look, it's a fun to watch. They've got tons of fans in chat. They've got tons of great players. They are really, if they can qualify for the Grand Finals, this is a team that can really upset the balance in NA. Mm. Uh, I, like, I can't get over it. I can't get over 19 kills. I can't get over the fact <laughs> that I thought Pachow had it there at the end. The way that they had the spread, that it was a 2v1. I was like, oh, I was literally writing in my notes, Pachow wins with five kills, but the real winner was Mercy. Let's talk about how they should have gotten, you know, like literally typing out this whole paragraph. And then he does that with a DMR with like 12 rounds and one magazine in the AUG. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. That was probably one of the best endgames I've seen in a while. And they deserve the 29 points and the accolade that comes along with it. But, 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 but beautiful. That's all I got to say. But Chow played that one so passive Ooh. though. I mean, we saw that even whenever Sonics were moving down into it. it it was one of those, like, it, it was playing not to lose, right? It was just trying to play for the safety points. And, and they do get 10 points out of it, so it's not the worst. But you can't help but wonder if they were playing those walls a little bit more aggressive, didn't let Sonics really hold that hillside for as long as they did, and decided to sweep in, how much different that could have gone with just some more information.
hell is do you gonna do you think though matt that pichao feel like there's more pressure on them as well because they're orged up right and they kind of played that game like they were afraid to make the first move yeah. even that final fight the last player he he literally hung his teammate out to dry or watched a uh, rotation o over to the tree instead of pulling the trigger because didn't want to give away his position yet, didn't have mm -hmm. faith in his aim yet. There's a lot of little things like that we can look into. And I, I mean, I, Pachow is a good squad. I just want to see them believe that they're as good of a squad as they can be. You know, like that, they're playing too passive for a squad that can unload whenever it's necessary. Yeah, well, they, they were playing too passive for any squad. I mean, at the end of the day, when you your teammate is telling you he's aiming a DMR with a 6x at me, that's when you start to push a flank instead of just laying there and hoping that your teammate comes away with the win, right? Like, they literally gave him a 1v1 and a 1v1 instead of a 2v1, and that's where the wheels came off. But that said, either way, Mercy is kingmakers right now, looking very good, but they're still not in first because Sonics showed up today, Gibson, and they have been fun to watch. Look, even in that last game where they kind of probably knew that they weren't going to win it after maybe phase three, phase four, they still hoovered up points on that eastern side of the circle. And that is something that Sonics are really good at, right? I, I still say it. Sonics are one of the top edge circle teams inside the world. Mm -hmm. And they showed why. Even in that fight that they got third partied on with Pichao, if they weren't third party by Mercy, I am 100% sure they would have won that battle too, just because of the they were holding all the right angles. <laughs> I, I just like the idea of like, if they hadn't been third party by Mercy, opening a sequence to a fight in this game, because you could use that for literally almost every single team in that game, right? Like, like right. they got 19 kills. Only 60 people are available to kill on this Do map. Do you want to know something? Well, I mean, know in something. fairness, I, 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 I'll back up Gibson on this one. The Sonics were in an entrenched fight inside of a compound with a lot of smoke. I'm not saying he's wrong. They, they weren't necessarily, they, they had to assume that Mercy was probably going to push it, but they were hoping that they could finish it right. in time. Yeah, that was a game of maybe another second or two, and maybe Sonics could have responded, and we could have seen a much more interesting end. Right. Or, I will say, yeah, we would have seen a more interesting end game because they would have done something. They wouldn't have just laid there on their stomachs. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not saying Gibson's wrong. I was just saying, like, it was wild how involved with every single thing Mercy was. And, and I hope now that they've got this run, honestly, Sonics and Mercy up with 26 points in two games tells me that things are going to, like, the wheels are about to come off. And two teams who are angry, <laughs> like, they came guys, to this weekend angry, are about to go crazy. You guys both said, oh, it's going to be so great for these point sponges at the top. Look at what we're looking at for our top eight right now. It is mm -hmm. so close with just, like, a, what? in points or something like that that's terrifying they're like can i get an average of two points per game please please well we're gonna find out if anybody else can get points on the board because when we come back we're gonna take go over to our next map it's only three minutes away so don't go anywhere
we're back. Guy got me. Producer got me at the last second. Threw out a good let's go out of nowhere. And we should because it's time for the third game. We're only playing 12. Rubber's got to meet the road. It's time to kick the tires and light the fires. It's time to do other things that say go now and don't wait for later because this is the moment when you got to push. Because I can tell you tomorrow, teams on the bottom are going to start doing some crazy things. And it's not something that you want to be a part of. So get your points while you can. And I got two guys who love to make points. It's Matchroom. It's Gibson. It's time for Game 3. Boys, we're headed to the temperate peninsula of Tego. A place that has been a big ball of chaos and also some very confusing circles. And I got to be honest, I've enjoyed it, Matchroom. Look at how our circles have already been on Aaron Go. You went for Soriel. Oh. Best Soriel oh, we're going to Tego now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can get some really mean circles in Tego, which means that we're just going to get like a center salad piece and start pours like that. But I'm hoping that we get some more fun because I think that we're getting a really good chance to see teams like showcase why they deserve it. Mercy made a statement in that mm -hmm. last game. Sonics made a statement in the game before that. I want these guys to prove going into the next stage, we deserve to be here and some of these squads should be afraid of us. Ain't that the truth? They really did make a statement, though, Gibson. Like <laughs> Matt called it a statement, and I think that is the truest thing that I've heard today in the sense of, like, you've heard of statement pieces, right? Or, like, statement performances, going out and proving the haters wrong. This was, like, a statement game from start to finish, and the momentum it's going to give them, like, I I wouldn't want to be in the house with, with, with these guys. Like, you could be upstairs, and, like, the Seifu's ego would probably be pushing through the floor. <laughs> As you're trying to watch TV and like, what's happening down there? Oh, he's gone into Super Saiyan or however you say it. Like, they are unstoppable oh. right now. Oh, that hurt me so bad. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's he's John Wick. He's back. He's kind of thinking he's back. Yes. Boy, is he back with a boom on this one? Look, I think they needed that. You know what? Settle mm -hmm. their nerves. Because say what you like, coming back into it today, as much as they'll be like, hoorah, let's make a point. You know, we're going to be the best team in the lobby. They're, they didn't really get to practice this week the same way the other teams did. It was it was a tough one for them, so I think that they needed that one. They had their warm I actually don't think this is that rough. Yes, you've got a limited, po limited points of entry, but the terrain itself ain't bad. Yeah, I don't know, man. That backwards J where you're already, I mean, sitting at 30, 40, 30% less playable at the very start of a game. You're right. Less... It, it, you know what? I'm going to go with less entry, too. Like, the way that you talk about that kick up of the J on the bottom of the peninsula, like, there's just not a lot of options here. I think the upside of this, though, Matchroom, is if you can get an E pickup, there's going to be a ton of places you can drop in on the south side of that circle that'll probably be completely uncontested. Yeah, the wall is uh, kind of a benefit. Whenever we look at really this map and how cool it can be, this is one of the nicer circles you can get, mm -hmm. right? You can pretty much, if you want to rotate in from the north, you can go on the, the eastern side of uh, Kong Nguyen, and just kind of like hit that hill, come down off of that. You know that there's not going to be anybody over to your east. Rotate for, oh, what, several kilometers mm -hmm. pretty much down that and have some pretty open terrain unless somebody's already bunkered up against it. It gives you that my back's up against the wall, nobody can flank me kind of protection that not very many other sections of this map will provide. Specifically, I think that more often than not, people talk about how open you feel and how vulnerable you feel. This is probably one of the safer sections that you can play from. That's true. I still don't know what a kilometer is, but I, I think that the point is there's lots of space to travel. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a thousand meters, right? I'm sure that helps clarify things even yeah, more. Yeah, because I know it. Because me, me, I'm super <laughs> no. familiar with meters, okay? <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's Last time I tried the... to meter someone, I downloaded Tinder, and it was a disaster. It's the as, boxes. As... <laughs> it's the squares on the map. That's all you need to know. Mm -hmm. Look, <laughs> I, as a resident European, I'm very well versed in my kilometers. We use them in Ireland. Okay, that's it. Toffees, from here on out, we're only doing American terminology. Like whenever somebody's really excited, they're gonna be taking rights on red. We're just gonna we're just gonna go all the way down the taffy rabbit hole from this one now. Oh, is it, um, am I getting taffy. unadopted? <laughs> <laughs> no, we are they sending them. are they sending me back to the home? They're like, you know what, we tried them out, we had them for a few maps, take them back, Europe, take them back. You kept talking about sugar taxes and stuff. I don't know, man. I'm... <laughs> you'd be you'd be so bored there. Only here can the three of us goof off at the start of the game and enjoy PUBG and all of its glory. And this is why I love PUBG, okay? There is no game that I like talking about with, with my friends watching it. Like, the strategy building, the difficulty of the circles, the fact that all 16 teams can ruin things for any of the other teams at any given time. 
<sighs> I love PUBG. I love PUBG because it makes you hate it so often, and that's that's the mark of a good game. You know PUBG what the butterfly a- effect is? Yeah, you know the butterfly <laughs> effect. PUBG mm-hmm. as an esport is founded upon the butterfly effect. One team getting into a fight earlier than they should, one team rotating 10 seconds later than what they plan on can ruin the game for so many teams inside the lobby. I just love the fact that every decision a player makes impacts the game. Even Yakuza there picking up that barrel, that could yeah. impact the rest of the game. <laughs> I, I'm going, you know what? We're marking that down. We're going to see. Yakuza if he gets a kill, barrel. <laughs> if he gets a kill with that now, I'm going to look so good. And if he doesn't, it's like, what is this guy on about? If he doesn't, Yakuza? the spectator just missed it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You're, you're yeah, 100% yeah. right. Missed what? Change course of game. Exactly. So, yeah, everything's going to be perfectly fine. Um, most of our teams are already making wraps in. Um, our kind of more Western teams that did the coastline drops, there are slower rotators in. This is a section of the map that I think in America's we don't get to see a ton. A lot of our circles tend to lean a lot more north. Mm. So I'm curious to see. This is going to be a lot more of how much homework you've done. Do you, do you have an idea on how these teams are going to be navigating what somebody considers to be like a prime real estate position to play from? Sonic's. They're just kind of bullying their way into this one. You can see forcing uh, 55 kind of away further down into that future sight line. And yes, future sight line and the team future sight line. Ah. <laughs> see what you did there. They've got 10 points. This is a big day for them. I'm very excited. Arson, not a hobby. Here's Okay, earlier today we talked a little about not a hobby. Gibson, uh, are you happy with what they're doing right now? I mean, this is nice, I guess. Mm-hmm. They get a point on the board. They will lose Zolmox, though. They're down to a three. But hey, for not a hobby, being here is the prize. They might Aww. tell you otherwise, but getting here is good for them. They got a point on the board. I just want them to play <laughs> with the aggression that they played with through the open qualifiers uh... because that's why they got here. I love that you said that. So I, I've been to a couple of events, and I get sometimes get a chance to talk to players. And the amount of players who like when I'm like, what you what what is considered a success for you guys? Like, what are you looking for out of this event? They always tell me in the interview, they're like, oh, we only are happy with first. And then the camera will turn off, and I'll they'll lean over and be like, actually, we're pretty stoked to be here, and we think, like, top seven <laughs> would be amazing. But, like, I, I can't say that, right? Like, they'll eat me alive out there. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want that realism. Be like, bro, look, there's some good squads here. We're, like, top six. Man, we made mm-hmm. it. 100%. <laughs> yeah. But I, 100% I've had that where they're like, the money's really good at seven. Like, I think we could do this. This is very exciting. Tig plays the game, and I work in retail from 9 to 5, so it's like, you know, it's, it's just it's just not the same. Zealot gets in a good fight, he'll take down Danyo. His four nation will lose one. That's a point on the board for Ace's crew. We spoke about them quite a bit in the pre-show, about the fact uh, that they are very hit and miss. They started off today okay. They're sitting in 7th place, they have 2 kills on the board already. But I just feel that they're still not anywhere near where they want to be. Dude, a five points per game average in this lobby on these first two games, I would be happy with. I would want way more, <laughs> but with whatever you're seeing, like two 30 plus point games for two different squads, you're like, mm, we're still in it, man. We're still in it. We're like in touching range of making it into the top four just off of a squad wipe, right? Mm-hmm. I think, though, that the, you know, we had this conversation earlier. If you have two teams picking up a lot of points at the top, it means the cutoff is lower, right? So it Arguably, even though it's going to harm you that you're not getting the points, it does mean that it will not take as many. Like, I'm not going to lie, Matt. From what the cutoff was in the 70s over the last over the group stages, that's one of the highest cutoffs we have had in a long, long time. And I don't think yeah. the cutoff for this top it's going to be anywhere near as high. Yeah, uh, especially with the way that we're looking at it. I mean, even Rats and OG have had some pretty solid back-to-back performances, not as stellar. But I mean, Rats did have themselves a very nice run in the last game. So far, I did want to give everybody a heads up. This is a lot calmer of a game whenever we're looking at mm-hmm. everything. I mean, most of our teams should be able to find some type of territory around the Ohyong location, maybe down into studio as AKA is playing from. Um, hillsides are going to be pretty comfortable to work with. I, if I was playing in this lobby right now, the only thing I would be very terrified of is a very northern shift into the circle. If it goes back up into those fields and like the rice paddy locations, it could be so hard. It's one of the weird parts of the circle where we see end games happen sometimes and you just know teams aren't necessarily comfortable with that section of the map yet. You know, you look at our angle, every single player knows every single blade of grass, but here there's still some areas that are not treaded upon as often as others. 
We're about a minute away from that next shift, though, and this is where you kind of think, Matt, phase one, you can't win or lose the game in phase one, but you can certainly give oh. yourself a good chance. And uh, oh, you can Panda, definitely Panella lose goods. in phase one. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but these are these are pro players, right? <laughs> these true. guys, you know, those who play, play, those who can't coach, and those who can't coach cast. That's the way it goes. Woo! Woo! You, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. That, that, was a self, that was that was a self-targeter, right? That was yeah, I know. friendly fire. I know. I know. All right, let's look through this one. Um, uh, things to note out. Not a hobby is looking at PNG, but going to be wrapping down to the south of them is going to be Elevate, who's going to be regrouping at Studio. Chow is going to be coming in back behind Not a Hobby that mm, they might kind of wrap in, keep an eye on what's going to be going on. A couple of seconds until this circle is going to pop, and you can see everybody's pretty comfortable. No, I don't think I saw any emergency pickups come out yet. I haven't seen anything else along those lines. It's more just directed vehicle rotations to get comfy, and this circle is just going to go play back into that western hillside around Ohyong, and I think that this is a really cool section of the map. Yeah, I, I think it is. Look, you and you and Paro both get so excited by emergency pickups. I love it. It's like, yes, yes, emergency pickups. Elevate, they've got to pick up some points if they want to do a lot better over the course of this weekend. They're currently sitting inside a 10th place on five points. Ace and crew playing some rotation roulette and Danny Mon hops into the back seat. And you know what? Jumping into the back seat probably just kept him alive there. Hey, you know, the last time they tried to do one of these running firefights, it was against Sonics. They lost a member inside of it. Didn't necessarily go the best, but they're, I like the fact that they're at least coming back out and being like, okay, let's try it again. Let's see if we can make it work this time around. Four and in, not in the strongest position either, so you can see trying to focus back in. They do have some cover pieces that they can work with most notably. Also better sight lines for now, and some assistance also going to come back in from the duo. So they are going to get another knock, and Ace now getting closer and closer to that phase two. Not phase one, see? You said pro players can last through phase one. It's that phase two being all pesky that they got to worry about. Exactly. Spectro being pesky towards Jam, as Jam will get taken down, leaving it all down to Finna and Zealot. Finna. A player who's been in the scene for a while, right? You think back to the impact that he had at Dodge, a player that I think some people might have thought was going to make the next step, but I still think that he's got a lot to give, but Four Nation are looking to take him down. Let's see if Finn on the angle. Yeah, there you go. He catches out Spectro, who... Uh, I'm going to say Spectro got a little bit too eager to get that flush, and he's just paid for it. Going to go for a flank position off of it. Zealot going to get some shots back behind him. Very weak, and he's going to go down, so look at that! Ace ends up picking the victory off of what was a very precarious start to the firefight. And uh, I guess the benefit is OG hasn't decided to really exploit this yet. They wanted to. You can see they got really, really close to Finn's position, but they aren't going to be able to jump on him just quite yet. Yeah, here Green scouting it out, looking at the, the crate in the distance. We'll see Zealot going for it. And it's all about waiting for the perfect moment, right? With the MK12, you need to hit a couple of headshots in a row. There's literally no recoil to deal with. And here Green just doesn't fancy that opportunity at the first time of asking. Now that he gets back inside the car, there you go. It's an easier target to hit. And here Green does hit those headshots and Zealot will hit the floor. That's that really good decision making. Yeah, I think it was it a mortar. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I hear it coming in from somewhere. And Finn is like, no, I am out. I want nothing to do with this. He's going to be heading back out of the save zone, wrapping into the north. And I don't think he should bump into anybody unless he comes up to Mr. Bondagayo. But I don't think he's going to go that far. No, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, I hope he doesn't because that's pretty bad for them. If they do run into Bondi de Gallo, a team that you have high expectations for going into today, Bondi de Gallo, though, getting wrapped on by PWD from Mercy, who is a bit isolated. He's all by himself trying to take control of the center of the circle. And Haston is falling back. And this might actually give PWD a couple more seconds to make a decision on what to do. This is that whole, like, being more bold, taking those shots can buy you a couple of seconds here or there. Look, we, we saw Bond guy all rolling up right up on top of PWD. Those couple of shots have now given him the time to be able to retreat back. Seifu is going to come over here and be able to provide some assistance. The other two members should be able to wrap down, and we could have a multi-point fight coming through, or at least a pickup to get him out of position, get him somewhere a bit safer as the circle does pop. And let's be honest, it's pretty much straight up in center. I do want to point out that area north of future, if I remember correctly, is pretty open. Like, there are some trees, but I don't remember it... Like, it's not a plethora of cover to be had there. Yeah, you're kind of descending a slope uh, into that position. Sonics inside of Oh Yang. They have got the Gatos Chicos to contend with. Justice is going for a flank here alongside Spotsy, and the other two will hold as well. So this is where the Gatos Chicos are trying to play as two independent twos of each other. 
if one of the teams and one of the twos get into a fight, the other two are right beside them to help them out. They know Man. that there's a team here. Yeah, I just don't think this is the fight you want to take right now. As a couple of shots are not coming in, they've already had one member go down. It's going to be Justice getting taken down, and you can see they Sonic's already knows this, and it's just going to be continued nade damage coming out. I, I don't know what they can do from here. I mean, if they were to retreat, they're going to be moving into the fields of Ouyang, and they're going to get picked apart by all the teams that are already trying to rotate. Yes, H1 will confirm out that kill. Three for Sonics now. Keegan is still alive. I, I rate Keegan as a player. I think that if he can get an opening knock, it might just turn the tide, but all these Gatos Chico's players are happy to just play on the lower side of the edge of Oh Yang now. But Sonics, ever the way Sonics like to play, they don't want anybody in their territory at all, and they will not stop until the Gatos Chico's are eliminated. Like, the Sonics are the living epitome of that, oh, you made this meme every single time. Oh, oh, this is your compound? No, this is my compound. They want every single thing. They're so, so greedy with it, but it works time and time again. h -win was thinking about going for the drop down. Decides against it and said, I'm going to go ahead and go with the two follow up. And that's a lot cleaner and more comfortable. They do lose Shrimsy due to that one, though. But, I mean, they're still in cover. Nice Ooh. shots coming out from, what is that? On the outside? Yeah, Juno way down to the south with the rats. The Gatos Chicos are eliminated, but Tiggleton will have to get rezzed. And I wouldn't be surprised if the rats turn up the aggression just a little bit in the south. PWD the, with the Bonde de Gallo not too far away as uh, they finally make their rotate. And they'll send it a little bit closer to the center of the circle. But Mercy, man, I love this little f race that we seem to be have going on between Sonics and Mercy. They're farming kills. I want to say I love the fact that Mercy didn't make a committal into pushing into the circle, instead regrouped right on the edge. They wanted to deal with the squad that was closest to them, and now they've got a lot more control moving down into those no man's lands that we were talking about. We saw just in the last game how they can exploit those wide open sight lines because they move so quick and so efficiently, and they're going to have the opportunity to do that again in this game, provided the circle stays that direction. Yeah, and that circle shift is now just about eight seconds away. Future in a pretty good spot. It's, it's hard to imagine a scenario where they lose with this one. Bondi to oh, Gallo. No. They've got the old guard rotate. Zone shifts north. And look at the spot Mercy are in right now. And 55 esports have... What, what, is, Matt, what is going on? Like, oh, you just gotta go. There's no cover. You just gotta send it into what you think could be something useful. 55's got some high ground. They can take some shots into it, but they don't have clean sight lines because of the hills. They're trying to run down into this, but OG, you can see, doing a great job of using that small lip for some cover and really denying 55's advantage. Slabby hitting the nade onto that is going to provide an opportunity. Let's not forget, Bondagaya was back behind this one when this was going to be going on, so they're trying to get some peppering shots in. Mercy can also see a little bit of what's going to be going on with OG, as well as Future also looking up into this. So 55, for as much as they want this, they can't go for it. And don't be surprised if Sonics decide to go north you know, to the northeast side of the circle as well as they want to take the position that 55 are playing. So a lot of these decisions could just have an impact yet. 55 Esports got to be careful of their south. Bondi de Gallo did get the res off in the midst of all that mayhem inside the circle, but there's so many teams that need to migrate in that it could become a big problem. I think that some of the teams that are on the south edge, like your futures, you know, like not a hobby, they're the teams at most risk now with te if teams rotating their way. Here's Sonics making their rotation, and there's going to be 55 that spots them out, taking a couple of shooing shots. And of course, the more in the east. AKA now trying to make their rotation right up Chow, who's not inside the safe zone yet. This is more seeing if they can pick up a couple of kills in that rotation. Not going to be rewarded for their patience, but keep in mind there's not a lot of good moves to make in front of them as well. AK is going to stop to the west of their position. Synergy is just going to be a little bit to the northeast of that, so you can see cross line firing coming up for the rats. They're going to be threading the needle right in between both squads. Going to lose to Spoon due to it, but this is going to be a very bold rotation that could have a massive reward if they can get into position. Yeah, rats now. They've got a bit of a spread. They're trying to find somewhere to play inside the circle. Future making as much noise as they possibly can. Terrazoka can see Kalnix in the distance, but he gets a knock onto Nateo as Pichao will lose one. And this is pretty bad. You've got AKA pushing towards Mercy. And this is, you know, I, I don't want to be fighting Mercy with the way that they're playing lately. But let's see what AKA can do. They're coming into this so blind. They have no idea that they're going to be playing into this position. Nade's going to be landing right up on top of them. 
behind this. Elevate is going to be wrapping into AKA to make this even spicier, but great old come out from Bonda Guy. Getting the spray on the one. Unexpected, but it's just going to be a quick spin to finish that one out. PNG going to go ahead and get the dip as now we've got Elevate wrapping in right back behind AKA's Mercy's collapsing on the other side. Yeah, Vegas is pushing this way as well. It's a three way dance up on the edge of the circle. R uh, one is down. Seifu and the rest of Mercy Gaming want to clean up the team in the middle to make sure nobody pushes their way. This is a big battle for the Northwest. Seifu will put a beautiful nade up. He gets the flush onto Rafex. And Elevate, it looks like Elevate are bailing off of this fight. The way we see Mercy play these tree line fights is just so freaking clean, man. It, I don't even know how you can. They, they just cover the outside angle so well that they deny. They realize the path and how the tree all stacks up together. Oh, and you can see on the map, it's just a straight up funnel into Mercy and they've got the defensive line the whole way. AKA is just stuck here. Elevator's starting to realize we can't get into position yet either. What are we going to do off of it? But Chow rotating up into the north might be the only thing that could provide a retreat for these other squads, but they need to make that fight happen. PWD's got a straight beat on them. Yeah, Nade being tossed PWD's way. This could be a spot of trouble. And Santa does a ton of damage, but there's PWD getting the knock onto BL. He will get that knock, but PWD is putting in some work as well. Sneak attack gets the off angle and gets the flush. One member of Mercy, DBNO, but this could be the signal now for a push from AKA. They've regrouped on the south side of the circle and well, it looks like for Pichao, this was the wrong decision to make. They were eliminated. But Sonics, they've moved exactly where I expected. Now, they're pushing towards 55 with two players up. PWD with as many Ds in his name as he is expecting to get kills per game, it feels like right now. AKA now trying to make that wrap in between Elevate. Uh, not a lot of other options that they can really do. The vehicle's going to explode in front of him. That's going to die out the cover. Here comes Mercy back behind him. They're going to have the open angle into it, and you can see it's just... What do you even do? Mercy already at seven kills right now. Keep in mind, Sonic's at six as well, so that means that Sonic's is still holding on to first, but this is definitely an arms race. The amount of kills that these two teams are getting is nuts right now. That'll be Sonic's down to one player left up. Kickstart spots out Gats over by the crate, and well, a combination of Future and Sonic's deal with the rats. Eight teams left alive. We're inside the placement points now, so every kill matters from this point on. Old Guard, four kills for them. One kill spread evenly amongst the, the every single team member, but Kill Demo will get flushed out. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work as they were trying to balance it out. Now let's see if Kickstart can kind of navigate into this one. Uh, OG does have the position of gatekeeping out 55, but Kickstart is gonna be wrapping in very close back behind them. See if he decides to get too frisky with this. He can play that lower lip just to the south of his position. Meanwhile, Mercy's just going to go ahead and get that harassment in on 55, so that way they're not going to encroach into their territory. Nobody playing in the center of the circle because you can pretty much see why. This is kind of over the northern part of the center. There's just not a lot of cover to be had. Future having one of the few compounds as 55 is going to get eliminated. New target for Mercy going to be OG. The lobby has mercy, but they're not showing any to any of these teams. Not a hobby will get eliminated as future Sam Crow managing to pick up that kill. They're sitting in fifth place now with 16 points. We've got two solos. Ace's crew still with one up. You've got one up for Sonics as well. The zone shift. Well, as it stands, future are the only team with any footing inside the circle whatsoever. And Mm. I think that you willed this into existence, Matt. I genuinely think that this circle is your fault after what you said in phase one. Hey, I mean, you just got to play the conditions. See, that's the way I look at it. If I see where the circle is going and I'm like, this is the worst spot on the map. So let's get one of the better areas right next to the worst spot on the map. It pays off more than you think. Elevate, uh, you can see, suffering from the, there's no cover to be had. We're looking at the circle right now, guys. This is somebody on one side of the circle, shooting at the other. And now you understand why these 16 players, nobody wants to go into the zone except for Elevate. Seifu's just got another knock. I would love to see what his average damage is every single round he has played so far. Sam Crow's got the angle of the Sonics. This would be a two-point kill if they're able to find out Kickstart, who's made himself... A little car for it outside the zone. Shin Boy is going to fall at the hands of Terrazoka as Future are fighting on multiple fronts. And they can, right? Because even if Future sustain a knock here, Matt, they've got the cover to get the res off. Sam Crow is really the only one who's at any real risk. We're still looking at super compacted leaderboards. Six, I want to say 17, 16, 14, 14 for our top eight moving on to the grand finals that are going to be next weekend. Keep in mind, we also still do have more action that are going to be happening tomorrow. 
But we still have the beast that is Mercy that have now wrapped over to the eastern part of the circle where we saw OG and 55 playing from a second ago. Now just trying to put a firm strangle hold on everything. They know where the strong squads are and they're trying to take them out before they even get an opportunity to move. Yeah, they want to play the dirt road as well on the side because they realize how open the other side oh, the of the circle is. Safe food is ready. Waiting. Safe food gets one. Safe food does a ton of damage onto the other. And he dips back into cover, realizing now is not the time to overaggress. Kai Shen's going to get spotted by PWD, leaving it all down to here. Going the explosion does even more damage. And the blue will compound the misery. No mercy. Clearing the section of the map. Old guard getting torn apart. They're, they can't even move into the zone. You can see, I, I think that he's just going to try to wait this one out, feed it over to blue. There's no real option on moving out. Kickstart is going to be the beneficiary of that. Now creeping in, he's going to be finding himself inside the top five as we have two solos, Mercy at the top, Elevate getting picked apart between Mercy as well as Future to the South. You know, if Mercy didn't have a single placement point, they would still be in second place. That is how many kills they have gotten inside this lobby. 15 kills this time. They've already got a 19 kill chicken dinner, and I wouldn't put it past them. Particularly. Yeah. They'd be in seven. They'd be in seventh it, place just off of their kills. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It is it is so good for them. But if the zone shifts north, which it should, future need to move. And this is what that decision from Mercy to take this spot could really pay dividends. Let's not forget about Finna. Finna's done a great Oof. job for his team to get some points, and there's the Mercy shift. All right. Everybody, work together and maybe you can get some damage on to Mercy and what's going to be happening. Because elsewise, I mean, uh, FT does have those crates that they can play. That is in cover, but let's put that in some really big quotations, right? That's not going to be near as good. The only real benefit that the rest of the circle has is this lower section that Mercy's playing. They don't have the best vision out until they kind of step up to peak. So that's why you can see Future and a couple of these other squads kind of using this opportunity to see if maybe they can get in a position. But Actually, Mercy's going to send PWD down to the south. I love this. But Kickstart could be the problem, right? Kickstart's been in this position for a long yeah. time. Future know that Kick's there. But do Mercy. They've got to make sure that the section of the map is completely clear. And I have seen Kick win 1vx is for fun. Finna on the other side of the circle. His position is much worse. It's much more untenable. They know where he is. You know, he has to use these smokes. He just is praying he can get up to that next rock and hit that Z key and go prone. Elevate kind of getting more of the, the vision game going right now, as you can see, being a little bit more bold with Mercy playing that dip, and you can see the favor that's been provided. Kickstart wants to try to get a kill out of this, but you can see there's just too many firing lines. You know, Mercy's got those kind of set up to the north, and they're going to be looking in on him. And, yeah, I mean, that's not much else that he can do, so he's just going to go down to the zone as we are going to see Mercy elevate and future our top three teams. Kick got an extra kill on the board. He also got himself, got Sonics into the top four. Great bit of uh, salvaging from Kick, but Mercy have such a good position. This is all open fields and rocks though from this point on. This is what Tego can fall into. A sneak attack can use this rock to peek towards future and he sees exactly where HG is. The only thing that I will say is we are now in the Dragonov danger zone, Matt. Any headshot onto a level 2 helmet is an instant knock. Elevate is hardcore focused on Mercy. They know the fact that that is the threat if they want to win this, and they do have a bit of an angle into this. You, it, every single time you see Sneak Attack going for that peek up, it's Elevate that's harassing that angle. Uh, Mercy can't really push the cleanest up that hill, so their focus is predominantly back down on Future, and Future is just hunkered down, wishing everybody else would look at someone else other than them, because kind of the way it's going down is Shin Boy is repositioning, he wants to play a bit more to the south and make sure that he's protecting that angle, but no clean sight line for them to work yet. This is a big game for Elevate as well. They're inside the top three. They have two players up. This is a really good opportunity for them to kickstart their day as well. But Future are rotating closer and closer to the circle. Headshot landed by PWD. He has five kills this time. Five for Seifu as well, as they have ten between them. But you feel the big thing for Mercy is they need to make sure that Lucid keeps tabs on Elevate. Oh. Lucid's job is to watch Elevate. And he keeps getting more distance to work with. You can see he's getting a lot more, I guess, comfortable shifting up that hillside. Shinboy is trying to maneuver into where he can put some type of defense up against what Future's trying to do. 
future they're sitting on five kills they've been putting in some work they've just been on the more i guess quiet side of the map while mercy's been kind of running amok in the north they've been kind of what's controlling to the south they got themselves that good compound they've managed to get into a circle which let's be honest was pretty hard for them to do they managed to realize the navigation points that they needed to take and are going to find another path into the circle just stacking up poros used car lot over here to find themselves another way to find some type of defense yeah parked like poro there too didn't they uh <laughs> they park right up against the rock bale frost from elevate you know what? even though he's got this rock for cover he's actually got a decent bit of terrain that kind of funnels their way too which means that it's very difficult for mercy to spot them out but you feel like whichever team engages with the other one for oh my god lucid what a need over towards hg and now future are down one and this is a problem because look elevator pushing elevator read the kill feed they know that future are weak and they think this is their best chance to get some real big points at the end of this one they know they're hardcore outnumbered. If they want to get any more points, they need to go for a kill. Maybe wipe out the other squad, pick something up. Shinboy getting a lot more crazy with these shots. Blue Zone going to be right up on top of them. That's going to hit real hard. That's going to force them back into the Mercy sight line. Mercy now moving up the hill, realizing that that sight line has been surrendered, trying to navigate. Look at how fast Lucid is moving up into the north. PWD just getting complete and under control of the south. It's two squads just lying back up against the Blue Zone. Nowhere to go when Mercy just in control of it all. 3v3v2 three three v elevate pushing closer and closer towards the center of the circle but it's all locked in by mercy gaming now you can see lucid's jump scouting he cannot see the two elevate players as the bushes are hiding them bail frost spots out sneak attack but misses the shots with the 4x future need to move now as well future look like they might just be wrapping up towards elevate as bail will drop down the 20 hp and there's a big need from frogman that shield was so vital to protect him from future, and once it goes down, you can see throwables just unloaded on the angle. Now it's going to be a 3v3 lineup. Mercy, 16 kills, eyes on another 19 kill game. PWD going to drop it right on top of Frogman. Still slow pace, control, and authority. Mercy knows that they don't need to play this one crazy. They've got everything under control, and they are the manipulators, forcing every bit of movement on future side. Look at PWD. The holding it down, just continuing to rain down havoc. Terrazoka, the last player standing. No cover, no chance, no health. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Back to back, 19 kill wins for Mercy Gaming. Wow, wow, wow. 58 points in the last two maps. Incredible. <sighs> Dude, Mercy had such a great day one whenever they were playing through the qualifiers. We saw them pick up 65. That pales in comparison to what we're seeing, Toffees, and just the amount of damage and hellfire that they are unleashing on this lobby. I was so excited for the last game when they got 19, but then, like, I just all of a sudden started to expect it. Like, this game was exciting to watch, <laughs> but I was like, oh, I don't win this one. I mean, Mercy was wild to the point where, like, there, there were six teams left, and Mercy's the only one not limp limping in to the final circle, but not only they're not limping in, Gibson, they're doing it with 12 kills under their belt. Well, they're sprinting. You said that you wanted yeah. to see, you wanted to see maybe a normal person in a hundred meter sprint, just to put it into perspective, <laughs> how good they are. Future. This is, this is what, <laughs> wow, <laughs> did you really do that to them? <laughs> wow. But Mercy are like that. Actually, I have some insider knowledge, right? Sonics. Shrimzy actually messaged the owner of Mercy after the first play day and was like, hey, could you tell your guys to like chill and let us play a little bit? Because it was them <laughs> ruining Sonics's day. And this is the thing, I'm going to say it, Mercy's first day is probably one of the reasons why Sonics are in this lobby in the first place. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, also, like, can you imagine the gas of like your owner calling you and being like, hey, Shrimzy messaged me and said you guys need to calm this down. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it will, it will get juiced, man. All right, let's take a look at the numbers. 29 points. This is not the overall leaderboard, y'all. This is the game four leaderboard. 29 points for Mercy Gaming. Future, again, our time, they did come away with 13. A lot of that was they did get a couple of good shifts, uh, and they got to center very early, though I take that not away. I, I will never judge someone for getting a good spot and waiting it out. Uh, I do think when they got to that final gunfight, it felt a little overclassed, but again, it, it's a tough lobby when you're getting pinched between Mercy and Elevate. Sonics comes out with 12, Elevate at 7, Aces Crew putting up another good run. Uh, the teams that we expected to show up seem to be showing up today, Matt. 
I mean, yeah, you, how do you call yourself Mercy Gaming and play like this? This is cruel gaming right now. <laughs> you were talking about the fact that as we moved into like the top six, they were the ones, the, old, the only reason everybody was limping in was because of the damage that Mercy was putting out. Now, this is a big game for Future. Future, Elevate, Aces, Crew, Old Guard, all managing to pick up seven points. We were talking about just having like a five points per game average and how massive that will be at the end of this with the amount of points that we see Mercy and Sonics picking up. I think it's just pretty much turned exactly. into Mercy picking up, right? <laughs> right? But that's, that's why it's so funny, right? Because like, because of Mercy and Sonics, if you look at this leaderboard, a team who has a seven point game, Gibson is like, great pickup. Like you guys are killing it. You're almost to the cutoff. Like, oh, you guys are great. But it's yeah, yeah. because those top two teams are too good. We, we got so much distance from ninth place just off of those three points, guys. Let's we feel so good. Oh, it's 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 so but it's so bananas. so cruel. <laughs> it's cruel, but it's real. Like that, at the end of the day, that's where we're at. Third place true. is future. Third place is future with twenty three points because they're going to middle and holding, while Mercy and Sonic's two edge teams are unleashing chaos. Like the third circle of hell breaks open every time these guys show up and you're just caught in their playground. And, and it, it's absolutely wild to watch. I am, like I am saying though, I, I like what we're seeing teams like Rats do and what we see like Old Guard trying to pull out. They're, they're not playing passive. They're just getting caught in some of the worst crossfires you could possibly want to be involved in at times. Like, uh, in... I would be very intrigued to see how they maneuver out of this one and if they start playing maybe a bit more edge because we've been a very center meta right now yeah. and that's what rats and them are playing if you kind of step away from that and play on edge maybe you might be able to find a couple of kills here or there and that's really all you need i'm gonna put this in perspective for you guys as we get ready for the break eighth is the cutoff top eight goes mm -hmm. to the grand final bottom eight goes home 14 points is currently the cutoff which means that mm -hmm. anybody can make a bounce back and we're going to see if they can the next game starts in just about five minutes we'll be right back after this short break that sounded way too commercially <laughs>
back PAS3 it has been a wild ride so far as Mercy and Sonics have been the poltergeists of the lobby gobbling up points like they're cookies coming out of a jar to a big blue monster and I gotta be honest Matt I'm a little angry they've created a culture of fear among the rest of this lobby because everyone else is sitting there going hey seven eight points is good and here's what I me and Gibson were talking about during the break most of their points when you look at third fourth and fifth they're coming from placement because that's the only thing those two teams can't steal from you they can steal all the kills but they can't steal placement points yeah, yes i can see that the, the mindset and how it could lead into that i i just get nervous with the way that the circles go into if be trusting getting placement points because our circles have been pretty open to end as uh gibson was picking on me about is apparently i keep summoning very open-ended circles that mercy is just exploiting I would be afraid that my location, while it's going to be close to the center, is not going to be one that's going to be where I'm going to even be able to make it into the top six, right? Is, yeah, I do agree that placement points are where we're seeing our teams get there, but that feels like that could be a lot more nerve-wracking way to get there more than any other way. Anything in a lobby with Mercy right now is a nerve-wracking way to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the map we're going to. Snowy Slopes of Vikendi. Game number four about to get underway. A pretty fair plane, which obviously means it's going to be a horrific circle. Uh, Gibson is, has been challenging over and over for a lot of these teams. And honestly, all three games we have had very polar circles, right? Touching the very edge, unplayable terrain, requiring a lot of think from those teams that are dropping farther away. Was that a pun, by the way, the polar circles, now that we're on Vikendi? Like, I, like I, was that, are you, are you taking credit for that claiming, pun? Or was I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> this, this flight path could be a rough one, right? Because if this circle goes up towards coal mine, you've got probably the only bit of strange terrain inside of Vikendi. I think Vikendi's a really good map for competitive play. I feel like there's tons of cover for these teams to play on. I actually think that... It's better for teams that like to play center on Vikendi than it is on some of the other maps inside the pool, but yeah. it all depends on where the circle goes. Absolutely. And honestly, though, there's no way to not have fun on Vikendi. I think that the, the driving is more entertaining, the transitions are more entertaining, and now the circle, Matt, I would say pretty gosh darn friendly. I mean, it really comes down to who can play the most elite, right? I can, I can play the snow points too. Uh, Elevate, though, I want to point out, has the center point pretty quickly in a circle that is going to be very rewarding for that. Uh, I look at our, a lot of our key points, Decca as well as Castle, are going to be harder rotation points to get into as Mercy's going to get control over to Villa. No surprise off of that one. I'm very curious to see, look at all the late drops that happened in the West in the rotation that is going to be coming. It's... It's a lot of rotation. <laughs> I made Toffee's laugh, guys. I made Toffee's laugh. You didn't see I was, it. I did. I, okay, so just so you guys know, I'm still trying to process Matt's pun in which Gibson is sending me messages with dad puns inside of them that are uniquely just for me, which is <laughs> – you know I love that kind of stuff. I love that stuff like I love a good buffet, right? Not going to message me. I'll take Man, all you cold. can give me. It was I only send story. love to Toffee's, though. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. So, okay, we're back to Vikendi. We're talking about the teams who are on the race. And I will say, the upside, we've joked a lot about the sponge coming out from Mercy and Sonics. It'll probably continue. The good news there is I think we're going to have a day tomorrow where it is going to be a race to make that cutoff of the top eight, right? Today, we talk about the leadership. That's usually what starts these events. But the cutoff is where it matters the most, Gibson. And I think that this is setting us up for a real barn burner of a day, too. Yeah, you gotta forget if your teams now that are on the bottom side of the leaderboard, you you kind of have to just say, right, Sonics and Mercy are going to do their thing. They're going to get loads of kills. It's about maximizing our impact inside the game now. The only positive thing is a lot of these players are pretty long in the tooth now. They know what a lot of the rotating patterns are going to be like from Mercy and Sonics. Like they're going to see the circle, and they're going to have a pretty good idea as to where those teams are going to be. So what do I do? I go somewhere different and try to pick up points off of the other teams. And we might just see a, a, a scenario now where a lot of teams are just purposefully avoiding the side, side of the circles that Sonics and Mercy are in. And it will lead to more points being gathered elsewhere. And more chaos, Matt. Because to me, that also says, like, if, if teams start to adjust what they normally do to avoid another team's normal actions that shifts everybody over, right? Like you're th you're expecting things because you scrim with these people, you know how they rotate, you've done the paperwork. 
theoretically. And when they change to avoid something else, it means that none of that matters. All of that prep that you did to understand the movements of the teams that drop around you are no longer relevant. And that can throw your game completely in the dumpster, you know? And I think that that speaks again to like why it is important to make something happen in these next three games. Well, that's one of the things I want. I wish I saw that happen more in PUBG. Whenever, yeah. you know, having that secondary backup plan, drop patterns, all those other things, it's, it, well, I, ah, that's a, such a good topic, but it looks like we're gonna see if Elevate is going to commit in. They're not, they're gonna go ahead and retreat back in. So that means I can continue to talk on this for a second, but we often see them commit in saying, this is what we practice, so this is what we're going to bring in, not make those spur of the moment decisions. If you do see these actions and you can see that everybody's playing very centered and somebody's watching and tomorrow we go, oh, okay, maybe we can make like some more edge plays or something else like that and react to the meta in real time. I think it would be heavily rewarded. I just wish that we saw more teams have confidence in themselves and their capabilities to do so. Mercy Crew takes a couple of shots at Jam, and Jam gets the heck out of there. I would uh, too again, if I was Jam. Just, he ain't been having good well, games. <laughs> right? But I mean, at the end of the day, too, like they don't know it's them. I just think this is one of those where they're looking at it going, Aces needs to try to find. And this is, again, this is what's happening right now when I watch Gibson. Teams are saying, I just need to find somewhere else. I need to stop taking damage. I need to get to the mid. I need to pull the future strat and just hold something and hope it's not one of these three teams that crashes me. Yeah, that's it. And a lot of teams are sending towards the center of the circle now. Mercy are running around the area, down towards the south. You just see Sonics rotating alongside, also known as. And it's again, they might not know it's Mercy, but they'll have a pretty good idea based on where those drop spots are. Like, I always think it's really important that chat understand the amount of information that these teams process every single game. They know drop spots. They look at circles. They know... Or they have a pretty good idea of where everybody's going to rotate. They're watching the kill feed to know how many numbers are on every single, you know, team. They're listening to the gunshots nearby to try to work out what teams are fighting with who. This game is not just simply play the circle and try to be the last team, team alive. No, there is so much information being processed every single minute by these teams. And I think the mm. higher you go, the more it's like that too, right? Like you meet somebody mm -hmm. like Batulin and hear him talk about the process information that they put through in just one game, and it's absolutely wild. One of the fun things I love to do is talk to players about kill feed tracking and just the capabilities, like how one player can be like a fragger, but also be the kill feed tracker just due to how efficient that they are. Imagine hitting some of these crazy sprays on a vehicle that's going by and then being like, mentally tracking oh so and so from sonics died so and so from mercy died and so and so from elevate died and because of this we know the fact that this squad's going to be weak or trying to pull off this specific move so whenever we get to that stage we'll try to take on that specific move that is just an astounding amount of information process well it's like your rpg stats right like i've definitely heard players uh tell me things like when they were trying things out like i know there were players like greta for instance where people have said i really like playing with her in particular her communication skills are the best i've ever seen or i like playing with this person because their kill feed track is the best I've ever seen. Uh, and that's what PUBG is it's about finding somebody who fits the team. and grant lannis finds a little weakness in yeah, he definitely does, but there's a point on the board for Rats there. Climbing the table nicely, currently sat in third place with 24 points. Bonde de Gallo inside of train station alongside the Gatos Chicos as well. Gatos Chicos not really having the day they would want. One point on the board so far, and they would definitely want to add a ton more. They need to add more, but I suppose with the cutoff so low, they've still got a chance. Yeah, I, I, to be fair, Gaio also needs this really badly. They need to be pulling the trigger on this, and you can see that Hastings trying to feed that information over. They are moving. They just don't want to move too aggressive. They want to make sure that they're tracking how this comes out, and that patience might come back to bite them if we see a vehicle and everybody just try to clown car into it, but I don't know. I, I, I want to see Sexy. It's get into a position to really just absolutely unload on this one. This is a center point position, train station, firefight, you can get so much control off of winning this firefight early, but the risk of it is we often see like the stats and numbers about losing a member early. Both these squads showing a bit of hesitation because they don't want to risk that player. Yeah, and I think that losing players now in scenarios like this where all their teams are picking up so many points, 
It makes things difficult. Oh, Sexy, it sees all of the Gatos. She goes, he is feeding so much information. Andrew gets the first knock onto Keegan. And Sexy, it finds another knock onto Justice. This is all going wrong for the Gatos Chicos. A lot of damage being traded back. Pi Dean will fall as he crosses the road. Hooligan gets himself a quick double, but there's Sexy, it's once more. Hooligan wants these points so badly. Everything that he can pick up right now would just be massive for his squad, sitting at one point. He's got to try to navigate this cleanly, though. He doesn't want to go down before at least getting a couple of these flushes. Still up. You can see off the distance, Rez is going to be coming out. No, oh, it's going to be OG. Kill Demo from the high ground that's going to take him out. Oh, my. That is a, that is a point on the board for the Gatos, Chico. So they do get themselves to... But it's a really good clear on the other side of things. Bondi to Gaio, two players up, three kills on the board. And Elevate will now dissipate back into the distance. And they're playing a pretty wide split for those of you who are keeping. They're perfect. Isn't that perfect time? And look at the split that Elevate are playing right now. A 2-2 two -two as they try to secure center of the circle and a compound to the south in case it shifts that direction. Elevate falls into one of those squads as the circle does lean heavily into OG's favor down onto train station. That means that OG's position is going to be literal king of the mountain, king of the hill, whatever you want to call it. And they are going to be able to assert a lot of dominance in pretty much every circle after this, man. Um, but I'm very, very curious to see, are we going to now see another big shift? Look at how many of our teams that were playing down in the southwest path back over into the southeast. Now we've had a ping pong back over. If they were to wrap in, yes, they could come over in the west. But it's very, very open over there. It is so open. And look, you're just getting us those these circles. I feel like you're baiting these circles for everybody. Look, everybody knows the casters decide what circle is going to be before the game True. starts, right? We I mean, get the script. We know. Exactly. Somet but sometimes you got to break the fourth wall and let chat know this. Field Frost, though, is a little bit isolated with all the Sonics pushing their way. But here's another crash towards train station. Penella Good looking to hold back Ace's crew. Good, trying to navigate this one as quickly as they can. This is going to be on the outskirts of train station. They are going to see a bit of a shift in front of them. 55, though, is going to have to deal with what's going to be going on with Nada Hobby. Now they're going to be ringing out as Nada Hobby going to be making crash train station. Train station coming real popular real fast and losing a member or two might usually feel pretty safe. But look, now we've also got synergy over here into the east. This has become the most populated section of the map by far. Yeah, Sonics in that fight now with Elevate. You can see Vegas is a little bit too far away. Seifu third parties as Sonics are getting backstabbed here by Mercy Gaming. And this is good for Elevate. It might just buy them time to get the res. PWD will confirm out H1. That's another kill on the board for them. And Sonics are now fighting on multiple fronts. And it's perfect timing for Elevate. Just going to be running up. Mercy wants as much more of this as they can get. Elevate's going to have to be navigating it. Let's go ahead and add in another squad. This is going to be pouring in. It's going to land right up on top of Synergy. Synergy's going to do a good job. Of now we're going to take down Spectro. Get him out. And going to go ahead and step out. Molotov's going to land. Get some damage on the approaching foreign end members, but can't quite get the flush yet. Those Molotov's going to slow down the pace of it. More Elevate getting the high ground position. You can see down in the bottom right corner. Getting some vision of what's going to be happening is Oh, oh Daniel going to get caught in the Molotov. Synergy defends up. Yeah, that's points on the board for Synergy. They're in sixth place now with 17. As that point jumps them up two or three places. That is how tight it is at that cutoff point. Elevate focusing now on the fight with Mercy. Shinboy has been knocked, but Mercy will be well aware of that. And Sonics have just gotten out of there. They've fully abandoned this fight as they look to play for the center of the circle to see where the zone, shift, the zone shifts from here. Yeah, I don't know really what you could do if you're Sonics and how you're going to be moving through this one right now. Uh, it looks like they're trying to move into the high ground after separating away from this Elevate Mercy line that's starting to be developed in this position. And they're, they they kind of pinched their way out of it, yes, but they're kind of just having to wrap into the no man's land that is train station, which would usually be nice. But look at this. Look at this. We're at 13 teams in phase number two because of this mess. I love it, though. I am absolutely Dude. loving this. 47 players alive and train station. You've got Sonics there, Synergy are there, Not a Hobby are there, Panella Good are inside this position. You've got Old Guard peering down on top. And oh, the double stack of the blue zone needs. Mate, he's just on the edge. That is as close as he could get without taking damage, and he'll step back in. Z New Circle going to continue to favor that high ground position for OG as well as train station. 
So let's see who decides to take up a hillside position and who decides to send it down into the no man's land or every man's land, depending on how you want to see it for a train station. We've got a couple of storms that could be developing specifically over in the west. As now we're going to do our weather forecast. As OG needs to be careful as sight lines might be diminished for just a brief period of time. A cycle for 55 esports. They're sitting on nine points right now, but they're on the edge of the circle. They've got to migrate north. Salabi is just keeping an eye on everybody as they make their way into the circle. Pichao, they're pretty good right now. They have a, a pretty wide split, right, Matt? You have two players in the compound. You've got one a little further north, north, and you've got one player playing on the edge of Leveni. What about Future? They've got control of this hill to the south. But this is a good position to play, provided you know the south is completely clear, and I don't quite think Future know that. Yeah, I mean, they do have 55, that's going to be back behind them. Slabby's trying to keep an eye on what's going to be going on. But, I mean, my worry with this is Future's only real pathing, depending on if the circle goes any further, any direction except for staying right on top of them, is they have to make a push into Train Station, which just feels its own recipe for disaster. It'll be safety for now, but only for now, as it's going to continue to develop up. Um, Mercy keeps also eyeing that Pachow duo that you were looking at a second ago as they are being, I won't say gate kept, but they're at least being held back by Elevate's present positioning and their defensive line that they managed to establish. So Mercy running a 2-2 split of their own kind of inadvertently. It feels like the only team that's got nobody around them and somewhere to kind of be friendly with is going to be AKA up in the north. Yeah, I, I want to say this though. Mercy are putting on a clinic on how you need to play the edge. The big thing about playing the edge is always securing your flank. Making sure that if a team's too close, you take to the fight to them very early and clean it up quickly so that you don't get third partied on. It's all about controlling everywhere around you and Mercy are doing a great job of that. So if you ever get a chance, go back, watch the VODs to see how effectively they've been clearing their position. Elevate will have heard that rotate the one. I think they know that maybe they've got the numbers on this fight on the edge, but 55 are fighting with Future here as well. And it is definitely going in 55's favor. Two members down for Future already, as there is the commitment coming into train station because very few other options remain. Now, can you get that second member into position? As it looks like 55 is very caught up in trying to make sure that they get those kill points, and that is going to be the preferred way to go from it. Elevate, I'm going to go ahead and use this upper ground position to go ahead and lob a couple of nades down onto Mercy. Mercy looks like they were trying to regroup to move more into the north, but this firefight was definitely escalated by Elevate's repositioning. Yeah, Elevate pushed aggressively, as I pointed out, because they heard the rotate away from some of the players. But Bail Frost is inside the blue. Has a shot on the sneak attack, but doesn't get the knock. But Mercy is still down a Seifu with this battle on the edge. The blue gets involved as well. Lucid gets the knock on to Bail Frost. Elevate have lost two. Shin Boy is going to fall as well, as Mercy are just rolling through Elevate as they climb the mountain, pick up a ton of kills. And well, this is not gone the way Elevate would have wanted. Mercy up to four kills, but Vegas has the P90. Oh, he wants it. He wants some type of engines back. Two points that he's looking at right now. The circle shifted entirely away from this position. Did keep it a bit of train station, but it's one of the reasons why you can see Mercy wanting to try to finish this fight as quickly as possible. They know that they need to make a rotation very, very quickly. Vegas and this entrenched little dip that he's got with the nades, with all of this gear, is slowing them down considerably. Is he going to be able to spot out? He, you can see he's very nervous about them shifting down that hillside just over to his left side. But no, the commitment mostly staying pretty focused on the center. And with that, Elevate is going to get some vision. Vegas is going to get the knock on the sneak attack. But can he continue to hold down? PWD just going to run right into the thick of it. No fear. Vegas hears the footsteps, gets the shot. Vegas holding it together, spins back around, gets the other angle, does go down. And Mercy will, as the, as the screen says, annihilate Elevate. Lucid will go down. Mercy have been removed now as well as the blue zone just stings a little bit too much for Lucid. And we're down to 11 teams. Future battling inside. Shrimps is going to get caught out by HZ. The trade is trying to be played nice. by Tig, but he's cleaned as well. Future down to two. Pick up two kills and getting closer and closer to the top eight. Because as you said, just placement point games could be the difference when we get to the end of tomorrow. Oh man, this is going to get so hectic in train station. Synergy still needs to find some type of pathing to work with. You can see not a hobby. Last member up, Arson, realizing the pathing that's going to be coming through, throwing down every smoke that can be found on the face of the earth, trying to stall this one out a bit longer. He's caught between them and Ace, and Ace has been having themselves a pretty decent run, not as quite as spectacular as everything that's been going on with so far. Mercy. But you can see the fact that they are sitting inside of our top eight right now and patiently waiting to try to pick up a couple more points. Are you an optimist, Matt? 
I am an optimist. Well, Mercy and Sonics are both dead, so there's plenty of points for the rest of the teams to get. This is your one game, everybody in the lobby. Try to exploit <laughs> it now. Is uh, Martinson looking for all the angles, but this is pretty sneaky we've got going on by Arson. He could spot this one out. I don't know how the smoke vision is down for him right now. You can see Ace is already lined up waiting for this one. It's going to be Arson right on the outside of that door. He doesn't want to peek back around for it, so instead it's going to clear zero. He's going to get spotted out. No, oh, man. That was just clean. Yeah, that cleans up that section of train station. Now it's Ace's crew that you've got to deal with on the edge. Let's not rule out Pinella. Good to the south alongside of the two members of Future. We're about to get ready for that next zone shift. This should detect train station out of the mix. It does. And that is an AKA circle if I've ever seen one. Yeah, I mean, we've got that smidge of OG territory still in place. Synergy trying to navigate what's going to be going on as this is just going to be everything terrible for our train station teams. All four of them going to be moving to roughly the same location. Synergy trying to be the influencer on this, but keep in mind, PNG can choose to pounce at any given moment. They aren't set up yet to quite make that push, but the longer this fight goes on, it's just a bigger, bigger cue for really Pinella to try to make a position into this one and really assert some authority. Good read come out from them. Yeah, Danny Monster, I, I always love to call it. When he gets into form, he can be a dangerous man. Chun from Rats, that's on the other side of the circle, but this is a tough zone, right? Phase five will start closing soon. As you said earlier, it doesn't tickle anymore. It really hurts, and it means that you need to get on the move early. But if you're closer to the edge of the circle, it's better for you because you can pick up all these teams, but now we jump to the old guard fight with Rats. All this is going to be going on. You can see Rats are trying to aggressively get into position. Remember, OG has had the high ground for so, so long. They've been eyeing this one. They wanted to go for this position. Good flash going to come out. Rats got no vision now. Just Grant Lannis at range. Gets the retaliation shots back in, but OG has the numbers. And keep in mind, Grant Lannis isn't even in the safe zone right now, so he's going to have to navigate this one. Is he going to go for some more kills? Is he going to go for the rat position? He wants more. He thinks that he's got it. He thinks he's got the firearms to make it work, and he's pushing down into the thick of it. I love it. I like the aggression from Grant Lantis. We'll keep that picture in picture, which is a lovely addition to the production side. Synergy are going for a full wrap onto Ace's crew as Danny Mon will go prone and try to stay hidden from this assault. Finn, Finna will stay off the gunfire, but he dips back into cover. Trying to use this car for as much cover as it can provide. He's got the hard angle to try to protect from. Rest of Synergy is all collapsed down back behind it. Can we see some type of flank, some type of big motion come out from Grant Lannis? Meanwhile, you can see caught up in a problem of his own, already down to about a third of his life. But it is going to be Kalanix on the outside. This one defending up. You can see Ace has nowhere to go. Nade's going to be landing up in front of him. Two members now just trying to navigate it. Synergy's got this one on lock at 55. Also coming down, trying to find an angle to pick up some of these kills. I love it. 55 realizing both these teams are weak and they know if they can clean up what's left of these, they get security. But AKA are also extending down as they see the opportunity to farm tons of points. Finna down to just 55 rounds of 556. Five, Synergy looking to push around the edge of the building. But as you can see, 55, Kalnix just saw them and he's dipped back into cover, realizing the high ground is the problem. Nate tossed inside. Blue zone is there. Kalnix goes for the kill. But how much longer can they sustain can this? The vehicle fortification blocking the door is stalling them out. They can't go for Finn because the fact, you can see, you're going to go ahead and hop in a vehicle, see if maybe they can get some distance with it, get back up that hillside. AK is going to spot it, and oh, Finn tries to get something, but he's going to go down. If you're curious what happened to PNG while that was happening, they made a run to the, I guess, the road that leads out of train station down to the west, and they got picked up by a crossfire of what was going to be going on with 55. So 55 making way for its new circles, AKA has got their eyes set on synergy. Yeah, AKA those Zimas don't take a lot of beatings. So if you can spray maybe a clip or two into it, you can get yourself a synergy party going off on the edge of the circle. The zone did pop away from it. 55 have fallen back off of this as they want to hold the circle. Old Guard need to move and Pichao are making a send for center now too. Every single one of these teams need the points. This is going to be really interesting to watch how this lines up. Uh, AKA has a good position that they can try to play from, but it doesn't have the... It, it, this is almost a game of paper, rock, scissors based off of the way that the train has lined up and what you're trying to fight for. 55 is going to be able to move in, gate keep out SG's position. That means SG's going to have to try to wrap back behind AKA. AKA can't make a commitment into getting a foothold inside the circle until they manage to take out what's going to be going on with Synergy down below them. 
55 eyes up on this hillside as well. That means that Pachal as well as OG have all the moving factors and so much control over the circle. Nanu isn't able to hit fake it. Oh my god, just like that. Lip is able to get himself them all. The bears are getting involved as well as Santa is fighting with them in the center of the circle. You know, we never spoke about this. Bears could qualify as well. You know, we can't rule them out. If they get a couple of kills here, I they would be doing better than the Garros Chicos. I still wish that we could keep track of uh, Blue Zone and Bear Kill points. Or like whenever a car crushes somebody. That way mm -hmm. we can see what they like. How m we all know that the Blue Zone is the real enemy. And how much does it really take from us in the end? Yeah, all these players would be happy to just just survive. But the Blue Zone forces us to fight, right? It's like it's like the, the devil on the shoulder. The Blue Zone's like, yeah, go fight them. Forcing this cruel manipulators that is player unknown. Let's see. AKA does manage to get their foothold in the circle. Pachow, you can see being a bit nervous as they are surrounded. And yes, they have some cover to work with, but OG has been really slowing down the pace of their game for this one. I would like to see them like lean back into the comfort. They were definitely leaning into that edge control. They've got three kills that they're working from right now. They've got sight lines on where 55 is. And I believe that they know where Pachow is as well. Really AKA being the only team that they might not have information on. Yeah, I think 55 have played this really well. They've up to 10 kills as way by, well, by the way. They could say anything Mercy can do. We can try to replicate just a little bit. Arm um, in the hand of Lopez. That thing can decimate armor at any gunfire. Those vests and helmets could be destroyed. And I like the way they're split as well. So you got Lopez and Slabe holding this eastern side of the circle. You, you know, Glock has rotated all the way around the west to keep an eye on what's going on with Old Guard, and Psycho is holding center of the zone. This is a really I mean, greedy split, but I love it. I l yeah, I love the fact that we're also seeing 55 coming to terms with their fighting capabilities. It, whenever we've been having Sonics and Mercy just ripping apart the lobby, we're finally starting to see some of these other squads and what they can really bring in. 55 is a very frag-capable team. They know how to set themselves up for victory. They've got faith in their aim, and they are exploiting it. 10 kills right now, and they're wanting to escalate that. They're wanting more, and they have control over half of the circle with this 2-1-1 split that you're talking about. Yeah, and with the fact that the terrain is keeping Pichao safe, 55 can look towards Old Guard and focus on AKA as well. That's a nice shot landed by Rafex that will send Lopez back to cover. I want to just say, the level 3 helmet just saved his life because that was a canine round that went right through his head. Chow retreating back to the bear cave. See if maybe they can find some safety to be had over here. Is, uh, let's see, they do get at least a control point that they can play from. But Glock in this side position that he's playing so far into the west is really the harassment that we're seeing slow down OG. They want to make a commitment onto Pachow, but they can't. Because look, 55 is technically defending. Psycho is up above them and blocks over to the western point, And they're just trying to set up their own crossfire. Not even letting Pichau get the kills in their own defense. Yeah, and you know what? If you're Pichau, you'll take the place with points. Overwatch can be a good thing sometimes. But you feel like 55 need to deal with, with AKA. They need yeah. to because AKA are pushing in towards the zone. Rafex picking up over the ridge line. You can see them dancing at the top of the dunes. But you feel it like the first one. Oh, Slabby goes for it, but he's spotted out. Makes the commitment back in. You're on no life to work with. They know the fact that this is the commitment. They've got to win this firefight fast. Slab is going to go ahead and drop them all top onto one. You can see now it's going to be the three man aligned back into AKA trying to finish this one off as fast as possible. Pachow also making some looks into OG, but that's not going to be able to have anything happen out of it. Glock is staying committed into position. 55 thinks that they've got this enough under control. They don't need to worry about anything else. But while that's going to be happening, Psycho is going to go down. And now 55, while they do have AKA with their backs up against the wall, have yet to be able to submit the finish of the firefight. Biel steps on out, gets the knock on the kill demo. OG down to two players up. The molly is thrown, but Biel's not in flames just yet. Biel gets the knock on the necro now as well. Here, Queen, the last member of Slabby, turns his attention to AKA. He gets himself one. AKA down to just one player left. It's Lip, who's going to be prone, but Lopez knows where he is. Glock and Slabby combine. Down go AKA. It's a 4v3. Can Pichau get it over the line this time, or will it be another 19 kill? chicken dinner by one of these sides and remember the entirety of the time that that fight was going on glock was taking shots into og and picking up more and more kills pachow having to come out of a locked down position into the waiting arms of bolties galore gonna be coming after them 55 trying to navigate it and you can say is it just gonna be a 19 kill game over and over again today because if so man i'm about it 
I just like when's the last time you seen this many kill high kill chicken dinners back to back to back? Pichao, they've got the cover of the ridge line, but they're down numbers. They need to find that next pick. Will it be found by a nade? You never quite know. Lopez does take a ton of damage off that nade. It will force him back into cover, but phase nine is about to be given, and at this point on, it's any of these teams' game. Pachal has to win a peak, man. It's the only way you can unlock something here. Their commitment is more into the east, into the slabby psycho side of the defensive line coming up from 55. But with the way that this train functions, 55 can really reposition quite efficiently, even if a knock happens. You can see that the duo of Lopez as well as Psycho, every single time one of the two outs, uh, outer lines, calls that they've got vision, it's just a quick reinforce, making sure the fact that they try to keep numbers advantage into this one. And all of us considering up NYQs get one, and he does. He takes down Slabby. Information being fed over. Can Pichal fight their way back up into it? They pick up another one. Waikus has just unlocked this game. Can we see Pichal exploit it? Psycho in a one versus two now. Pichal pushing together to try to trade their way out. Psycho will confirm out the kill, but this is big. 55 are going for the rest. Glock needs to win this wall in this one, and he does. Back to a one versus two. No helmet on BL. BL gets the knock on the Glock. It's all down to Psycho and Slabby. They're peeking down the hill. They spot Pichow. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. 19 kills. Count them. 29 points. Count them. And 55 will rocket up that leaderboard. Man, that has got to feel good. With the point compression we have seen in those top three to four spots, now, suddenly, you've got some breathing room to work with. I still want to shout out to Chow, though. That's a hard firefight to almost win. Sure, they didn't win it, but having to fight back up that hill after coming out of the cave and almost being able to get it, respect. Oh, it's it's so good from them. It's you know you gotta give them credit, right? That's back to back top twos for Pichao, or not back to back, but two top twos in the last three maps. They're getting in, you know, getting those six points for placement. A couple of kills on top of that. It's that consistency that might just see them sneak through. And remember, I identify them as one of the teams that really need to qualify. Remember, they were a regional partner team, Matt. There is so much that we're looking at. This train station collapse that led into all of this. Toffees, what were you like? What were you taking away from all the craziness in this one? I mean, I've never, I haven't seen a train station that busy since rush hour in Tokyo. It was just wild how many people were trying <laughs> to jam themselves in there. And, and seeing future, I, you know, I, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and call myself out. I made a joke about them being the average guy in, in the foot race, but this game, they came out, they put up some good plays. They did a lot of work. We see a little bit of a, a Pichao had to fight, had to fight everything to get to the end game, including the Bears. Uh, but I think future did great. I, I also loved that Vegas taught us all that mercy can bleed. It was like that moment in Predator when, when Arnold saw it for the first time and was like, if it bleeds, it can die. And so maybe that's the opening that some of these other teams lead. But man, 55, 19 kills. I don't think I've ever seen this many 19 Ks back to back, man. This, uh, that, was your, getting... that was your daily rate, was it not? <laughs> <laughs> that was just absolutely wild. So good for 55. They're going to keep climbing up this board. We're going to take a look at the scores as quickly as we can here. 29 points for 55 esports. Uh, it seems like that 29 is becoming a staple which i never really thought i'd see three times in a day so good for them uh synergy with 11 pachow again like matt brought up another back-to-back -back. old guard also showing up in the top four for the second time in a row uh both those teams seem to be thriving with the less popular or the less known maps gibson it seems like pachow and old guard have their hands around it yeah just get into the top eights. get yourself in those placement points old guard have had some good moments as well they're not getting a lot of kills for the most part, but they're picking up tons of placement points. And that's what it's that's what it's about, right? When you're looking to get into the top eight, you just need to pick up placement points. It's not all about winning the lobby. Yes, it's nice, it's bragging rights, but all these teams care about is the top eight. If they get in by a point or a hundred points, they don't care as long as they're there. And that's Can we all also talk about matters. the fact that we're saying that Mercy having a bad game is still five points? That's That's yeah. a wild situation to be talking about. <laughs> That's a great game for everybody else. Mercy 65, Sonics 48, 55 esports with a huge glow up off that win. But a 19 kill win, obviously going to be a big win, a big up for you. 36, Old Guard 31, Future at the cutoff. And what I'm I'm seeing is that that cutoff is pulling a little bit away right now, Matt. But it's still definitely in striking distance. But if there's another game or two where Aces down to Gatos just doesn't show up, it might not be a big race tomorrow. 
Yeah, the Gibson was talking about the chaos is a ladder kind of mindset mm -hmm. that you can get inside of PUBG sometimes. And that's what you can see some of these teams are having to adopt. Elevate was making a lot of smart calls inside there, but just couldn't clean out the firefight the way that they wanted to. Ace's crew was getting caught up in that train situation that stalled them out. Just a, like a couple of points here and there as we moved into what our fifth game, we're seeing that 21 points, that's about five points per game, not going to be quite enough to feel, make it feel comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. So let's one last chance on the leaderboard. For those of you guys who might be joining us uh, for the first time, just a reminder, the left side, that finals bracket, those are the teams that have already qualified to the grand finals. The top eight teams will advance. We have two more matches today. And when we come back, we're headed to the dusty dunes of Miramar, where our teams on the bottom have a last shot to make their move before tomorrow. So don't go anywhere because I smell a big fight coming. It's time to head to the dusty dunes of Miramar here at the PUBG America Series 3 Last Chance Qualifier. Four games have been played with only eight left. If I did my math right, every team needs to put up as many points as they can as quickly as possible. This is the place to do it. Uh, Gibson, we were coming back from the break. I'm here with Gibson and Matram, by the way, as if you guys don't know that. Gibson, when we came back from the break, I was talking about, man, it must be fun to cast all these 19-point games or these 19-kill games. And you said it's Miramar. 
things might mm-hmm. change. Tell me more about that. Do you think it's really going to be a totally different ball game here? I think it should be a bit of a slowdown in pace and tempo for sure. Miramar is the slower of all the maps inside the competitive pool. There's loads of terrain you can play. There's loads of compounds. I feel like we shouldn't see any more 19 kill games on this map. If we do, it will have A, been exceptional, and B, it'll just be a complete outlier, right? I'm, I'm like, I'm AI, right? Just so everyone knows, I actually live in the digital space when that happens. It's, I don't know what it is. I appreciate you. All you're doing is trying to pull focus away from this white hair here that is added in <laughs> and just showed well, up see, for the broadcast. I agree with you on, we might not see 19 kills, but one of the things I love about whenever we get to certain sections of Miramar, depending on how the map lays out, is there's a lot of good foot push locations that can oh, really yeah. rack up kills if you maneuver through it. So we might be able to see a massive kill. I mean, Whenever we look at it, what phases qualifying game way back in, was it, PGC 2019 or something like that, that was off an extremely high game off of Conterra. So, I mean, we could still have the possibilities for it, but if we go over to, let's say, the southeast or southwest, yeah, yeah, everybody's just going to be isolated and kind of hunkering down. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I, if a wrangle is boxing, then Miramar is like the UFC, right? Like, it's not this sort of paced out dance over a longer period of time where you're trying to outthink and figure out your opponent. Sometimes... It's just a brutal throwdown where two teams are sharing a ravine and both can foot fight. Both have the ability to get peaks from different angles. The folds on this map are incredible. And I think that's why it really grew among the player base, right? I remember when it first came out, it wasn't the most beloved. But after a couple of changes, after people started to realize, oh my gosh, it's nice to have so much geography. Uh, It really blew up. And I think a lot of players, this is their favorite place. Yeah, I think that... I think that it's a map that they've really improved upon with the recent updates, right? You've you've changed Brickyard's kind of new location all by itself. They've changed water treatment, which is inside the north section of the zone. I think that every single time PUBG changes a map, it makes the map better. And it comes yeah. from all the years. What we're in, we're in year seven now. It's the seventh birthday for the game. It's good that we're still making meaningful, positive changes. Yeah. I was young when we started covering this game, Matt. I... I was a slight young. So that's a lie. Uh, that's a lie. We'll, we'll say young-ish. Young-ish, okay? Younger. Uh, life younger. young, yeah. not younger. esports young. Life life young, because life young and esports young are two very different things. Oh, and esports young, dude. I'm like a dinosaur, man. Let's yeah. uh, I mean, it's, it's all right. Gibson was in diapers. Right, that's, that's, that's why he didn't start with us. He was still, he was still getting his, himself changed. But I understand. Time has progressed. And in the seven years, they have done a really good job of figuring out what makes these maps sort of tick and being able to adapt them. Because I will say every Miramar adaption has been a massive improvement uh, since they put it in there, even to the point of like changing sandstorms that they're not nearly as horrific as they once were. Uh, I think that I would argue maybe they're a little too not horrific at this point, <laughs> but I get where we're going with it. So I feel a quick like update for you guys on the miserable. circle. Uh, it's pretty centered. I mean, it's going to be around Hacienda as the center point. Santa Martin, everybody should be familiar with that if you're watching competitive PUBG because this is pretty much what we see a lot of in-game circles that are going to be happening over here. You know, water treatment, you know, the usual suspects. But with the plane path, we have a very south, like a very southern and western drop pattern for a lot of our squads with only really having, what, five teams that are inside the safe zone at the direct time. Interesting rotation specifically for teams like 4NN, um, maybe even Synergy, depending on how they want to take a path into this one and what they're going to prioritize in position. See, well, I, I guess think that this solves is, that problem. Yeah, and I, th- I think this is a game where we could very well see 15 teams going into late circles because you've got your droppers coming in here. Uh, the right and the left side of this map, tons of space for these long, winding rotations to come back in over on Camp Military side. The teams inside don't have to move very far. Uh, I think this could be a little bit of a kerfuffle on the landing for some of the airdrops, but then I think it might be a very quiet mid game. I think that rotating north early is the best thing you can do. I think mm-hmm. AKA are doing that. They know the circle that we have. Water treatment should be clear. All of the roads by it should be clear. If you're mm-hmm. going to take an emergency pickup early, the most important thing is getting a vehicle back, right? If you emergency pick up late into the game, you're on your feet for the rest of it. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. They'll rotate north. They'll get themselves some cars. I love the decision making from AKA. Well, this is the perfect time to, to pick up. The circle is as far from an off-plane circle as it can be. You know that there's massive amounts of the circle that just no one has had time to touch. So early e-pickup, it's just a really good chance to just relocate, light armory, and have plenty of time to get yourself kitted back up. So I love seeing that quick action 
three, four minutes uh, from whichever team it was. I didn't actually read the name when they flew up there. I just saw they were wearing beautiful AKA. blue outfits. AKA. Also known as beautiful blue outfits. <laughs> and it looks like they are going to continue their path pretty far to the north. You can see rats are going to spot them out. Thank you for going ahead and letting us know Grant Lannis. They're pretty close to that position. That was nice of him. I know. Uh, Grant Lannis also going to be in a very strong position in the circle as they are also going to have PNG that are going to be just down below them. But keep in mind that San Martin, 55, is going to spot them out. 55, do they continue their terror? Is you can see feeling a lot more confident after that last game. Yeah, I'd say. 29 points. <laughs> 29 of their 36 off the back of a, a major game. And there's no way to say it. I mean... It doesn't matter what happens in the game. It doesn't matter who's in it. It doesn't matter who died. It doesn't matter what your position is. If you finish a game with 19 kills, no one can say that you didn't play it well, right? Like, no one can. I, sometimes we see these games where you're like, no, they sort of got circle or they, they camped out for a while. 19 kills means you just dogged everybody and you deserve a crazy amount of respect. I just noticed the amount of points they had beforehand. <laughs> Maths. I love it. It's, uh, it's a good performance, though. I think they played it well. Uh, the, the thing that probably impressed me most, Matt, was the fact, though, that they knew when to disengage as well, right? They were mm -hmm. watching all the teams pushing out a train station, but once they realized that it was better to secure circle than get involved in uh, the scrap, they did it. And that shows real growth. Yeah, that's one of the things that you can often see happen with new teams, is once they start getting that kill count, they're like, I am a golden god, and decide that they're going to try to fight everybody on the face of the earth, and just getting picked to pieces. Sometimes one of the things that you can even take over into your own public games is whenever you start getting on that kill run, remembering to still slow back down the pace. While it is cool to kill everybody in the lobby, sometimes overrunning just because of your firefighting confidence can put you into a three-point pinch position that's just going to destroy you. So I love the fact that they were still making sure to play terrain, as I felt a big part of 55's success in that last game was understanding and playing the terrain so efficiently. Yeah, they, they just need to do it a few more times. Now... One big game like that could be enough. It really reduces the amount of points that they need over the course of the rest of today and tomorrow. But what better day to do it than day one? <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit more damage than Lutinho might have wanted to take there as they play inside of San Martin. You've got Rats providing Overwatch. Mercia rotating inside the circle now as well as PWD will intersect what, Fair, what Future are doing. Mercy are playing this aggressively again. They're moving up to the north. They'll probably play around Minas Generales and the rocks on that section of the map. They they really want to play the edge, and they're living up to it. I mean, if you can manage to make it work, sometimes playing counter meta is such a big deal because that's one of the things I know that like we talk a lot about on the desktop is, is you know the centering meta and making sure to get into position. Playing contrary to that, sometimes if you're the best team at it, can get you everything that you could potentially want by still making sure to play in G and I guess win potentials or win conditions, yeah. depending on the phrasing. It also helps if you're an edge team who's convinced every other team they don't want to be on the edge with you, as Sonics and Mercy has. True. The, they, mm -hmm. like, there are a bunch of teams who did not start today as middle teams that are now that are now center teams, uh, and I think that's become readily apparent, and probably the, the biggest boon to being an unstoppable force on the outside. Yeah, I think, uh, I think though it's, it's Miramar too. Center zone's not mm -hmm. the worst place in the world to be at this is this this is typical miramar though right we're eight minutes in already no kills or knocks on the board this is more akin to what we're used to seeing this is what i'm going to ask you the question matt how many minutes into this game will we see our first kill first kill um yeah. i would say usually happens in the circle two rotation so whenever yeah. we see somebody make that that initial run, with the fact that we see the centering you're just gonna lose somebody inside of it unless it just immediately follows up center and everybody smishes in that does happen on miramar again that's one of the reasons I like Miramar. Slower roll at the start, crazy mid-game, though. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to give me the, the six-digit time code of when to expect that first kill? Oh, my God. You really want to try <laughs> to do that one? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just joking with you. Nine well, minutes and 27 it, seconds. It, it may be closer than we think, <laughs> depending on how uh, not a hobby paths into this one. They got a little bit too close to OG and are going to be cresting down right in between future as well as... It Don't looks like it could be Gatos. Yeah, old guard just dipping back into cover, realizing that they don't really want to be here. Vegas takes a ton oh, of damage. Save him. food. Yes, him. Don't, him. Please don't let Toffees him. be right. Please don't let Toffees be right. 960. I'm taking that as a win. 10 I'll seconds. I give it to you. <laughs> 10 seconds off. You know what? It's a game lasts 30 minutes. Fantasy. 
All right, enjoy the cast, you two. I'm out of here as a winner. <laughs> <laughs> he, he enjoyed that way too much. He enjoyed that way too much. All right, now let's take a quick look and see how this circle is going to be popping in just one moment. You can see a lot of our teams playing more to the south due to that plane path. You can still see the line that's going to be cutting across. Uh, also notice that everybody kind of left that Picado line because of the hills for power grid. Nobody really wants to play along those. Playing to the north and to the east is going to provide you a lot more rotation opportunities. But if the circle does decide to go back that direction, it means the fact that it's going to be crazy. And nope, we just get the center up. Yeah, center zone, I think, is probably for the best for a lot of these players. Elevate now to the north. They've got AKA with a 2-2 split. 55 are consolidating there. What was a 3-1 in towards a 2-2 as well. They'll play that split until the next circle, right? The only reason you do a 2-2 split is for zone control. Speaking of trying to control the zone, Gato's Chicos are trying to hold and control their position in and around Graveyard as Pichao rotate past. Dragonov not hitting the tail for as much damage as Justice would have liked. But these shot these are good shots, right? You're letting this team know that you're in this position and you're doing damage to them. Uh, the question though is if you end up staying on the outside of this for too long, you might end up with a lot of teams that might decide that they're gonna be coming after you. That external position that we can see Gato's playing, but not a hobby, future, ace, all eyeing it, maybe even OG as well. Synergy trying to make sure that they keep the control over this territory as Elevate's gonna be encroaching in pretty close. Elevate Kind of making the send for center is they've got hay bales and kind of had to make a stop out. This is going to be a position to play, but I'm not going to say it's going to be a comfortable position to play. The only reason why they're not getting destroyed is nobody is to the northeast right now. It's curious because Elevate have played every single map differently, right? They've been on the edge, they've been in the center, they've been playing kind of half ways in. It seems like they're trying to find the balance. Up on top of the hill, though, kill demo from Old Guard is pushing towards Frogman from Future. They've been pretty good in the in the leaderboard so far tonight when it comes to placement points, but they might just be about to lose Frogman if they're not careful because Kill Demo is on the hunt. Yeah, and he's kind of isolated to deal with this. Really, the rest of the squad trying to provide some type of support, but I don't know what the rest of the squad can do. He doesn't need the support. He's like, nah, man, I got this. I'm going to go ahead and get the KP myself. Run over there, got the knock onto one. Are we even going to see Future try to go for any support off of this? Or Nope, looks like they're just uh, going to go ahead and cut and run away from it. They're gone, and I think the fact that it is the team beside them on the leaderboard too impacted that decision. You know, if they were fighting somebody like the Gatos Chicos, you might have seen them stay and fight. But they're like, we're not going to risk giving any more points. We're going to play a little bit later inside the game. And let's be real, Kill Demo's been in the scene a while. I yeah. think that inside of South America, he is one of the more fun players to watch. Like, there's a ton of really good players in South America. I don't think he's spoken about enough. Well, that's what happens whenever we start talking about fraggers in Latin America in general, right? Is the mm -hmm. capabilities that we see come out from them. They, they have an epitome to be able to, like, go full no fear. And you can't even say, like, they get sweaty when they play because it's like they just start having more fun. Like, the more that they can start to kind of, like, style on and really just get into the zone and showcase their skill set, almost, like, feeds it more and more. I, it kind of reminds me of, and I'm going to say it right, Super Saiyans and, like, Goku and everybody else like that. Once they start to be able to cut loose and really start being able to enjoy the fight, that's whenever it's always going to be them getting better. Look, when Brazilian players do well, you can just feel, if you, if you live in and around the Americas, you can feel the ground starting to shake with the crowd getting into it. Like, the, America, the, the South Americans love their teams, and the Brazilians bring so much passion, as do the Argentinians. I'm sure every time a Brazilian team fights with an Argentinian one, uh, it, it's a little bit more personal as well. But Matt, the zone shift is about to pop. Will we donut up once more? Well, we'll shift a little bit more so towards the east. And... That shift is going to suit, I'd say it's going to suit Mercy pretty nicely. An elevator already yeah. on the move. Sonic's also in a good position right now. Uh, Cusp position playing around Hacienda. Going to probably find themselves with some new friends pretty quickly. As you can see, 55 is going to be regrouping over there. Synergy going to be regrouping as well. Elevate's going to kind of let that one happen as they don't want to draw too much attention to themselves. Perhaps going to be coming in most notably from the south and from the north as we are going to be having some, some of that San Martin power grid hillside. Blocking out some of the pathing options to work with. Synergy in their regroup. Looks like they're going to try to bite off a bit more land and territory, sending the other part a bit further into the north. That means that Pachow is going to be back behind them, kind of eyeing this one, but still some comfort position to play from. OG also getting up in a similar path and could be taking some shots at them in a moment. Yeah, Elevate's decision was made for them to regroup by the fact that Synergy 
decided to play the edge. I think that's a smart decision overall, but this is a tough compound that they find themselves playing. And it's great for survivability. It's difficult when you want to leave. We've seen so many teams live and die by the sword of playing in that compound. Old Guard, they'll play the dip that's just in the section of the zone as you look towards that uncivil compound that's over towards the right. Not a hobby. They're they're big chilling, right? They're on the south side of the circle, but their decision and their play will be di dictated by what the Gatos Chicos in future do. This is a very strong position for them to be able to play from. Mercy, though, like you were talking about a second ago, running a 1-1-2 split right now, fairly favorable is the amount of damage that they can manage to pump out, most notably due to the fact of how they cover each other. Look at PWD's position. He can spot all the way into what's going on with that duo down the hillside. That means that there is so much territory control. Ace can't really move in. And a lot of these teams are being forced into this corridor. There's no like we're seeing happening before and in right now. They're just having to drive through this open territory, jump out. And with those shots coming out from Synergy, they're going to stop at the other Synergy compound. Now, Martin Todd has to make sure that he navigates this as cleanly as possible. He needs to make sure that he slows down the tempo, get into some control firing lines that his teammates can assist from. And yeah, get that knock and get that control and just demolish for it. You enjoyed that, man. That was a pure pleasure out of you when he peeked out and got those yeah. kills. Bondi, they're uh, in a bit of trouble as sexy it's will fall. I feel I feel like it's weird getting to say that on broadcast, right? It's, it's one of those games like, yeah, I, I can say it, but I'm like, is, is anyone, is, am I going to get in trouble? Like, is any, <laughs> I love it. It's not as bad as whenever we used to have a guy named Master and then eats in his name, Er. And uh, it, it's... <laughs> We, we've gotten kind of used to that in PUBG at this stage. It's not as if a caster has ever said an innuendo by mistake no, in their lives, right? Never. 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 I would never make any type of joke about playing on the edge or anything else like that. Never. I want some life. Or, you know, sponging up something. It's not as if I've ever said that on a podcast. As we get the zone ready to shift, zone pops and Sonic's inside the uncivil compound looking good. And I'm going to say it. We see this circle so often in esports. Like, mm -hmm. it is crazy. And it all comes down to which side of the road the circle continues to shift. If it goes north, Sonics are in trouble. If it goes south, the teams on the other side of the road are in trouble. This is going to be really intriguing to watch this collapse. It's continuing to happen down into the south. Not a hobby going to try to defend their territory for a bit longer. The future's going to be collapsing in. Rats also did have to stretch. Remember, they were playing the uh, power grid full side. But, I mean, not a hobby doing a good job on keeping the control right now with some assistance from future. Let's be honest, the self-knock coming at probably one of the worst times conceivably possible. Also, there's some firing lines for OG and 55 up under this hill that are going to make a, a bit of assistance to not a hobby. Not have to stress too much. Yeah, future. You know what? They're picking up kill, or they they were picking up kills, but uh, they're not going to get any points this time around as one of the other teams that need points are getting on the board, not a hobby up to 14. That gap though is starting to grow just a little bit between it and the rest of the chasing pack, but it is still quite a low number. Not a hobby, gotta be careful. Rats are inside their area. And if you're watching the map feed here, come Mercy as well. They're pushing for the south. And this is where you have to start being afraid. Mercy has no fear now. They can do whatever they want. They're starting to feel pretty comfortable in position. Looks like they were going to make a push over into this, realizing the fact that they're okay. Multiple firefights. I think that they were watching what was going on with Not a Hobby a second ago. They wanted to try to exploit it, but then realized there may be a secondary squad. So Grant Lannis technically providing those couple of shots and distractions are going to be one of the reasons why Mercy decides that they don't really want to go for that. I think also some shots from Synergy. I've got my eyes drawn into PNG as well as AKA. What on earth are they going to try to do? Because they've got open field in front of them. It's actually rough. Like, it, it's not nice what the zone has just done to them. And as they try to force their way in, you have the likes of Pichao who could be able to farm them. 55? I think they're pretty good in their spot right now. Sonic's biggest threat is that chance of maybe one or two teams crashing this compound at the same time. That's a nice knock from Rats, which will be confirmed out. The Gatos Chicos losing another one. Not a hobby, though. The more They've actually got lucky because Mercy thought about pushing this way they've gotten out of this area, which does mean that not a hobby can focus on rats. And while this is going to be happening, so much extra suppressive fire also going to be kind of looking into this direction. Uh, Gatos can't really provide anything else into it, in fact, they're being held back there. 
and rats while they had themselves attacked on the hillside that felt pretty comfortable for a while. You can see it's Grant Lannis just doesn't have an angle that he can provide any form of support to his squad. He's just kind of watched them get picked apart right underneath the all of this. Yeah, getting ready for that next zone shift. This one could be telling. Does it go north? Does it go south? Does it center on up? Well, it looks like it's going to go towards the east. And what mm. a shift that is. And look at Mercy forcing their way now towards this three-team fight. Bondi are more than likely going to lose Pai Deem. He's taken down Seifu with the nade. But the bigger fight is going to be the one with Ace's crew. Oh, Mercy now looking into this one. Who wants to try to pick up some more kills. Get that rolling. Only a one kill right now. Shh. Mercy, that's not good enough. They've already got their eyes set on more. Ace, oh, Ace, what are you going to do? Elevate behind you. Mercy just collapsing in. No fear. Sneak attack just walks up into this one. Smoke, meh, fine. Who cares about it? Smoke doesn't even affect me anymore if I just push you guys out of it. Sneak has been knocking on the door of excellence for a while now, and he's just stepped his way through. Seifu does get himself warm. He is going to come under heavy fire, though. Danny doing the dance with the devil with sneak attack. Seifu is going to get knocked here by Danny Mon, the last player standing for Ace's crew. But he is and being they, held. You know where he's at right now. Actually, Black Monster also moved over here and is now taking some shots into Mercy. That's kind of what caused Mercy to finally pump the brakes into all of this. Lucid's going to turn down, try to get a bit more cover into it all. The rest of the, uh, not a hobby going to come down and try to provide some support as this entire firefight now has the capabilities of being turned on his head, provided the fact that he can survive through this moment. Nope, he's going to go down. And now Mercy has to contend with not a hobby. Hot on their heels. You had to say that they were only a one kill. You had to say it. In the space of like 30 <laughs> seconds, they have now jumped up to six. Big fight going on over by the silos. There was 55 start pushing towards Pichao, who are just off the end of another fight as well themselves. Blue zones getting tossed. The dance around will happen. And 55 off the back of a big win. Sneak attack gets another kill off on the other side of the circle. But 55 needs to deal with Pichao. Nateo's in flames. He falls. Pichao fall in 12th. Getting a bit more quiet in certain sections of the map, but we do want to point out that OG is going to be approaching back behind Sonics in any given moment. You can see 55. They've managed to find themselves a bit more of a slowdown position. Rat's going to be coming in right back behind, not a hobby, seeing if maybe they can mop up some of what's going to be going on as Mercy's still starting their tear right now. But instead of not a hobby finding the kills they want, there's a decent opportunity that they can find themselves sandwiched between Mercy, who's going to just turn right back around on them, and Rat's hot on their heels. Yeah, rats realizing that the third party option is a good one. What they were the hunt, the hunted. Now they become the hunter. On this side of the circle, sneak attack and PWD combine. One player from each side falling. As sneak is at it once more, Zolmox is going to get flushed. Chun should be resable, but I think the two rats players are getting a little bit close together by the rock. Not a hobby dealt with. Mercy turned their attention towards the rats. Smoke's dissipating, vision becoming a factor, no longer to contend with, just walks in, Seifu picks up the spoon, and the slow, steady push continues as rats are now going to go down and be pushed out of the lobby. Mercy in control over the east at 12 kills. Mercy must be feeling right now the way I do when I play normals. You know, when you, you know when you get a couple of bots in the lobby and you're like, yeah, 10 <laughs> kills, 11 kills, 12 kills. As you kind of said, they feel like gods, but it's... It's just not fair. 77 points, and they've still got the opportunity of getting even more. But this circle shift, have you seen what mm -hmm. the zone has just done, by the way? Like, hey, Mercy, let's try to get you back up to that 19 kills that you so desperately want, as it's just going to be hazed and the only other person inside the circle. Sonic's going to have to defend up what's going to go on with OG. They're going to take them out. Now they could have a potential option to move over into the east, but keep in mind, 55 is just going to be to the north of them. That could slow down a bit of this rotation, depending on how the separation is going to come into play. Synergy, as well as AK, both need to make moves. Elevate, not inside the circle either, but they can at least make a footpath over. Really, it's going to be these squads that... I would say 55 Synergy and AKA that have to cross the road. They're in the dire straits positions. Yeah, 55. It's pick your poison. Do you go towards Sonics? Do you go towards Synergy? I think the decision has been made by these teams. They're not going to get into the circle. So they're going to fight with each other because they realize that's their best opportunity for points. Now as things stand. Elevate. They'll try to third party. Everything as Shin Boy is attempting as AKA will smoke their way towards Synergy. I love this. AKA are making the aggressive decision, but can they even get close enough to make dividends off of it? 
Here's the problem. Look at the vision. A high ground advantage for Mercy for days. They're watching everybody try to run through these smokes and just trying to pick them off the moment that their head is going to appear. That's going to be all she wrote for AKA trying to make the aggressive move. I 100% agree that it was the right one. But now it's going to be 55 trying to follow back up, seeing if maybe any damage can hit over onto Synergy. Not going to be in the way that they wanted. Nine kills for Synergy right now. Prepping up, seeing if they can handle what's going to be going on. Oh, look at this. Just boldly running right in with vehicles. Synergy having to try to play from the back foot. Guzera is going to go down, but shot Guns in hand, trying to make something switch. Oh, and he doesn't manage to hit it. Slabby's actually using the MK. He gets the knock on to Martin. Kalnex will get one onto Psycho as well. Synergy are up to 10 kills as things stand with one member left from 55. They're stepping towards him. Glock confirms out one. Doesn't get the rest one. Kalnex, though, in a race against the blue. And surely Sonics will be peeking across the road. Poonage has extended over as well as 55 esports are eliminated in sixth place. It costs them so much time and smoke, though. You can see Synergy having to just run into the open. Everybody's got vision on them. It's going to be Elevate that manages to pick up those kills. Now sitting at four, feeling pretty good about that one. All of our squads mostly inside the circle. Now Elevate just needs to collapse in just a bit more. Haste in getting some in a bit of an interaction with Mercy to try to slow them down. But Mercy one side of the circle, Sonic's on the other. And Elevate has their eyes set on the prize of Sonic's positioning and Kickstart kind of by himself. Yeah, but there is cover moving his way. Look at Shrimsy and Tig making the push. Kickstart does get one. And that's good enough for now. He's bought enough time for Tiggleton to get close enough and Elevate might just be punished. They picked their poison. I love the fact that they were decisive with it. But Sonics were ready. Good need from Punage. But look, Tig has to fall back because Mercy are starting to flex as well. And I love this. This awareness that Mercy manages just exude from them in these late games. They saw exactly how Elevate moved. They've been watching this for a while. Now they can collapse in. They can force Elevate to play into that Sonic's line. They already know where Hasten is. They know where all of the moving factors are, and they're trying to prep for that one. Seifu is specifically lining up to try to keep an eye on what's going to be going on with Elevate to either pick up the kills himself or force them directly into Sonic's. And right now it looks like Elevate can't even make the move into Sonic's because Seifu just has it on lock. 14 kills. Are we about to see another 19 kill win? Seifu gets the angle. That's 15 now as we're in a 4v4v1. 4 4 they could even get 20 if things go their way. Hasten. I feel bad for Hasten. I'm not going to lie. He's, he's in the middle of both of these teams. He's going, please don't spot me first. Please don't spot me first. Please don't spot me first. It's, uh, just essentially in the Tropic Thunder moment. Survive! That's all he can do right now. Just... Hunker down while Mercy is dancing around him on one side. Sonic's on the other. Caught smack dab in between the two of them. But Mercy with the high ground has really slowed down anything that Sonic's wants to do. And uh-oh. Seifu knows. <laughs> Seifu knows. This is a fishy shack is what he's saying. There's something about the shack I don't quite like. Mercy don't really have the utility though to deal with it. And I think so, so well, Seifu's got a blue zone aid. Here we go. Seifu will throw it towards it. Hasten will be able to first aid through, but he is going to push aggressively off the back of it. Yeah, this is um I'm sorry, Hasten. This no is fear. this is not fair. This is this is cruel. This is just cyberbullying right now as Seifu is just moving in directly. Has to step away from it. Hasten does a good job on stopping the advance, get some damage over. Problem is. Sonics don't want to aggress into this. They want, they're just like, yeah, Mercy, you take care of it, make our life easier, you take some damage for it all, and now we'll line up. The issue with it is the Sonics don't have a lot of good territory to play from. The terrain advantage is heavily in Mercy's favor. They are Sonics, though. That's, that is one thing that you gotta say, pound for pound, they are just some of the best gunners in global PUBG, not just the Americas, but Mercy have shown that they are more than capable to dance this dance as well. Sonics with seven. Mercy, they're up to 16. The battle line has been drawn with this ridge line separating both of these two sides. But with 28. Go. Oh. I was going to say, are you tired of 19 point games? Do you really want a 20 point game? Yeah, 20 bomb sounds good. A 20 yeah, bomb sounds good. Yet. I mean, <laughs> Mercy, just 19 kills. Can't even break 20. Psh. <laughs> EU could never. Yeah, never, <laughs> ever. Seifu moving into a very aggressive position. It's going to be him and Lucid lined up together. Sneak attack and PW, uh, PW, PWD had a, like a moment there. Well, that dyslexia kicking in pretty hard. They're going to try to line up a bit more into the north. Meanwhile, onto the Sonic side. We've got Kickstart lined up with Shrimzy, H1 and Tiggleton playing closer to each other. And every single time we see a counter move, Lucid, you can see 
just kind of creeps more. Him and Seifu just keep taking more and more territory control. But it should be noted, Mercy, with the way that the circle does now sit, are going to have to be the ones that move, depending on how long this firefight could take down. If we're just going to see this collapse down in the center, technically, that favors Sonic. Lucid with the Dragonovs, the wild card here for for Mercy. If he hits ahead at all, one of the Sonic's players will fall, and you will see a collapse of Mercy, like a predator chasing a wounded piece of prey. PWD has wrapped all the way around on the edge, and Kickstart will peak this way again. Sonics, it feels like Sonics are bunching really close together, and Mercy are the team that are more actively trying to take control of the circle. And why not, Matt? Because they're the ones with the high ground. I do like the way that we've seen this line come up from Sonics. They've kind of separated out Trimsy and Kickstart a bit more into the West. H1 hits a shot onto Lucid, so that Dragonoff you're talking about, now down. Look at the utility coming out, H1 realizing that this is the opportunity. He's just pushing up into it. Does Mercy realize this? Yes, Sneak Attack starting to step away from it, realizing no, we cannot go for Lucid. It is just going to be instantly surrendered, but can H1 slide out field and get some damage out? Once to get the flush, does get some damage out. Seifu, Seifu goes down as well. Sneak Attack going to go down, and suddenly it all comes apart for Mercy. Raid boss is dead, Raid boss is dead. Sonics are going to win. PWD trapped between a rock and the blue. Oh my God, he just got one tapped. Yeah, why not H win? Sonics take 21 points in that one, but another huge game as the rich keep on getting richer in this capitalist lobby of PUBG. Top two, stay the top two, finish in the top two, finish with both more than 10 kills. Oh man, that is a lot of points being eaten up right now and everybody else just dealing with scraps. I love the idea that these two top teams came to play today. So much so that they were like, man, we are destroying everyone in these lobbies. You know what would be cool? It'd be cool if we gave the people a 4v4 between us so that they could really see what we're like in a straight heads up. And it was, it was perfect. They split the circle right down the middle. That was everything I could have hoped for. And Sonic's got the best of it, but still like, I think you bring up a great point, Gibson. If they, if Mercy had got that drag open, I think it would have been a totally different fight. He was, he was, I, I hate using the word win condition, right? But he was the win condition there for Mercy. If he got the knock, Mercy win that game. But Sonic's, they did the opposite. They right. got the knock yeah. and they flooded. I was going to say, technically going for the peak with the dragon off is why the game turned around. You can see that's what H1 was going for. He spotted it and exploited it to move back up. So essentially a double-edged sword for the dragon off in that yep. situation. I mean, it's one of those things where like you can have a win condition, but every single time the Sonics have the conditions set forth by Quinn, and he never lets you down when it comes to IGLing those endgame circles. That's what I love about him. Cool, calm, collected. 22 points, though. Mercy Gaming technically finishes in first, so the chicken is not theirs. The chicken will go to the Sonics with 21. Synergy at 15, and another game, Gibbs, where Elevate puts up and shows up. It's, it's mad that we're saying eight points is putting up yeah, and no. showing up, right? But it's just the way it is. <laughs> like, like th those eight points will rocket them off the leaderboard. Absolutely wild. It's been a wild day today. Uh, double 19s from Mercy. This one could have been a 20, as you brought up, Matt. Uh, and I know Chad's been going back and forth about could this be the greatest performance in history. That's true. I will say that in the group stages, Falcons got a 21 kill game, which sort of set the record for PAS uh, this year so far. But Mercy okay. feeling good. Now, here's, here's but it is also question. a last chance qualifier. So it's I, that's like what I'm it's... saying. That's what I'm saying. So here's my question for you guys Mercy is running amok. Can they run amok in the grand final at the same level, do you think? Yeah. At the same level? Mm -hmm. I don't think it'll be. I think that they're going to perform very, very well, and we're going to be seeing them in the top three most likely and potentially even win it. I don't think that they're going to be able to be constantly putting up near on 20 point game or 20 kill games with a victory. That's going to be significantly harder as the lobby is going to level up to make it a lot harder. What say you, Gibson? I think. When you say at this level, no. Nobody's going to be able to perform at this level in that finals lobby. Look at the eight teams that have already qualified. But we saw what they... We got a glimpse of them against teams like that on day one of groups. They are 100% here to play. And I think that they are going to upset the long-standing balance that we've had inside of the Americas. True. I love the way you said that. It was very poetic. It was... It was like uh, the fall of Rome, so it upset the long-standing balance that has held us so, so long. <laughs> but it's true. Mercy coming in and doing that. Legacy has always been good, but they just looked so freaking dominant in the group stages. Luna Galaxy coming up and just playing so well. Space Station Gaming in their emergence last year that seems to be continuing. 
that's what I think I like the most about seeing what I'm seeing from Mercy today, along with the Sonics, and even 55 to a certain extent, is it does show me a shakeup in the status quo, which I think a lot of us here in the Americas region have been waiting for for a long time. Now, you don't have to wait a long time for the next game. It's only four minutes away. I'm going to make sure these two get a chance to breathe after the chaos that has been so many high point wins. So let's take a quick break. When we come back, it's time for the final, final. I don't even. Out over the Don't top final match. We'll be back. Welcome back. It's time for PUBG, baby. The last game of PAS3 opening night of the LCQ. That's the last chance qualifier. Or let's just call a spade a spade, the loser's bracket. My name's Toffees. I got Matchroom. I got Gibson. And we got high point games, y'all. That has been the staple of the night is when a team decides it's time to run away with it. Blue, they sure do. Three games with 19 kills. That is something I haven't seen in a very long time, Gibson. It's been a long time, particularly when one of those t one team has gotten two of those games as well. Like, they have been sponging. They've had a 22-point game, two 29-point games, and then, Matt, as Matt pointed out at the start of that broadcast, five-kill game for Mercy is bad by their standards over the course of tonight. I, I don't know how they're keeping this level of, uh, level of play up, but I'm here for it. Absolutely, and, and they are keeping it up. Now, part of that feels a little bit like confidence, hubris to a certain extent, Matt. Like, nobody... They no longer have to worry about what happens in this lobby. They're good. They're going the distance. And it feels like some of these fights they're taking are just pure, good, old-fashioned, like... It's like it's like a senior walked into the lunchroom and just threw a couple of freshmen off of the bench because they wanted to sit down, right? Like, they just can do whatever they want. That's kind of been their whole day-to-day, -day, though. So True. it's like, 
they're still just using the exact same things. Like, it, you can see them. They exploit terrain with high ground advantage, get single cover points, try to line up into 1v1s, try to see if they can win the 1v1 and then flood down, right? That's mm. been a lot of their keys to success. And also, mostly chasing. They third party so fast and efficiently. Like, what we saw them collapse in them, was it not a hobby inside the last game? Mm -hmm. Like, their play style is aggressive. And I'll be honest, I agree with what you're kind of saying. It's like it's like the senior coming in and kind of kicking out the freshman because it's a bit arrogant. But it's been arrogant all day today, whether it's win or lose, man. They just, are, that's what they do, apparently. My fear, though, Gibson, is in the next round, when you get to the winner's final, where all of the big hitters are, is those freshmen have been studying, you know, the ninjutsu arts for generations. Like, I, I just feel like they are getting away a little bit with being crisper and faster, and I kind of wonder if they can play the same aggressive edge control when the teams they're fighting, by and large, are a little bit quicker. They don't miss that second shot. Does that make sense? Like, like... The way that some of these players are two tapping, I think it was Kickstart, was two tapping the the M14 and just there was no recoil. The way that these guys play at the winners division is so much, so impressive. I guess is the way to say it. This is what I was kind of going to say to add on to what Matt said. This is this is winning at regionals, right? They're playing mm -hmm. the winning at regional style. It's what Cerberus were doing inside of Asia, right? And they tried yep. to play the exact same way on the international stage. And it gets to the fact, like, wait a second, this isn't going to work internationally. And it's mm. kind of why you see Sonic's change. You yeah. know, this is the way Sonic's used to play, right? They used to stomp alongside of them and, you know, the Falcons roster. Or roster. Mm -hmm. They used to just play these regionals, and it almost seemed like it was just for fun for them. But internationally, mm -hmm. it's a different ball game. And I want to see that if we get to these better lobbies, can Mercy adapt to the fact that the play style is going to be different and what works here isn't necessarily what'll work there? That's a really good point. And I think that that does, it's backed up by the fact that those teams that we see stomp regionals and have played that way, Sonic, Cerberus, they get to the finals of PGCs. They're just not going to win PGC on that training system, I guess, or, or so historically we've seen. So I do think, honestly, I'm excited about Sonics and what they've been doing is they told you with their training. Like if this is the, the way Sonics is approaching the year, where everything is about preparing for the international championship, that's what matters most. Um, that's a massive, a massive change up to their system and their training, and I'm actually really excited about it. And it kind of leads into the, one of the thought problems that we've had inside of the Americas for a while, right? Mm -hmm. It's whenever the fact that a big part of your strategy is kill everybody else in the lobby, win the game, as the lobby gets harder and harder and harder on an international level, you can't pull out that strategy. So what's your secondary strategy? What's your rotational strategies? All those other things. That's one of the places that sometimes we tend to have an issue at once we get into the international stage, right? Is we have some amazing fraggers, but the whole world has amazing fraggers. You have to also be able to get them in the exact positions to win the game and have that full overhead macro look at it. And I, the more teams that we can get evolving into that stage with the gunfire, great. But I want to see how they can continue to advance past that. Is Mercy a perfect four, do you think, Gibson? Or do you think this is a stepping stone type of situation? Because right now, I feel like we're saying PWD, we're saying Seifu on a regular basis. I don't know the other two players on that team as well. Are you super familiar with them? Are they role players? Tell me a little bit more about these other guys, if you know them. Oh, about Sneak and Lucid. Sneak yep. and Lucid I know have been playing... I know Sneak, but I've never studied Sneak. Yeah. So Sneak and Lucid have been playing together for a long, long time now. I think this is their fourth roster that they've been together on. They've been together for years. Sneak will take on that kind of IGL role. So he'll be co-IGL along with PWD. PWD will kind of have seniority when it comes to those decisions. But Sneak is helping him out. Lucid on the other side of things. You know the way every team needs somebody who will just do what they are their ass, right? Lucid's that player for this team. He's kind of the oil that you know the greases the wheels that allow mercy to do what they want to do just because he's not getting as many kills as the rest you cannot underestimate the importance that he has right he backs his team up he uses utility effectively he's always there to provide support when needs be and every team needs somebody like that and oh well i'd love to talk more but it looks like pichao could be in a spot of trouble as yakuza is going to just evacuate get to the roof yeah, Sandstorm up on top of him. I mean, it says something that historically we've also seen Lucid as well as Sneak Attack have their own, like, kill clip moments. So it's not even like their utility players are, like, not fraggers, right? This is a awkward standoff as Synergy. We're probably wanting to complete this one much faster, but I think that they're... 
I'm just gonna finish this one out pretty quick. Problem is, getting up there is kind of a pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the headshot landed. Yakuza's is doing a bit of work here. Gets the knock onto one. Cluzira gets an aid, but here come the cavalry. The rest of Pichao know that synergy are weak, and I am all about this, Matt. This is that was great because he stayed alive long enough to allow the team to push. And that's what you want to be trying to do in this position. Keep in mind, we are looking at a southwestern circle, pretty much centered around the western area of Chumacera. So we're getting what is pretty much an old NPL circle. We got a bit of that cliff facing that's going to be in play. It means that verticality is going to be a big factor. Rotation is going to get a lot harder as we move forward. And teams making early rotations to get strong power point positions to play from. And that's one of the reasons why we're seeing these earlier firefights. In comparison to what we were talking about in the last game, we're already down 62 players right now as it's just trying to vie for different control points very, very early. Most of our team's already inside the safe zone. Well, I like to think about circles in phase one being how can I enter the zone, right? What's, the, what's, what's it like to make it into the circle? There's a lot of playable in here, but when you consider the fact that the whole of the west side is unplayable terrain, you're not going to be able to push into the circle that way. The south side of the circle is that drumstick island, so realistically you can count that off as a point of entry as well. So you've got maybe, would you say, 180 degrees of the 360 degrees of a circle are actual points that teams could enter the circle from. That means that you'll see a lot of teams donutting up and really not worrying too much about their south, right? Because you'll think to yourself, well, nobody's going to come from my south. Look at what we got going on here. Sonic's sent just Tig to come over to Chumacera to try to scout this out and see how many people are going to be shooting at him. He's going to feed that information back over to the other members who are already inside of vehicles getting ready to rotate, but he's going to find a pretty open area provided he doesn't get shot out of the sky. He's getting some distance away, but I really like this adaptation. It's the UAV, right? <laughs> you send them yeah. up, he's, he's kind of scanning the information for the team. And usually when you see that happen, the rest of the team will follow not too far away. But it's, it's something that I think... Sonics, how do I put this the right way? They've kind of been trendsetters for a while, right? They're usually on top of the, the most current meta. They usually adapt to things nice and early. And it's something that they're able to do because of the fact they've got an org like the Sonics back in them. They do tons of VOD reviews. They've got one of the best... You know, this isn't me being a fanboy of Sonics. I'm just kind of saying how it is. They've got one of the best coaches in international PUBG. Mm -hmm. So they study the tape. They're watching the other regions... What are they doing? How can we adapt to it? How can we bring it to the Americas? And it's something that the likes of them and the Falcons, it's one of those benefits they have to being more so full-time players inside of esports. Uh oh, we've got a, a something brewing over here as I think that Future and Elevate might be getting close to each other, depending on how Elevate makes that pathing. Uh, they're going to be stopping in right back behind this one. You can see Not a Hobby also getting some harassment from... Surprise, surprise! High ground mercy. I've never seen that before. How on earth are they trying to make something else like this happen yet again? As Sonics are also going to be regrouping while this is going on. Heads up. Elevate and Future both moved at roughly the same time, so decided not to fight. Yeah, I think that's the right decision for both of these teams, too. Their yeah. level or the you know, 26 points and 23 points. Elevate almost inside the top eight. Finishing inside the top eight is definitely something you want to do going into day two. I think it's always better to be in, lead, in the lead instead of having teams in the chasing pack. But look at the positions, right? Elevate, no. Nobody's going to rotate into the circle from them to the south. Mercy playing on the mountain that they're playing on. They know nobody's going to push to them from the west, or at least it'll be a very silly decision to do so. And not a hobby. They're playing up to the north. They were one of the last teams to rotate in, and they'll know that all this terrain should be relatively quiet. You can see the collapse is coming in as AKA trying to get past what's going to be going on with... Uh, PC and they all as well as Synergy House have taken some shots into them. Uh, almost everybody's pretty comfortable in this one. And this kind of leads back into what you were talking about moving into the last game, right? This is where we're going to see the much lower kill count Miramar games potentially, just due to the fact that it, it's kind of cordoned off. You can't really navigate a lot of the circle. Once you commit into a section, you're pretty much submitted in here until you have to make some type of desperation move. And those desperation moves are going to be coming quicker and quicker as we get deeper and deeper into these last chance qualifiers. Zone shifts towards the center again. Mercy will have to first force their way into the zone now as well. You look at Elevate, they need to make their way in. This is the thing, right? When you get that phase two and so many teams have already sent for center, there's not a lot of ground in there for those teams on the outside now to work their way in towards. 
Yeah, specifically with Chumacera as well, there's a couple of opportunities for teams to try to collapse in. OG is running very wide, separated out, kind of got a 2-1-1 split. I would be serious considering how long they're going to try to hold that down, but for now, it's working out. The collapse is just going to be coming in from more in the north. As you can see, rats are trying to get closer in to Pachow's location, aka also doing some harassment coming at them at the same time, roughly from Synergy. 55 eyeing a similar sight line, but looks like they might be playing just a bit more into the east as these firefights are more just territory control shots. They're, you're not going for the kills just yet. You're really just trying to make sure that you say, no, I'm here. I don't want you anywhere near here. And that is going to be all OG is going to be trying to fight for as Elevate are going to be running right up on top. Yeah, and Elevate are the type of team that can make aggressive pushes and it looks like they're going to send it up on top of Chimacera. Kai Shen though gets the first knock as Punish will fall. And this is pretty good, but there's Vegas and Beale Frost combining to trade that one back. Elevate attempting to co co uh, confirm these kills out because every point matters for them as they try to force their way in. And when you look at the rest of Old Guard, they're a little bit too far away to come help their boys out. I mean, Kill Demo has a bit of an angle that he can play, but really it's Sonics doing some harassing shots on the side of, I believe it's going to be Elevate that's slowing them down a bit. And so now Elevate, who had a, well, came in with some pretty decent gusto, is going to have to just pump the brakes immediately. You can see BDG also taking some throws over at PNG, and not necessarily, they're finding some knocks, but this is a very, I guess, single-minded defense. Well, single-minded defense with a Panzerfaust, that makes it a little bit easier to hold. As now, we're going to have to see how BDG opts into this. Do they get the flashes? Do we see the Panzerfaust come out? What's going to happen? Oh, the blue zone will force them into the corner as well. So you should know where the last player is. Sonics in the corner. Not Sonics the team, Sonics the player. Got to make that distinction from time to time. Stone grenade will be tossed. And, well, if anything, the smoke grenade is buying the, the team time, right? Bond, they don't want to push through the smoke. Oh, oh, yeah, there's that Panzer. It's ready. Where are you going? He hears it. Oh, <laughs> the easiest kill ever right there. Now, uh, what are you going to do from the outside? Try to get a couple of shots in. Duo for PNG trying to hold together. Warlock's going to go down again. Sonic's trying to hold the line. Can he do it against two members? Guile trying to make their way in. Gonna spot him, finish it out, and comes at a cost, though. Really clever from Pydeem to pop the gas can as well because it forced the player into the corner and it meant that Pydeem knew exactly where to aim as he walked inside. Third-party fights coming through, but you feel like Bondi should be able to get a res off but Mercy getting close to the Gatos Chicos as they rotate in. You can see that PWD, he's the forward scout. He would have had a look at what's going on here and said to his team, yeah, rotate you in. I'll keep an eye on what's going on with the Gatos Chicos. Zone's getting ready to shift once more. We've had some rough ones. Let's see if we'll see some more. This is really interesting coming out from Meow. Gatos are kind of just watching Mercy move. They, they're aware of what's happening, but I was going to say, you have to assume that the circle's going to shift away. And we are going to be moving into more of a brickyard territory, which means that most notably, there's going to be that like dip where we see Ace playing from right now. That's going to be kind of a no man's land that nobody wants to go for. Also, very northern area around Monte, not the best. Brickyard itself can support a couple of the teams, but I say that with hesitation in my voice. Question is who elects to go there, right? Uh, you'd yeah. think that maybe rats might take a really wide rotate to the north. They've got the knowledge that is completely free. You feel like if Mercy disengage and they move early enough, they could push into that section of the map. Because realistically, not a hobby. They're not moving from where they're playing. Bondi are not going to move from the position they're at. So it is free. It is vacant. But let's look at Old Guard as they turn their attention to future as these teams make their way through the edge of Chumacera. Old Guard turns their attention to what's about to be a bazillion teams. I wouldn't be surprised. Elevate, remember we saw them mixing up a second ago. Probably going to pass pretty close. Mercy's also pretty close to this area. So Future playing one side of the road on Chumaseria, OG on the other. See BDG, they've got themselves a very strong compound to play, well, let's say hilltop compound to play from, as they're going to be just the east of Brickyard proper, with a ton of information to work with. Synergy's trying to do a long wrap around the north, which they should be able to spot out, but Rats also kind of counter moved to the next. The north is very, very open in this, so I think the Chumaseria line is going to be where we're going to be seeing a lot of teams struggle to down. Yeah, and I think that the early movers are the ones that'll make the most out of it. You know, the early bird catches the worm. Elevate have escaped the depths of Chumacera for now as they make their way north. Sonic's on the edge of the circle. This is this is not a worry if you're a Sonic's fan. 
people know they're one of the best edge teams in the world, but here comes a crash as Mercy will send it to Ace's crew. Seifu hits the opener. Danimon gets the off angle, will take down Lucid. Seifu goes for the repeat, and Danimon doubles down as he lives up to the Danny Monster billing. But look at PWD. He gets himself a quick double. Sneak confirms it out. And Mercy might just get out of this one quickly if they can deal with Jam. That was a astounding read from the top one. So Sneak Attack's just going to go for the peek around, finish oh, that one out. Ace's God. crew put up a fight. But man, Mercy still managed to finish it off. Seifu Lucid should be resible. Kind of getting an idea if anybody else is going to be collapsing into this. Doesn't look like it for the direct time. Stop bullying everybody, please, Mercy. This is this is cruelty. There's the Golden Murado as it rotates fast. And uh, Lopez is going to lose his head. Sonics, they're playing the edge of the circle, but we've got AKA in position as well as Lips able to steal the kill. Louis will take down Slabby. And uh, for 55, they had that big game earlier. And you know what? That big game has been kind of what they've been making their name out of today, right? They're on 43 points yeah. and most of them came from one map. It's, uh, can they string something else together to get something a comfort in moving into tomorrow? You can see Sonics are wanting some comfort of their own as they're going to have Future on one side, AKA 55 and the Chow all on the other. Circle just leans straight up into Brickyard. Elevate making that very, I guess, desperate push out of Chumacera. Heavily rewarded. They're going to be the first team to manage to make landfall into Brickyard itself. Even our eyes down on South as Mercy is going to be taking shots into OG as they're making their rotation, probably into Future as well. AKA going to have a task in front of them. They're going to have to walk through 55, potentially into Sonic's Rats, Synergy, and then there's still Galio that's still going to be over there just kind of taking some shots on them as once they finally manage to make a foot inside the safe. But this is to be expected. Phase 1 set the tone for this with the fact that the whole of the west side of the zone was unenterable, so everybody was always going to be pushing from the east to the west in the late game. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem all these teams have. Future wrap up but they're going to find themselves head to head with old guard and well that Murado almost nearly taking terrazoka down but future have got themselves in and can they find the opening on this fight with og see in the bottom right psycho made an aggressive push into aka's position doing pretty good with it so far future just trying to slow down the pacing a bit, navigate these smokes, try to see if they can find a couple of peaks in between it. OG not too comfortable in position either, as they still do have Galio. It's going to be taking some shots into him as well as not a hobby. Not having the cleanest sight lines, but kind of spotting out whatever they can see whenever somebody walks through that non-hilled section that's going to be to the left side of your screen. So, really, Psycho doing a good job on still keeping control over this firefight. 55, feeling it and wants more and more today. And Psycho is pushing in. Glock gets the kill. 55 up to 3. And you know what? These games, you lose a couple of players on the rotate. It's how many points you can get as a two. It's not about fragging out or winning at this point. It's about salvaging as much as you possibly can. And it could be pretty, but it'll work. Mm. I'll tell you what is pretty is that spray from Poonage. Elevate. They have a control point to play from. Finally, not having to chase the circle. They've got themselves a little bit of a foothold and now trying to cement in some control with it. With all the firefighting that's going on, that road, remember, that leads into Brickyard. That's where Future and OG are fighting. Elevate is trying to make sure that they lock this down, start keeping a little bit more attention back into that. The East is continuing to be explosive as Sonic's trying to make a path and Mercy getting some more control and what's going to be happening to the southeast of that. And it's going to be Sonic's that are taking the shots in in this very open section of the circle. Yeah, PWD gets a knock for Mercy as their reign of terror will continue. The Gatos Chico's focusing their way in, and PWD is the boss that they're trying to deal with. Justice down, Hooligan down, Sneak Attack gets another one. They get an angle on the PWD, but here's Sneak Attack with the big boy gun. There's PWD, peaks, and the Gatos Chico's are eliminated. Mercy, oh my lord, how many more points can they get? Are they going to have a ton day? Well, you can see the Sonics want to try to stop it. They're the ones that are taking the rashing shots in on the eastern side and trying to move into a hold position. We're going to be right next to him. Johnson Retaliation is going to be safe food that gets knock on to TIG. And now Sonics running right back up behind this future OG situation. Not a hobby going to be moving in after Mercy. This is potentially a five-way, potentially six-way team fight, depending on how the Chow Ops are moving into it. But Sonics are going to be the aggressors just walking into future. Not a fear to be seen. This is why they decided to pick up Kickstart. Look, the change, it's been questioned, it's been checked a lot, but when Kickstart is feeling it, he is a menace. Five kills for Kick. Mercy are down. BL gets the flush on the Tiggleton. Wow, maybe someone of the teams can catch Mercy now. They're not in the hobby anymore.
Only 21 more points to go, Sonics. Well on your way. 28 people left. Decent chance. Let's see how much you can string together. Now they've got a Nada Hobby that's going to be pretty close to them as uh, rats. Uh, they're going to be able to regroup. Elevate's going to be pretty close to them. Everything's going to kind of calm down for a second. But Chow going to be the odd man out trying to maneuver into this one with 55 up to the north. Being a great distraction and allowing, you can see Pachow to move right up next to BG. Yeah, and DL is going to use the terrain. This is the player that I highlighted before as being the danger for the side. While they're distracted about the rest of the Chow, BL will move closer and closer. As Bond did a guy, it's like that scene at the end of Scarface, the shot that, with the shotgun getting closer and closer to BDG. But are they aware? Because they're focused on everything else around them. They're, I mean, the focus right now is paying off, but Pachow just creeping in. Pachow's afraid of Sonic's positioning, so they've kind of stopped any aggressive movements into what's going to be going on with Galio as well. So the Sonic's positioning and really Mercy going out has significantly slowed down this firefight as we do have rats elevate inside of Rithyard or an in playing just to the west of it and now it's just kind of these peppering shots into these guys that are trying to creep in over into the east it's just the, the front line of the assault right it's it's been the east to yeah. the east to the east it's always that storm pushing in from the east the blue zone is a problem for Glock now too 45 points, you know, it's not what the cutoff is going to be, but because of how good Mercy and Sonics have been, you can guarantee that cutoff is going to be significantly lower than the group stages. If things go the way they are, it could be, it could even be sub-60, Matt. Yeah, I wouldn't even be mad to see... Oh, Sonic's deciding to go right up back behind yeah, the challenge. Do you get an easy kickoff on this one? I mean, pick up your kills. Nothing's going on over here. Nobody's wanting to be aggressive. That does draw Galio's attention back down to look the hill and go, no, you shouldn't do that. This is going to get the knock on the H1, and uh, Sonic's being a bit punished for their aggression, but I like the idea and what they were trying to go for. Why not, though? If they win this fight, they're in a, still in a pretty good spot, but... They'll go for the res. Pichao will go and do the exact same onto Nateo. The circle shifts and it's kind. Yeah. For the first time, it's kind to the teams on the east. Pichao gets the knock onto one. Can he pick up some more? This is what Pichao really wants. They want to get some more control over this hillside to get some separation away from Sonics. Get some vision. Get some comfort to work with. And they just can't quite find it. Bill gets that first knock. Nothing else can be followed up with because with those shots, Sonics are already looking at the other members of Pichao and the duo cannot come up to support yeah, but BL's just got to stay alive, right? Just keep pressure on Bondi. Once you take a headshot like that, you fall back. But are you going to fall into the line of sight of the Sonics? They are pushing aggressively. Tian from 4 Nation gets the knock on the quick. And you know what? These are big fights. Teams that are in the bottom of the lobby fighting against each other. These, point, these kills are almost worth two points. Dominoes are falling right now as rats are also going to be moving into Elevate's position for in and in. You can see wanting to take this fight before him, but can't quite find the opportunity for it. Boonage going to do a great job at holding back Grant Lannis. Headshot's going to connect into it. The rest of rats are playing a bit more into the western side of it. Elevate, you can see it's going to be Belfrost takes a ton of damage. Don't forget that we still have four and in over here. Dangyo is also watching what's going to be happening. So this is technically a three-way firefight with four and in sandwiched between this and what's going to be going on with Nada Hobby. Elevate now down to one member. You can see getting picked apart and pulled into pieces due to just how many different points of aggress the enemies are approaching from. Yeah, rats are pushing. It's a two versus one here in the battle for Brickyard, but are Elevate going to get the res off? Chun sees the spoon fall at the hands of Kalnix. The player from Synergy pushed onto this fight as he realized there was the opportunity to get some points on the board. Kickstart gets another knock. He has been farming so far in this lobby. Pi Deem focusing down towards Brickyard as well. And Four Nation are scrambling to get away from Sonics now, but that's a good knock that they've managed to find as well. I mean, the line was open for the longest time, but it just elevated. Managed to hold back rats, does manage to finish them off in the end. And 4N thought that they could just run back into this one way faster. As you can see, Dengue is still over here wanting to see if maybe he can get something out for his squad. Sonics also moving a bit more into the west, opens up the child to have some movement capabilities into the east, so... That's a reprieve for them, but Dango just can't land the throwable that he so desperately wants to land on top of Elevate. So good job on Elevate for holding it together. Still, the only contender inside of Brickyard is going to be the remnants of Synergy. Yeah, and Kalnix ain't really the easiest player in the world to deal with either. Kalnix always impressed me anytime I've seen him in a lobby, and I think Elevate should know that he's not too far away. Elevate, or Four Nation making the decision to fall back, not getting the pick or the kills that they would have wanted they'll focus now on playing center but sonics wow 
Wow, Sonic's just dealt with them so quickly. Pichao are down and Sonic's moved to eight. Almost one of those don't bite the hand that feeds moments. The only reason mm -hmm. Pichao could move into that position is because Sonic's moved into the west and the moment that they got a knock, Sonic's were like, no. Turn back around, shut it down. Oh, you're gonna have to make a move over into the west. Yo, Demo is still alive for OG. Remember that firefight from forever ago where he was having to hunker down and everything that was going on with Brickyard and having to hold out? He's still there. Warren in, gonna get control over to the west, and Kalnix for Synergy has been kind of stealthy, creeping in over in the north. He's, he's SEAL Team 6 right now, all by himself, just crawling his way inside of the zone, and you know what? His tail is not done just yet. Four Nation are trying to hold out Bale Frost. Kalnix will look to do the same. BDG still alive, but when you look at the numbers, right, Four Nation are the only full squad left up because everybody else has been in the wars this whole game as they've pushed from that eastern front. I mean, Fornin having four kills right now is massive in comparison to what was going on in the earlier section of their game. They're doing a good job on territory control. They, they, they wanted to kind of go more into the elevate line, but I can also understand the hesitation. Brickyard can be very chaotic, especially with the amount of firefights that going on out over there. Elevate, though, also holding it with four points. Look at the fact that on our cusp position, it is 29, 29, 29, 28 for our ninth place position. This is going to be an amazing series going into tomorrow, and you can see Elevate, OG, every single point that they can get right now is going to be massive for that score leading into tomorrow. Let's not forget if Four Nation can get themselves a couple more kills and a few more placement points off the back of it, they're not really going to be in an awful position going into tomorrow. Well, obviously, the top eight at the end of this map, I think, is a little bit too optimistic for anybody to think it could happen. But if they can get themselves, you know, 19, 18, 19 points, it's not a bad spot. The B in Spectral will get that kill on the Kalnix, and that's a two-point kill right there. That moves them up to 13 as Bale will go for the res on the Shin Boy. But surely, Four Nation have to get aggressive off of that one. Dude, I don't even know what the economy can be looking like for Elevate right now. They have been in so many firefights for so long in tatters. They're limping into the circle, but still trying to find ways to pick off something here or there. Galio going to be the next one that they're going to be looking at. The smokes are going to go down, but across the way, it's going to be four and in. You can see just a couple of taps are going to be all it takes for them as they test up that hillside. Elevate tries to make something happen in a desperate situation, but they're going to go down. Four and in. Seven points now. Starting to get it rolling. I'm feeling it. I'm liking this move from Four mm -hmm. Nation. They've also taken control of the west of the circle. The zone pops, and it's not too bad for Sonics or Four Nation, but I feel like Old Guard, they've got a solo. Sonics probably know the kill demos in that position. Bondi to Gaio are at a real risk now, and you can see that Spectrum knows exactly where the push is coming from. Numbers advantage, control, hillside, a lot of things that Four Nation can play from. The problem with it is, is that, I mean, we still do have Sonics on the other point. We have Kill Demo as a distraction for them, like you're talking about. Looks like they're still taking some shots over into Galio right now, see if maybe they can just go ahead and get a knock or something else out of it. The pacing of this has slowed down so dramatically, moving into circle number eight. Nobody really having to make any big moves. It's just more about control, seeing who's going to peek out, get that last bit of information, see if you can spot anybody making any moves, and... With the way that Trimsy's leaned into this tree, you can see he hasn't quite spotted out that one member from 4NN yet, I don't think. And uh, I think you'd want to find him pretty quickly. I, I really hope that 4NN can take this one. You know, a roster like this, they've got to the stage. They're always around, right? These players are always inside of scrims. They're always turning up. It's teams like this that allow NA to be a strong region because they help them filling out those lobbies. And I want 4NN to take that next step. And... The thing is, they can do this, right? They've got, what did you say, seven kills already? They're mm -hmm. inside the top four? Or six. This isn't, a, this isn't a fluke. This is them earning the right to be in this position. And if they can do it once, they can do it a lot more times tomorrow. I think I, think I was right originally with seven, now that I'm looking at it. I think it's Galio that yeah. has six. Uh, it's just math things off the top of the head. I just want to know how big of a problem kill demo is going to be. He's the thing that we haven't really watched much of. And he's going to have some type of influence. He's either going to stall out what's going on with Sonics, Galio, or he might be able to get a knock in a pivotal moment. As we know, he understands the pacing of the game. He understands when his moment to strike is going to be. As Sonics are kind of clustered over into this position, just do a lot of in position. As with the 4 and in line, they don't really want to aggress too much into it. 
with the way that the center dot is going to go into, four and in is already encroaching very, very close, and Sonics can't do it. They've got the opponents on their side. Yeah, I love it. Four Nation are playing this so well in the late games. They've got center dot control as well. As Sonics are now getting pushed by two players. They spot out Pydeem inside the blue. Pydeem, as you can see, must have a jammer pack as he didn't take any damage for those couple of seconds. Here comes Utility Dump from Four Nation now as well. Sonics are getting pushed from all angles, but H1 begins to step up over. Down goes Bonnie to Gaio. H1 does a ton of damage on the Tian and the repeat will get the knock. And he gets himself another one. H1 hunters on the tear, but there's the Spectro. H1 trying to make it happen, but suddenly he's going to go down. Kickstart, now the last one up, and you can see it's going to be killed. Demo off on the side, going to spray in four and in. The dance is going crazy right now. Daniel trying to navigate for the center. Kickstart had to run back down the hillside. Kill Demo also looking up into this one. We are now at a 1v1v1, and suddenly the dominoes fall, and it is going to be four and in with nine kills that pick up the victory. Let's go. 19 points for Four Nation, and they earned that one. Huge game for them as they are able to to climb that leaderboard and what better way to start the redemption arc than going at it on game six the halfway point of the tournament that'll give them so much confidence going into tomorrow and i'm j like i am actually so happy for four nation just a great play i thought it was going to come all apart whenever h went up here we hit that double man that's usually a turning point in a game but it was at the exact same moment we saw the shift happen over in the east kill demo also start making some movements it i mean you gotta give it to four and in big game a lot of kills and just tons of different moving factors in that one Talk. it really was i mean it was fun to watch it was a good end game good miramar finish it was nice to see sonics once again come up put up some big numbers uh and for a second i thought maybe kickstart comes out and takes this 1v1v1 uh before nation stepped up and i think that's gonna be big time when we look at the scoreboard for some of these teams that needed to get points to catch up to that middle cutoff four nation's gonna feel pretty good about it I, again I, I just keep saying it, i'm so happy for the guys you know they work so hard to get into a lobby like this and I know, I know this. The, the Spectro is a very good player. He's really slippery in gunfights. You saw it a few times there. He got the kill on the Kalnix, but for Four Nation, they just got to bring that energy into tomorrow. And they got to hope that maybe Sonics and Mercy don't decide to be absolute oh lobby God. demons again. Or just keep doing it. I think that's the other side of the coin. Like, mm -hmm. hey, Four Nation finishes with 19 points. They had five if my memory serves me correctly coming into this thing so that is a massive pickup for them but what that tells me is if i don't miss my guess and again i'm terrible at math so it is what it is they were in like 15th place with five i think they're going to be right at that cutoff within maybe four from making the numbers off of that one game which i think sort of sets our narrative for what's about to happen tomorrow because there are a ton of teams near the cutoff and even at the bottom of the cutoff because coming into this I think they were tied for last place coming into this game. They're going to be in the hunt. So any team who shows up tomorrow, if they start strong, can get back in this because of the Hoovers at the top who just keep sucking up those points. I mean, big respect to Four and In as well as Sonics in that one. But it felt like whenever we even saw the replay on it, that was a massive performance from Kill Demo as mm -hmm. he managed to just absolutely demolish anybody on that hillside. So... I can't wait to see what they're going to be bringing out tomorrow as well as a massive shift in this leaderboard. Let's take a look at that. So Mercy, Sonics, yay, you're winning. Okay, point is though, we're playing for the top eight. That's what matters the most when we show up here to work tomorrow. Elevate 30, Pachow 29, Rats 29, Future 28, Bonde, Four Nation, Aces Crew down to 21. Those are one game away from passing. And then we also know from what literally Four Nation just did, Gibson, that got okay well also maybe also known as can get into this one but anybody technically can do it with one good game to start tomorrow like this is super tight in the race for top eight it is but i think after map one tomorrow you'll start ruling teams out right if if gato's chicos don't have a good map they're out if, if png don't have a good map they're out it's going to be that rough for a lot of these teams on tomorrow and it's really important that you know that the teams that maybe aren't picking up the points that are around yeah. that cusp don't get into their own heads either you gotta remember don't change your play style if you're on the cusp because if you change it and you're not used to playing that way 
it can go way too too much the opposite direction. Don't pull the keeper. Just keep your foot on the gas. And now I want to give a shout out again. Mercy, 69 kills in one day is very nice. I got to give him props on that. But another team that stepped up and showed up, especially after a bit of a loose qualifier uh, in the last stages was Sonics. They came out with 50 kills in a comfortable second place, which is why I think we got a chance to chat with one of them. The, the newest member on the team, Kickstart, is going to be joining us uh, for a quick talk back. So we'll get him in here as soon as he's ready. There he is. Welcome, Kickstart. Glad to have you. Congratulations on a very big day. Let me ask you this. Very simple. I have been told that you guys are playing qualifiers differently, that you're playing for internationals, not playing for regional dominance. Is that true? And what does that sort of look like for you guys? Um, yeah, I mean, we're looting new hot drops and like loot spots like that. So uh, I think we're preparing for internationals like that because we obviously, uh, fortunately enough, were invited to the PGSs. But um, I think that's kind of why we've been playing bad as we've been playing the games like it's a PGS game. And uh, I think that's why we played so poorly in the, the group stages. And I think we just took it back and realized, you know, this isn't an international. Like these players aren't at every PGS, every PGC, respectfully. But um, I, I think that's just why we're playing a little bit different now. Um, and we're playing more edge heavy, I guess. It's like when the nun used to hit my hands with the knuckle, like the, my hit my knuckles with the ruler and be like, respectfully, this is helpful. Uh, gentlemen, do you guys have any follow ups for Kickstart? Uh, yeah, I was gonna. Oh, you go ahead. Go no, ahead. no. After after you look, I'm I'm the import. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So moving from group stages into this, you talked about the fact that you know, okay, we're not gonna play it like an international. We're gonna play it more like an Americas. I'm kind of curious about like the different mindsets that you guys have inside of that. Is that was something that we were kind of talking about inside of the games as well? Is that you know it's easy to just if your win condition is kill everybody and you're the best fragger inside of a region but once you move to that international stage that's not always going to be the case so you guys were using technically the group stage as a way to start testing out some more stuff are you still leaning into that as we're moving through this stage or is this more kind of leaning back into the comfort food of what sonics does yeah i mean we still have to qualify for pgc so i would say we're trying to find like the middle like i think we've been playing really well the last few days and that's pretty much when we like reset and we were like you know like we're one of the best teams in the world like we don't need to have perfect macro we just like fight at edge take an edge we can kill these guys and um i think there's a the perfect world is in between both of those play styles like internationals are very very like objective and like macro heavy where if you don't have good macro you're not gonna win the tournament and i think there's just like a smooth line right in between the both play styles of like edge killing and just like centered up and uh, tutuing everywhere but I, I don't know where we're gonna go with it after but right now it's just in between as much as we can so first off kick you know that i love chatting to you it's, it's always good to talk to you i like how your camera box is bigger because there's more more talent to contain inside <laughs> of yours than there is for the rest of us but i've kind of got a a two-leveled question for you right so first off You've moved the Sonics, and every single day is going to be, you know, a learning day. If you're not improving and not trying to be better every single day, you're, you know, can you really call yourself a pro player? So first question is, how difficult has it been to adapt to Sonics? And the second one is, what have you learned about yourself from playing on this team? Like, what is, what is has it been? Gunner that's helped you out the most? Like, what have you learned on Sonics? Um, I think not only Gunner, but just everyone on the team. Like, it's just a different play style. Um... As everyone knows and keeps reminding me, I have to replace Mime's footsteps. And as everyone knows, those footsteps are way more aggressive than mine you're, normally. You're wearing a shirt um, right now for an interview is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, but Mime is very aggressive and I think I'm not the exact opposite, but um, I'm, I'm a pretty like survival heavy and I usually know how to survive. And I think that's the biggest problem that I've had joining Sonics is that like, they don't need me to survive. They need me to be like a big man, you know, <laughs> like they need to be yeah. me an alpha dog uh, and mm -hmm. um, kill people. And since I've joined, that's pretty much been my only problem. Um, I mean, it's really easy to fit into Sonics. I just, I have to have bigger, bigger ego pretty much. Like I am, um, I try to stay pretty humble and I, I don't think I'm that good personally, but um I pretty much just have to act like I'm the best player in the world. And that's been our main problem. I think I've learned that a lot more 
and I'm starting to get comfortable in that, I guess, I would say. That's fair. I mean, that sounds, if you're saying that that's a massive meta shift in how you think of yourself as a player, it seems like that's a pretty big thing to get you over into sort of a new mindset of playing. Uh, so do you feel like that peak is beginning that you f are, are you becoming more aggressive or do you think the team is starting to understand like this is how we fit together with your less aggressive style? Are you changing style or are they adapting to you? I would say I'm probably adapting them to them more. Um, I pretty much on my old team at United, I was like a co-IGL kind of thing. And I mean, Sonics didn't really need that when they joined, but I think we're both kind of, that's pretty much what I'm becoming again, I guess. When I joined, I was like, oh, h one's going to, you know, I'm going to mute up. I'm just going to listen. I'm going to be a good boy. But um, uh, with mine being gone, you know, he's the most aggressive player in probably all of NA. Um, I pretty much have to somewhat fill that role. So I am pretty good at calling like late game fights and stuff like that. So I guess I'm just doing most of that now again. So I'm pretty much just like hard calling like fights sometimes. And um, I think that's just my strongest suit. And that's where I'm fitting in right now. And pretty much just I'm trying to fill my my supposed steps as much as I can, I guess, with that. I like that. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get off of the difficult questions for you. We're gonna go to something a little bit easier. Those were very very intense. I love hearing that confidence is improving. So this is off the record. Nobody's listening. It's just the four of us. <laughs> Who's a better IGL, Quinn or Rello? What a beast question. Um, I think Rello is like me and him worked very well together, and I think H Win is like a. He knows what to do in every situation, so he doesn't need as much help. But I don't think that's a bad thing or a good thing, really. Like, I think eventually, in maybe a year or two, me and H1 will have the same chemistry that I have with Rello. But uh, me and Rello worked very well off each other, so I just think it's two different like play styles. Like H1's like he just most of the time knows what to do, so he doesn't really need help. But um, I don't know. Me and Rello were just like a pair, I guess. Yeah. So I, I don't think there's a better or worse, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, no, other that. It, it makes it's a perfect answer because it fits exactly what you said before, right? It is coming from one team to another. There's stylistic changes. There's confidence changes. It seems like you're really slotting in with that P90 today. You were a fucking god. I'm not supposed to go a god. <laughs> uh, and I was very, very impressed. With it. Sorry, it was it was a really good play. Um, I don't want to hold you any longer. I, I don't want to end after dropping that. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, you guys have you've been awesome today. It was wonderful to watch the Sonics. I want to give you a chance for any shout outs, call outs, whatever you want uh, before we call it an evening. Um, thanks for all the fans supporting the team and uh, me even more because I've been getting dogged for the last few months. Mm. And it's pretty, uh, it, it hurts, you know, but um, for anyone, those those guys that actually support me, I really do appreciate it. And if you guys didn't exist, I would probably be crying every night reading these comments. So thank you. Thank you. Well, it is good to see you feeling slot again. We're sorry that you've had to go through the crisis that comes with <laughs> this. And hopefully people watch and go, oh, man, that kid's got a good head on his shoulders. Uh, thank you for We're stopping by. I look forward to seeing what happens tomorrow. We're going to let you go. Thank you. All right, there he goes. I, was, I, I nobody wanted to say anything yet. So that was uh, that was a realer interview than I expected. I'm gonna be honest. I know. I I like this. I like this kick. You know, he was talking about the growth and stuff like that. Kicks can, can sometimes I don't know, retreat into himself a bit sometimes, and this is a lot more of him facing. I don't know the demons or whatever else you want to say. You know, like uh, the hesitation, the the gremlins that can run around inside of your head. And I, I have to say, I like to see him kind of starting to open up more about that, about who he is, about how he sees himself, because that's always like right before you see somebody take a really big step and like who they are, how they play, what's going on. It's that awareness of, you know, like they're talking about like, oh, well, I need to be a bit more like mine. But at the same time, he could still be like him and fill that role. And as he starts to, as he starts to merge all that together, it's going to be so cool to I just like the candid answer he skips, and it was just nice to see. Uh, I think part of the thing is I've watched Kickstart since he was knee high to a grasshopper, right? Like mm -hmm. he was not old enough to play when he started, and to watch the maturity of him becoming a man who knows how to handle himself as well as play this game better than anybody else in the world, and I and I do believe that he is better in most situations than half most of the other players I've ever seen. 
when he's got the confidence in the play. So it was just beautiful to see. Uh, I don't want to hold it too long. The sh game's over, right? You guys are here for PUBG, and we ain't got no more PUBG to show you tonight. But we got more tomorrow, so make sure you come back. And I never let us leave a broadcast without final thoughts. So I'm going to start with the Gibson, the Gibmeister, old Gibby Two-Shoes. Gibby, final thoughts. Just trying some things out. I'm the youngest person here, remember? So just stop calling me old. Stop calling me old. I'm the youngest person here. Not to say that I'm young, by the way. I'm still a dinosaur of esports terms. You're just, you're just but, gonna twist the knife like that. I see. Okay. Yeah, I know. Look, look. You know, it's 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 weird. I, I feel I feel hard. When I, when Cammy's here, I have to act like I'm old again because Cammy's the young hip one, right? But I I think tonight. Well, you know, he dresses well sometimes, right? <laughs> But, um, no, I think for me, it's been a lot of fun today. The main thing has been the fact that Sonic's, it's kind of a revert to the way they used to play a little bit just to get the job done, to get over the line. For Mercy, it's been a pretty good end to what's been a really hard week for those players. Like, let's be real, we're not going to get into it too much, but it's been a really tough week for them. They're back, they performed more than admirably, and they're pretty much through to the grand finals, which they probably, which they should have been anyway. So, really happy for them. It's, uh, the big thing now is about the progression of the teams in the middle of the pack, because if you do not turn up tomorrow, you are not playing competitive PUBG until the next set of quals, which are, what, three months away? So, tomorrow is, you know, jobs on the line. I, that's a great way to put that. Tomorrow is jobs on the line. Match and final thoughts? Mine are very, very simple. My God. PWDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDD